Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the last day of Crufts 2020. It's Championship Day, and we have got a fantastic day for you today. Uh, finishing with, obviously, our Best in Show 2020. Now, I'm reliably informed it's International Ladies' Day. Yes. So it's rather fitting that we have a lovely lady who's going to judge the agility for us today. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Jackie Gardner. Okay, so Nigel and I are going to be uh, talking you through all of our championship classes today. We're going to start off with the championship jumping round for the mediums. And first on the line is Lauren Burns with Zebedee. This is a Sheltie Cross Border Collie Cross Papillon. Uh, the Harlequin Fox. So right turn over number five, back into that tunnel and got a right turn over the cross jump. Round the back into the weave pulse. Very nicely through there. Right turn. Sorry, left turn even. Back through the cross jump. There's a sharp turn. Here we go. It's a good start. Back into the tunnel. Two to go. Yay! Well done. 33.890 on a clear round. Well, what a start that was, eh? First dog in, first clear round on International Ladies' Day as well. Next in, we got Heather McLean, working Macca, working Sheepdog, seven years of age, I believe from Scotland. There you go. So Heather and Macca on the start line. Can they beat that first time round? 33.890. Here we go. Nice testing course set by Jackie Gray for the chance to work on. Flow is beautifully so far, kind of like an S-shaped round into that top corner. Beautifully handled into the weaves. Plenty of verbal encouragement there across the middle on the far side with Heather. Round of 13, unlucky to some, but we're okay today. 14 coming up. Uh, working our way now towards the end of the course. I reckon we're on for another one here. We don't like to say too much, obviously. Two to go. Come on, big round of applause. Here we go. 34.821 for Heather and Macca. Okay, so next to go, this is Jenny Hillis with Dashing Through. It's Roxy Roo. So all our uh, dogs have um, obtained a CC ticket, so a challenge certificate somewhere in the UK uh, to be able to compete in this champ class and whoever wins this if they're not already it will make them a champion so weaving our way through the chicane of jumps left turn oh well recovered that was close here we go right on 15 we're going to do a right turn into the tunnel Two to go, let's give them a big cheer. It's a clear round, well done. 39.893 goes into third place. Well, what a start to the morning. It's all ladies at the moment, and we're all having some cracky runs as well. Next to go is another young lady, Naomi Reed, working Jinx Crosby, eight years of age. Jinx is the first agility dog. She's taught me so much over the years. I was 12 years old when I got Jinx, and she was not an easy dog to run, but she was so fast. She's a dog in a million. So look out for these two. Nice start so far. Working away into that tunnel. Beautifully, absolutely stunning bit of handling that was. And a great turn again. We're in the weeds. Weebies call as you can hear. Oh, this, is, this is beautiful. This is absolutely fantastic. She's hardly moving. Round of 16 and we've got this, those last three to come with the tunnel coming up now. Here we go with a turn. Two to go. Lovely job. 34.520 goes into second place for Naomi and Jinx.
Okay, that was a crack of a round. So uh, next to go, Blythe Fox with Rue, the working Cocker Spaniel. Devon Gem Golden Moment. Oh, a lot safer for herself as uh, she's going round. Right turn out and over the cross jump. Into those weeds. <laughs> through there, she's going to bark all the way around. Right turn, another right turn on the cross jump. Nicely done. Here we go. Round wing wrap on 15. Into the tunnel. Two to go. Let's give them a big cheer. One more. 35, 5, 4, 2 goes into fourth place. Wow, another super run again. Superb run again. So, our first gentleman in. We've got Dalton Meredith working Munchie, border collie, four years of age. Dog trainer from Ringwood. Munchie's bred by Alan Lamberton and is from the line family Nubby Dozy border collies. She's one of two dogs he runs. My little bit of sister. And she lives life to the boys. A crazy little dog with a big heart. So nice partnership, these two. I think we'll be just broken away from the wall as we're into the tunnel. So probably much has been pulled there. Round to the roofs. Nice set of wings and just a tail. Go down to this bottom corner now, round of 16. Over the long jump, in the tunnel. Dalton picking up on the far end with two to go. Come on, it's gone quiet in the arena. Super run again, 34.513 into second place for Dalton and Munchie. Another great run there. And uh, that's gonna make for a very exciting agility round as well. We're seeing all these lovely jumping rounds. So next to go on the line, it's Sarah Woodley with Bodie, the miniature American Shepherd, Vasily's General Lucius. Into the tunnel. Another quick little dog. Wow, look at that. Nicely through the weaves. Left turn, right turn. Round this chicane of jumps. Oh. Just making sure she gets it right. Picks up five for a refusal. As long as she doesn't get eliminated, she's still in with the chance of getting through to the final tonight. Two to go. It's a great run. Five four, seven, six, nine, two, eight. Goes into seventh place. Right, here's a partnership to watch. Here is a partnership to watch. These two are rapid. We've got James in next. James Adams, working Willow. Working Cox Spaniel, four years of age. It's uh, their second year at Crofts, and he says, Willow is in house, my love to the sport, and I'm loving our journey. These two, as a partnership, I've watched them over the last uh, three days. Superb in handling. He's got the legs, you can see. The dog's got the legs as well. So James pushing Willow to the limit here. We need a nice clear round, and at the moment he's over to number 10. No issues whatsoever coming around to the far side. Beautifully handled. So legs are working, here we go. We've got three, four to go with the long jump. Three to go, what's the time gonna be like? Are we looking? Are we gonna go? We are 33.65 and goes into first place for James and Willow. So another cracking run there by James. And next on the line is Harriet Harding with Izzy. Little Miss Is, third year at Crofts. Very excited to be back here on the green carpet. There really isn't anything between these times that we're seeing. Just went around the back there, so unfortunately that's uh, elimination there. Just slightly misread uh, what Harriet wanted her to do. So unfortunately that does mean that uh, Harriet won't be able to go through to do the uh, champ final tonight. She could still Run the agility round though. Here we go. Into the final drive. Let's uh, let's cheer them round, ladies and gentlemen. Two to go. Well done, Harriet. So next in the arena, in the arena Amelia Nicholson with Willow, Holly Cross Cocker Spaniel, four years of age, doing agility for 13 years. 
and Willow's the first dog to win a champ ticket. Nice wrap around the wing. Coming down towards the bottom corner, number 16. We've got four to go. We're over the long jump. We're in the tunnel. We need a nice tight turn. We've got it. We've got two to go. Come on. 35.2, nine, two. sixth place for Amelia and Willow. Steve, next to go, we've got Nicola Garrett working Z. Shetland Sheepdog, six years of age, uh, has won two gold medals in the pentathlon event at the WAA, that's out in Europe, and has won two challenge certificates in agility. My best buddy, even if he does grab my ankles at times. So there we go, hopefully, no ankle grabbing today. Nice steady flowing start at the moment, with a little bit of skip as well. Steady one at the moment. Two rounds this morning. In the main final later on, so they want a nice clear round to get them around today. In an ideal world, a second clear in the following competition as well. And it's nice and steady at 37, 38.583 clear for Nicola and C. So Nicola going into ninth place there. And here we have another Shetland Sheepdog. This is with Leanne Knight. Uh, this is Sonic, agility champion at Lycosateria Mice Rising Sun. Got his ticket last June. Right turn, into the weaves. Come on, Sonic. Turn, weaving their way through the chicane of jumps. Nicely done. Here we go. Out to number 16. Changing sides there as we come down to the tunnel. Two to go. One more. Well done, Leanne. 40.530 goes into 11th place. So here we go, Derek Elms from South Lanarkshire in Scotland. Working Kia, crossbreed, nine years of age. Uh, rescue dog, first agility dog, second time across. And they are away. So Derek and Kia. Nice, quiet handling. Using the verbal where we need to. Kia working nicely. Into the weaves. And we're in the weaves. Working our way round to number 13. Round the 26 second mark at 13, round of 14. And we're working away now to the bottom right hand corner with 16 coming up. Nice turn there into the rigid tunnel. Derek's going to be at the other end there to pick Kier up. We've got two to go. Time of 40.178. Going to 11th place for Derek and Kier. Well done.
Next on the line we have Cameron McLeod with Ruby. Folk rank Purple Lucky is the full kennel name. This is a working Cocker Spaniel. That was very nicely done there. Slightly different to what we've seen everyone else do it, but that's uh, the handler's choice. They can choose the path they want as long as they do the uh, obstacles in the right order. Left turn, that's a very nice turn there. And that one, cutting down as much time as possible. Into the tunnel, two to go, let's cheer them home. And a time, 36, uh, 614 goes into eighth place. So next in we've got Natasha Chambers, working Indy, Shelty Cross College, six years of age. Dream Agility Dog, calm and collective whilst waiting our turn. And then crazy the moment when you see, go, a once in a lifetime dog. So Natasha and Indy. Quick little dog this one as you can see. Bit of verbal as well, we're in the tunnel, we're in the tunnel. If we come out the far side, we're not lining up, but we've just broke the line of the wings, we pick up five faults, and unfortunately we've popped over the obstacle, and we've got an elimination, unlucky there for Natasha and Indy. They were flying up to there, I must admit. So obviously they'll continue working on the course. So I'll give them a big round of applause. They've got the big ears, you say, but nevertheless, they're here. We shall see them later, Natasha and Indy. Next to go, it's uh, Hayley Telling with Teal. A uh, full name, has a very long full name. Agility champion, new, Illuin, new illusions by enchantment of the five colors is the full kennel name. So just picking up five faults there for uh, knocking down number two. Into the wheel, so very nicely through there. Right down through the cross jump. Picks up five, so we're on uh, ten. Remember, it, it all depends what happens in the agility run. Hayley will know that she needs to get as good a time as possible. Well done, 37, 2, 4, 0. Goes into 15th place. So we'll add the two scores together and we will come up with the top uh, list of uh, handlers going through to this evening. So next team, we've got Shannon Springford working gift, Border Collie, six years of age. That's the dog, of course. So, Shannon and Gift. Great weight, nice start. We're going to cross into number three. Quick, quick, quick. Come, 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 The dog around, pushing around now. 40 beautifully handled. Cost to 16, we've got four to go. Home of the long jump, angles nice to get the entry as well. We've got two to go. What's the time like? It's not far off. 35.770. And Shannon and Gift go into eighth place. Well done. Rachel Hawley's on the line. I think she's got her own fan club with her, yes. <laughs> uh, she is running Hattie, the Cocker Spaniel. And uh, Hattie is nine years and ten months. Charleston girl. This is the first time they've run in the main arena at Crufts. On the very famous green carpet. So... Nice and calm as we come round to the weaves. Encouraging her all the way through there. Doing a nice blind turn. Getting a nice wing wrap, that was very tight. 
Another wing wrap as well. Here we go, right turn, over the long jump, into the tunnel, you've literally got two to go. Two to go. It's great run, 40.273, goes into 14th place, well done. So, another nice run, another nice run there again. Next to go in the main arena, we've got Abigail Doxford working Whitfield. Working Copper Spaniel, 10 years of age, Whitfield was rehomed to me because he was so mischievous in a previous home. We're delighted to be competing across for the fourth year running. So, as you can see, one of these dogs needs plenty of verbal encouragement. A bit of bending down as well as well as you're running. Nicely handled, and we're round to the weeds already. Almost a little bit of panic there, but we're okay. We're back on track. So, bottom corner around a 16. Working nice now with a couple of tunnel commands there. Might even have been three. Picking the dog up from the R side. Here we go. 38.533. Goes into 11th place there for Abigail and Whitfield. So next to go, the last in the medium height, actually. Uh, this is Jane Chenery with Harvey. Uh, the working cocker spaniel, black engine dusk. He said he's, she said he's very noisy and very screamy. He loves his agility. We don't mind the barking and agility. Here we go, over the cross jump. Nicely through the weeds, left turn. Through the cross jump. I think he's enjoying himself. Right turn, here we go, over the long jump, into the tunnel. Let's cheer them home, ladies and gentlemen. Two to go. Great finish, 36.968. Goes into 11th place. Well, that was finishing off with a stunning run there. And now we're into the large dogs. So, slight different, obviously, for them. Bigger dogs, bigger pacings, and so on. So a quick change around with the course, so you can see the heights and so on being done. And we're finishing off today with a small, I do believe. And that'll be exciting as well. Always is. They always are. Anyone here for fly ball this afternoon? Oh, it's quiet at the moment with the fly ballers. They're probably still getting over yesterday afternoon's competing. Right, so. Still got a few jumps to go up and down. Plenty of uh, competitions going on throughout the day in the main arena. Make sure you don't miss the fly ball, agility, and so on. It's been a fantastic three days so far. Obviously, this is the last one. It looks like we're good to go nearly. We're just setting the camera up on the far side. And if you're joining us live on the Craft YouTube channel, a very good morning to you all, wherever you are. So it looks like we've got the nod, have we? We have the nod. So our first competitor in, in the large dogs, will be Lucy Hinchley with Pixie Border Collie, nine years of age, competed for 20 years, running various national and international finals, and won gold medals as well. I'm going to stop there because I do want love watching this partnership. I watch it all off, to be honest. So there we go. Different striding pattern, possibly for a larger dog. So we've got an elimination which is a great shame. Nevertheless, Lucy and Pixie will continue working around, going for the experience of being here. So, a nice set of weeds, across to 10. Working away round now to 13. Round to 14. And down towards this bottom corner. Probably pick the pace up a little bit now as they're just about to finish. I'm lucky with the elimination. But nevertheless, great run there for Lucy and Pixie after.
Okay, so next on the line is Lee Windiat with Koi Border Collie, uh, Mendip Star Coyote Snuggly. So nicely done into the tunnel of three. He's going to meet uh, Koi out of the tunnel there, nicely done. Into those weaves. Left turn, right turn, very calm, <laughs> round the back, here we go, into the line, right turn on 16, powering up into the tunnel, let's cheer them home ladies and gentlemen, it's two to go, it's a lovely run, 37.902, currently taking top spot. Super run, nice steady super run. Next to go, we've got Jennifer Hart from Scotland. Working giggle, bearded collie, four years of age. Homebred girl, shadow, and my best friend. 2019 was a roller coaster of a ride from the highest highs to the lowest lows. We were happy and enjoy every second together, uh, particularly on this big stage. Ooh, just clip the tyre there, as you can see. Now the tyres are slightly different than we used to have, thankfully. So we've got five faults on the tyre. Flowing nicely otherwise there for Jennifer and Giggle. Uh, nice set of wiggy, well, weaves for giggle, wow. Heads down, away we go. So, round of 13. Down now to 16, turn him right. Pace picks up a little bit as we come towards that rigid tunnel. Big round of applause there for Jennifer and Giggle. Yeah, lovely one. So our ring party uh, just checking the course, checking uh, that everybody's happy, and we are, I think. Yeah, our judge is happy. Yep. Okay, so we're ready to go with Alan Wildman, agility champion, Chikaramore born performer. Uh, experienced dog, she's uh, competed in some of the international competitions as well. Lost a little bit of time there, but we're all right. No faults incurred. Just a little bit of hesitation. Into the weave poles. Nicely through there. Um, fortunately taking a pole, so that's five faults. And when Alan comes back round to that jump, he will have to go through those two wings. Just like that. Here we go, into the tunnel. Let's give them a big round of applause. Five faults and a 39.866 on the clock. So, next in we have Pia Glover working pink, border collie, four years of age, homebred bitch, and this is her first time competing and running at Gruffs. She loves agility and also working sheep. So, here we are. That was close. Oh, we're going to refuse, unfortunately, but Dog actually went between the jump and the handle. Fortunately, didn't pick the tunnel up, so five at the moment. Nice, quiet partnership. Not a lot of noise from either of them. So, Pink and Pia. Past the unlucky number 13, down to 16. Got four to go. We're in the tunnel. Just picked up five on the long jump as well. Two to go. Big round of applause across the finishing line. Unlucky there for Peter and Pete with a ten fold score. So next on the start line is Natasha Wise with agility champion Nedlo flipping shiny pedal. Uh, we've already seen Pebbles here this year, but she loves the green carpet. Third year in the champ here. And uh, fingers crossed for another good run. Also part of the GB squad and GB agility team, and uh, they amazingly got bronze at the World Championships in Finland in 2019. So a very, very good year for Pebbles. So through the cross jump. 
Being really clear with her commands there. Here we go. Right turn over the long jump into the tunnel. Let's cheer them home, ladies and gentlemen. Two to go. Yes, crack and run and takes the lead. Well done. 35, 6, 6, 8. With a clear round, we have a new leader. Fantastic. Super run. That was absolutely super. So next to go, we've got Martin Reed working snooze, border collie. Three years of age. So Martin and snooze. Can they pip the time of Natasha and Pebbles? Start, flow in nicely. Bit of vocal there from Snooze. Right, round. In, in. Nice, nice turnaround. Around a 14. Flowing run so far. Good start coming up to this rigid tunnel. We've got two to go. This could be good. 30, 30, 35.830. Go into second place, point two of a second. Wow, that was close. So next on the line, Andrew Priestley with Lucy, ragamuffin rock star. Second time at Crufts. Down into that tunnel. Nice right turn. Very tightly out of the tunnel there. He's gone a slightly different way there to other handlers, but doesn't matter. He obviously uh, knows his dog and knows what suits his dog best. Right turn through the cross jump. Round number 14. Here we go down the line. Right turn, rear crossing there. Over the long jump into the tunnel. Let's cheer them home. Two to go, 40.057 on a clear round, goes into fourth place. So next to go, Dave Money is working fame, border collie for eight years of age, been an incredible dog, winning every fine in the UK and two medals at the FCI World Champs. This will be possibly one of the last years at Crufts. So we'll enjoy whatever happens. So we're just sorting out the tunnel again. Oh, we need some assistance. Got to be right. Might need to change something around. Obviously, we've got to think of the dog's safety. Priority is that. So it's changed nowadays. Many years ago, we used to have these huge big metal hoops over things. Obviously, not in the main arena. Now they've changed and are certainly a lot safer than they used to be. Spot on. Thank you, ladies. Doing a great job as normal. So, here we are, back to Dave. Dave and Fame. Rob's giving them the, uh, the nod. So, nice, quiet handling. Everyone has a different way of doing things. Dave did stay for Dobby on the left hand side there up to that rigid tunnel. Some of the handles go up the far side on the right hand side. In around 13, uh, about 22 seconds. Slightly ahead now, Dave's speed picking up a little bit for 16. Over the long jump. Picking the dog up now for that rigid tunnel. We've got two to go. Two, one. 34.837, gone in the first place. Super run there for Dave and Fame. So we have a new leader. Time to beat now, 34.8. Next on the line is Gemma Haycock with Jukebox. Uh, Lala Paws turn up the Jukebox. He's going to be four years old tomorrow. And uh, I think Gemma had a... a a birthday this weekend as well, so celebrating their birthdays together. First time at Crofts. Been uh, in two competitions here, so done really well to get here. Nicely through there, blind turn. Oh, 
five. Just taking a poll there, so we're on five as we come down to number 16. Into the tunnel. Well done, well done, it's a good time. 36.080 goes into sixth place with five faults. So, next to go, we've got Dan Shaw, working geek, border collie, seven years of age, most perfect dog ever, bronze medal at the World Championships, silver medal at the EEO, and won cross champ and British Open last year. Now, as I always say, Dan and geek, great partnership. You'll hear Dan say very little, and what you do hear is very quiet. You probably won't be able to hear him anyways. Clapping in the waves. Going nicely now around waters number 13. Obstacle on around 22 seconds again. So it's all very consistent on that turn. Go the command. We've got two to go. What do you reckon on the time? It's going to be close. It's going to be very close. 35.0 near 9 1. Wow. Wow. Okay, so next on the line, uh, Dalton Meredith. We saw him running Munchie earlier in the medium. This is Costa, uh, Neon Oxide, seven years old. And uh, Dalton's second agility dog, bred by himself. Into the tunnel. Nicely through those waves. Look at that. Oh, just came out. Just came out. So five faults. So Dalton knows he has to go back and complete them. Otherwise, uh, that would have incurred an elimination. So we're just on five faults. Right turn onto the long jump. Into the tunnel. Two to go. So five faults, 40.866. Goes into tenth place. Right, next in. We have Joanne Tristan working right. Border Collie, five years of age. Right's first time as an individual at Crups. Um, Joe's been before. Joe's been before quite a few times. Did you beat this 34.837. Leading time at the moment by Dave, Dave Munnings. And no way. So for the uh, swim, unfortunately, that is an elimination. So eliminated, I'll continue working around the course, and they'll probably have a cracking clear out now at an amazing time. Just that one. Problem is that they've got an elimination. So, four to go, unlucky run there for Joanne and Bright. Give them a big round of applause, anyway. Thank you very much. It happens now and again. Obviously, it does happen now and again. So, next to go, Nara Cuddy with Lemon. Lil Hayes, sorry, Lil Hayes, Dark Pleasure. Uh, is her full kennel name. Also a member of the uh, agility team that uh, got bronze at the World Championships this year. And uh, I think she's had a pretty good week here at Crufts as well, actually. So three years old. Into the tunnel. Just picked up five there, went past the entrance to the tunnel. Didn't quite see it. It's a very sort of flat angle for the dog. Right turn. Left turn. Picking up.
picking up speed as we come down into the tunnel. Two to go. Let's give them a big cheer. Well done. 37 442 on five faults. Goes into ninth place. So, next team we've got Martin Reed looking spring. Border Collie, seven years of age. Having a bit of a creep, and we're away. Nice, nice. Stays to the left hand side. Works beautiful, that does. Saves the handle a bit of time as well. Into the weeds. Quiet verbal encouragement. Right. From Martin Trap. to Spring. In, 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 in round of 13 in, now. Again, still on around about 22 second mark. Left, 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 left. Let's go, let's go. Long jump coming up. We've got three to go. In the tunnel. 33 seconds coming up now. And we're over 35.779 into fourth place for Martin and Spring. So he's going to have another go. This is uh, Steve Richardson with Digit, the crossbreed, a Jersey champion, Morgan's Digital Dream. So left turn into the tunnel. Nice right turn there around and down the arena. Through the cross jump. Cross to number 16, just dropped a pole, so we're on five. Missed the uh, tunnel entrance, so 10 faults total. It may be enough, we don't know. We'll have to see what happens in the agility. 37887. In the, uh, in the champ class, you cannot go through on elimination, but if you have faults, you, you may still be okay. So we'll have to wait and see. Okay, okay next in we've got Jessica back again, just to clear you. Dora Malanoy, four years of age, fourth dog to compete at Crush, but this is Dora's first time. We're excited to be here competing. I do like this dog, I've got to be honest, I've seen it over the last few days. Oh my word, if you watched it last night on TV, which I, I was at home unfortunately, watching it at home. We've gone the wrong way, we've got an elimination. Oh, what a shame. It has got extremely fast running contacts, I know that. Nice to see a, Mal a Malinois as well competing. Don't see him around very often. Okay, they've been eliminated. He's going to finish down the two jumps. Give him a round of applause. on the lucky run that was for Jessica with Dora. Okay, next to go is uh, Sean Illingworth. With Image, the Border Collie, Agility Champion, Ferdy's Mirror Image. Became an Agility Champion last year. And uh, super proud to uh, be competing here. So, into the tunnel. Into the, uh, the weak poles. Number 14, here we go, down, right turn on 16, into the tunnel, two to go, got to beat 34, it's a good time, 35.653 goes into third place, well done. Oh my word, what a jump that was on slow-mo watching that on the VT. NRA, next to go, we've got Stuart Harms working mole, border collie, eight years of age, fifth border collie in 27 years, and it's their first ticket. 
so Stuart and Mole. They're away. Another one on board. Just kind of get the angle right when you're doing that turn there. And obviously the dogs presumably clipping the wing. Dogs, a little bit of time around from number 10 to 11. <laughs> plenty of vocals from both of them. Plenty of vocals going on here. Go, 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 through again. Over the finishing line. Five faults from 38.541 into 12 for Stuart and Mole. So our ring party have done a wonderful job uh, over the whole weekend, just uh, making sure everything is in order. And we're ready to go. So this is uh, Jane Seller with Elwish Dark Legend. Jamie, the Border Collie, first time at Crufts. So handling that slightly differently to... Uh, other people, but again, that's fine. Into the tunnel. Worked well. Round the back, into the wings. Right turn, through the cross jump. Round the back of 14. Right turn, long jump, tunnel. Come on, Jane. It's a good run. Oh, well done. Well recovered. 36, 6, 8, 7. On the clock goes into seventh place. So, all well away from Scotland, we've got Ewan Patterson working crazy for the body, four years of age. And what a night he had last night. Fantastic, unbelievable run. I'm not going to say any more than that because I'm going to watch these two going around. Let's see what we can see, shall we? So, you and him crazy. And we're away. Sweeping right turn then for three to four, but we're okay. Nice quiet handling from you and as you can hear. And obviously, crazy not making much noise at all, if anything, other than bouncing off the ground. Round from 10 to 11. Flowing nicely at the moment. Are they going to be around 22 seconds on 13? They are. Now the leg speed took it up a bit more. And for a clear round. Oh, he's a nice clear round. Two to go. One to go. Yes. 35.606 goes to third place. Cracking run there from Human and Crazy. So the last to go in the large, this is Debbie Simons with Dobby, Border Collie, famous falcon of Mogwise Castle. Sorry, we've got another one to go after this, my apologies. Two to go, second to last dog. So hang it on into the tunnel. Dobby's very keen, he loves his agility, nicely into the weaves. Oh, just took a pole, five faults. Right turn. Into the uh, tunnel, two to go, let's give them a round of applause, nicely done. 34, 3, 8, 7 goes into 11th place, a cracking time. Cracking time actually would have uh, gone probably in seconds, I think. But uh, so next in, we've got a Marita Davis with Duca working Border Collie, a Border Collie three years of age. Duca's second time at Cross last year, she became an agility champ and competed in GMG via the EOs and the SEI World Champs. So as you can hear, Duca's a very quiet dog until we get in front of agility equipment. There in the weeds, but we're okay. So, 14 to 13. Last on the line. 
Hallo. 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 Takes them into eighth place there for Marita and Duca. So a quick change now of the course heights. Ready for the smalls, which we will be back very shortly with him. So we've got a fun pack today again, as always, for you, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, just a gentle reminder to keep washing your hands. Okay, so we're almost ready to go with our first small competitor, and it is going to be Boost. This is Lucy Norton with Boost to Crossbreed, Boost Bite. And uh, not Boost's normal handler. Um, actually, uh, Lucy ran Boost for Dave as uh, David hurt his leg and ended up qualifying for the cross. He had, uh, he's a rescue dog. He had seven homes before he uh, ended up in his current home. So again, doing really, really well to be here. Very excited about his agility. He's a, a corgi cross collie, I believe. <laughs> He's going to bark all the way around. It's a good run. Well done, Lucy. Great start to the smalls. 34, 150. Goes into first place. So, next to go, we've got Emma Fairweather, as you can guess from Scotland. <laughs> Working zip, Shannon Sheepdog. First time at Cross Champs with after Zip won in the first ever champ final. Zip's a dog and a million and a joy to train. I love spending time together because he's always so happy. So, there we are, Emma and Zip. Interested just watching the first small dog go. Uh, it wasn't 22 seconds in obstacle 13, it was 21 seconds. So. Uh, Kind of proves the point that the small dogs can go around quicker than the larger dogs, even though they've got bigger strides. And the smaller dogs have got a smaller stride. So, Emma and Zip. Oh! oh cool. It's a five bolts there. Which is a shame, but that's okay. It'll be alright, I'm sure, for later on. So, into the tunnel. We've got two to go. Huge, massive round of applause for Emma and Zip. Well done. <laughs> Obviously, we're into seven places. 40.140. So, on the start line now, we have Tony Dawkins with Sunflower. Mini American Shepherd, Agility Champion Basley's Hear Me Roar. She says her favourite fast time is sleeping in the sun. I can't imagine she's managed too much of that lately. Oh, so okay, so what happened there was um, she didn't actually take number two. That was really quite random. So unfortunately missed the jump and uh, that does mean elimination. I think uh, safe to say Sunflower's got absolutely no idea whatsoever. And how lovely uh, that Tony's going to carry on. Keeps the confidence in the dog. It was a lovely run, but unfortunately she just didn't take number two. Wow. So sad just being eliminated there at number two. We can see that replay. She actually jumped, but didn't actually jump the jump. Well, I've never seen that before, Kate. I've got to be honest. I've never seen that before. Right, next in we have from Scotland. 
Michelle Henderson working Pinto. Joy Poodle, nine years of age, lovely dog, fifth time competing at Crufts. She's two champ tickets. She's also represented Scotland at the World Agility Open and also loves the beach and swimming. Small dog, but got a certain vocal air, haven't you? Oh, super set of weaves, super set of weaves. Michelle legging it now down towards the bottom to number 16. Into the tunnel and two to go. Small dog to get around with. What a nice run that was. Well done, Michelle. Well done, Pinto. Next to go, it's Lauren Langman with Blink, working Cocker Spaniel. Agility champion Sam Sear blinking brilliant at Devon Gem. So this is another little pocket rocket. Very quick little dog. Can you hear her screaming actually? Loves her agility. Wow, look at that. Through those weaves. <laughs> I'm loving it. Here we go. Across the arena. Right turn on, on uh, 16. It's another cracking run. Let's give them a big round of applause. Two to go. Yes, lovely. 34. 935 goes into second place. Always brings a smile to my face, that dog. Imagine if you were in a dark room watching this without family light. Uh, Louise Eden's in next, we're confused. She, she got eight years of age. As you can hear, Fuse likes a bit of vocal as we go around. So, flowing nicely at the moment into those weaves. Long jump coming up. In the tunnel, about 35 seconds coming out of the tunnel with two to go. Come on! Yes! Well done, Louise and Fuse. Nice clear into third place. Well done. So that was a great run there by Louise, giving us a. Uh, Sorry, no, she didn't go to me. She went into third place. Yes, third place. So this is Alan Bray with uh, Tacita. Uh, working Cocker Spaniel, Jersey champion, Dev Gem Firestarter at Avenue Tiger. She loves this little uh, working cocker to bits. Down into those weave poles. Wow, look at that. Very nicely through there. Right turn. Left turn. Very neatly done there. Right turn on 16. Clearly saying, get into tunnel. Two to go. Lovely round. Very calm, very nice. 37, 747. So, next to go, we've got Joe Blur, Bird, working Max, Toy Poodle, eight years of age, super proud to have qualified for my first championship competition at Crufts. Go enjoy this special time with Max. So, Max and Joe, they're away. So, Max has decided to go behind Joe, so we have an elimination, which is a great shame. run as they work in the way around. <coughs> Max get the odd bit in there. That's two rounds on left as well. Down a 16. 
in the tunnel again. Give him a big round of applause. They got the elimination, but nevertheless, a nice throwing from there from Joe and Max. Okay, so next to go on the line, we have Ashley Butler with Sully, the crossbreed, agility champion, the closet monster of Ashpen. Had a great year and uh, has won a total of 12 championship tickets and uh, cross singles three times in a row and actually won this event twice. So he has a good history on the green carpet. Into the tunnel. To the weave poles. Nicely through there. Wow, quick little dog. Very nicely done on those turns. You really couldn't get them any tighter. Right turn. Into the tunnel. Picks up five. Two to go. 34030. Just picking up five faults on the entry to the tunnel. So, next to go, we've got Selena Bray working Raid. WCS, five years of age. Raid is very pet first and much loved. Her favourite treat is egg custard tarts. She's a cuddly, soft, quiet dog until she sees agility. Another bit of a pocket rocket one, this one. So, great start round at number 10, except we've now gone on to number 13. James, so pick up the elimination there. Three to go. Give him a big round of applause, anyway. Unlucky run there for Selena and Ray. What a shame. So next to go, Lara Staplehurst uh, is on the line with Jazzy, the working Cocker Spaniel. Agility champion, Jet Black Jazz. Uh, a little rescue dog. Just getting settled on the start line there. working Cocker Spaniel, so into the tunnel. Right, left turn, here we go. Concentrating through those weeds, unfortunately came out, so picking up five faults. Nicely done, nicely done. She had to go back and complete them. So we're on five faults as we come around this uh, combination of jumps across the arena. Right turn over the long jump into the tunnel. Two to go. Well done. Five faults, 48, 7, 6, 3 on the clock. So, next to go, we've got Lynn Laurie, we're with Eddie, cross nine-ish, she says, nine-ish. Uh, Eddie spent a year in Kells before he joined Lynn and her colleagues. He lives a life to the full, loves his bark, chase, hunt and roll and the smelly stuff. He's easily distracted, but will do anything for a sausage. There we go, always good to know. So, nice flowing start. Cross to the current obstacle. Nice bouncing set of weaves there from Eddie. <laughs> Worked nicely for him, pushed round to the right hand side, give him a better line. Come on, Eddie, come on, Lynn. We're in the tunnel. We've got two to go. Come on, Eddie. Yeah, well done, Eddie and Lynn. Oh, 
41.75 going to fifth place. Well done. Okay, we've got a noisy one now. This is Milo with Sarah McLean, Jack Russell Terrier, agility champion Milo de Mischief. Nice and down into the weaves. Right turn. Nicely done. Right turn. Into the tunnel there, two to go. Let's give them a round of applause over the final two jumps. 39, 102 goes into fifth place. And next to go, we've got Mark Wingate Wynn working Snazzy, Shell and Sheepdog, three years of age. Snazzy's first time at Grubbs. Great to be competing alongside her mum and Litter's sister. So, Mark and Snazzy looking to be 34.150. Flowing <laughs> very nicely at the moment. Right, so we've got the number 10. Oh, well angled. Well angled there by Mark. <laughs> so, down to the bottom corner. 16 negotiated, 17 into the tunnel we go, number 18. We've got two to go, what's the time looking like? Oh, just off. Well done, 36.479. For Mark and Snazzy. Mark going into third there, that was another nice run. Next to go, Chloe Brown with Ty, the Shetland Sheepdog. Uh, Lico Soteria, My Sunbeam. Ty, for short, eight years old. Also has a good uh, and varied international career. Turn through around the cross jump, negotiating this combination of jumps. We call that a blind turn when the dog uh, crosses behind the handler. Two to go. Well done. It's another lovely run. 37.596 goes into fourth place. Super run that was. I can't go any quicker. I'm not allowed to go, mate, until the screen goes. Sophie's in next. Sophie Macbeth, working Kima, working Cocker Spaniel, five years of age. First time on the green carpet. She's just come back from a long rest, and she gave me a lovely litter of pups just before Christmas. So I'm delighted to have her back in the agility ring. Ready? So, Kima away. Sophie away. Oh, that pole drop late, didn't it? Blooming heck. There you go, it's rolled. So, five faults at the moment. So, flowing nicely. Okay, we have got those five faults, but both of them working very nice. The dog's very quiet, Kima. We're in the tunnel. Well done, over the finishing line, well corrected, 39.109, with five faults of four to be there for Sophie and Kima. Okay, next to go, Ross Quayle with Tula, the Sheltie, Lico Soteria, Sunshine, first time at Crufts. Right, 
right turn. Right turn over the long jump into the tunnel. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, let's cheer them home. Two to go. Well done, 40.878 goes into eight. Place, well done. Come on, Donna, indeed. We've got Donna Jarvie and next from Peebles, working Kayla, Jack Russell, ten and a half years of age, this dog is, and still going. Uh, super little dog, dog in a million. She may be tiny, but she's got the biggest start. I'm going to stop there, because I love watching this dog go around. Plenty of verbal as well. Long, lean and thin, a bit like me, really. Round to the cross, jump, and we're coming around to those weeds. We're into the weeds. Ten and a half years of age, and still flying around like it's a young dog. Over 13, round of 14, working away now down to the bottom part of the course. We're over 16, over the long jump. We went a bit wide there, but we're okay. Turning round, come on. Ten and a half years of age, and he's here for the match. Yes, well done, 38.714. What do you think? That's just about four seconds off the leading dog for a dog like that. Super run, well done. So next on the start line, this is Lauren Langman. We've just seen her run blink. This is Venture, working Cocker Spaniel. Oh my goodness, I'm not even going to attempt that now. Oh, just picking up an elimination there. I'm going to have to practice that kennel name, I think, before I attempt that one. Into the weave poles. Oh, we got a little bit stuck because she was going so fast. Another cracking little dog. Not got a clue that she's been eliminated. How lovely is that? Let's cheer them home, ladies and gentlemen. Into the tunnel, two to go. Well done, unfortunately, picking up that elimination. Interesting look at the VT, what happened? There you go. But it's amazing. Next is our last small dog to go with So uh, Sheltie, five years of age, first time at Crufts, so a homebred dog, third generation of Sheltie girls competing at Crufts. So plenty of verbal as we can hear from the dog. Working away around now to that number 13, over the cross hurdle. And then down now towards 16. Over the long jump. Tunnel coming up, beautiful entry into that one, picked up nicely. And over the finishing line in 38.611. Into sixth place there for Bernadette and Sir. And we'll be back very shortly with a presentation for you.
Jackie Gardner is delighted to be uh, joined by Jill Simpson from the Cuffs Committee and a Kennel Club board member who is also going to be helping us present the awards. So straight on to the smalls first. Taking the winning spot was Lucy Norton with Boost Bites. In second place, Lauren Langman with Agility Champion Samsir Blinking Brilliant at Devon Gem. And in third place, Mark Wingate win with Obey That's Entertainment. And on to the mediums. In first place, James Adams with Devon Gem Tis Gold Standard. In second, Lauren Burns, the Harlequin Fox. Well done. Thank you, Tim. And in thir uh, third place was Dalton Meredith with agility champion Van Dabidozi Munchkin Jive. Well <laughs> and on to the large. In first place, agility champion come by the way, ready for fame with Dave Munnings. And second place went to Dan Shaw and agility champion combine away redefined. So ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together as they take their lap of honor. Well, what an exciting competition. And we've got something, uh, a little bit to show you about the activity side of the Kennel Club and the various disciplines as well as agility you can take part in. Just coming in now is Andrew Rizzio, and she's going to do a demonstration with her team of heel work to music. And of course, everybody likes that. So they're all dressed for the part, so they'll be with us shortly. Over the, the other side there, stand, stand forward is bringing in the working trials team. There'll be a demonstration of working trials. They normally do their sport out in the field. Over here, something I know little about, but I'm, I'm sure we're gonna find more about. Leo's there with the bloodhounds. She, that'll be very entertaining for you. And, and lastly, coming in this time, we've got Claire Coughlin Khan with her team, and they're gonna give a demonstration of obedience and the new rally obedience discipline. So I'll hand it over to our our presenters now will be telling you all about their discipline as they demonstrate. That's it, thank you. Right, so if you're okay with that? Okay, up you get. Team, can you get yourselves where to your starting positions, please? Starting positions, teams? Starting positions, and Spider, starting position, please, thank you. Okay, thank you. Welcome to Hillwork to Music. Pamela, you're in the front. Okay, so we thought we'd do a bit of, a, we'd do a piece of music that could incorporate both Hillwork and freestyle. So my team are going to show you some of both. And we're ready. Off you go. So we've got some small dogs in that are going to show freestyle. And we've got some of the bigger dogs that are going to show more of the hill work to music. And we thought we'd pick a bit of music that could have a bit of fun. And the small dogs are going to be doing the freestyle around the outside. And the big dogs are just doing a little bit of freestyle now to warm up. We've got Heath, the flat-coated retriever. Oh, thank you, sorry, Heath. We've got lovely golden retriever, Dante, cello, sorry. And look, somebody said, Gordon Setters couldn't do hill work to music, but here they are. And we've got Gary. Gary is a crossbreed, he's a repurposed guide dog. And on this side, we've got beautiful Cedar, the German shorthead pointer. And we've got another lovely crossbreed. And we've got Mindy. And now we've got our Hungarian Vizsla. And they're going to start. Oh my go. Off you go, team. 
and we've got a beautiful border collie. And in the middle, sitting there very regally, and go. In the middle, sitting there very regally, is the most beautiful Tibetan Spaniel. Across the front now, and go. Please note that the Tibetan Spaniel is assuming the right position, which is the position of king, and go. So here what to music is in two parts, freestyle and heel work. So that means it's suitable for any dog of any shape and any size. This is a pivotal part, so this is the Tibetan Spaniel starring role. And we go, team. So we're doing some close work. And you can see that these dogs are happy to be with each other and are happy to work. Keep together, team. We're halfway there. Oh, look at the look at little Hattie, the Norwich Terrier. Beautiful stuff. And we've got Gareth, the rescue dog over there from Scotland. I'll go over and see Gareth in a minute. About turn and forward. We're going to move the king because he's going to be uh, bowed to by the team. And over here, we'll have a look at the uh, freestyle of little Gareth. Now, Pamela here was one of the Crofts judges this last two, three days, and she's from Scotland. And Gareth is a rescue dog and a little superstar. And down here, we have Trixie, Trixie the Chihuahua. And Trixie is beautiful. She's going to be doing a performance in our dog activities team later on. Look at her little star. And we've also got Hattie. Hattie the Norwich Terrier. This is a rare British breed, folks, and I've decided I want one. They are absolutely wonderful. And the team are now marching down the middle and bowing to the king as they pass. And you can see that Hillwater to Music suits all shapes, all sizes. And look at these happy dogs. Look at Heath. Heath is a working gun dog. So you can see Heath in the fields at the weekends. And our Gordon Setter here is a show dog. Now they're going to bow to the audience and I'd like you to give them a big round of applause, please. Especially the king at the end there. And I pass over to Leo and the beautiful gun dogs. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to our uh, two lovely bloodhounds. We've got Joy and Graham Cook here with us today who have got um, a young hound here called Sam, who's just eight months old, and we've got Edge, who is two and a half years old. Sam belongs to a, a lady called Joan Corner, who's uh, delegated the task of bringing her into the ring uh, to Joy Cook because she is rather lively. Um, we are an outdoor activity. We do nothing indoors with bloodhounds at all. We are purely an outdoor activity we have championship bloodhound trials that run four times a year that are run under the auspices of the Kennel Club and are organised by the Bloodhound Club and the Association of Bloodhound Breeders. They're the only two clubs that we have. So what we do is we hunt the clean boot, which is the natural scent of the human being. Bloodhounds have a natural affinity to hunt people, always have had, they are scent hounds, they're not tracker dogs like some people like to think they are. They are scent hounds and scent drifts, it moves about, so they do not hunt the line of the walker that has gone actually foot by foot across the field or the hill or the moor, wherever the trials take place. These hounds are scent hounds and as I say, scent moves about. So the judges have to be experienced they have to know what they're looking at and they have to allow for this. It's very, very difficult sometimes to find judges that fully understand the magic of scent. We're an old breed. 
we go back approximately to about 1066, as records show, brought into the country hounds of a bloodhound nature type by William the Conqueror. They've always been used as, as, hunting, as hunting dogs, scent dogs. The local authorities over the years, as they've come through the years, they have been used by the local authorities, the police, abroad and at home, in the uh, help of finding missing people and missing children. Not so much more these days because the world of dogs and the type of dogs that we have in place for the public services are a variety of breeds. But we keep our sport alive under the auspices of the Kennel Club, the two clubs, and we have tremendous fun. Minority sport, you need to be fit, you need to be able to run across country, you need to be able to read the countryside, and you need to be able to read the body language of your hound, particularly if you have a hound that is running free, like these two do that are here today. They have a preference for running their hounds free as opposed to having them on a harness and line. Lovely old breed. If you would like to know any more about the Bloodhound, come and see us in Hall 3 and we'll have a chat with you and perhaps we might be able to get you interested in, in having a Bloodhound and working a Bloodhound and getting out into the countryside and keeping fit and healthy and working alongside a lovely bunch of people. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Claire, I'll hand over to you now and uh, for rally and obedience. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. We're just placing some equipment into the arena and we're going to start this mixed display of competitive obedience and rally with a send away exercise. So you can see here we have our golden retriever being prepared. He's being shown the area. Off he goes. So that was the first part of the exercise. And the rest of the team are going to enter now. He has to wait there until he's asked to rejoin the handler. You can notice that tail going. He loves working. And that was the recall element. And we had a halt. Well done. Let's hear it for Bradley, the golden retriever. Well done. So sticking with obedience, we're going to continue on the theme of recall. So there's Frankie, our little dachshund, the little crowd pleaser there. She just loves working. And she's showing you how to start your recalls. So lots of play and motivation involved here. So she's asked to wait. And then she comes back into the hand there. Look at her go. And in she goes into a finish. What about that? Well done, you. And over to this side, we've got Bradley working on a more complicated recall there. That's an A-type recall. Now, moving over to the rally side, we're also doing recalls. But in rally, we use call fronts. So it's that idea of the presents and the finishes. And then we add different elements onto that. Because, of course, rally is derived from elements of competitive obedience but it adds in skills from other working disciplines. So over this side, we're doing heel work now with our obedience. And you see here the little dachshund there, the tail's going. She's getting plenty of verbal encouragement from the handler. And we're adding in some turns. And over here with Bradley, we're adding in a position on the move. This is something you find in more advanced competition. The dog has to wait there in position until he's rejoined to the handler. And the same over there with Rally. We're doing some turns, pivots, moving back with the dog. Again, very similar foundation skills. Okay, on the obedience side, we're moving into distance control. So this is where the dog has to achieve three positions, the sit, the stand, and the down. And you notice here with little jumping bean, we're asking her to go backwards. That's because in competition, if we have a look over here, we're not allowed to move more than a body length forward or to the side to achieve the position. So if you look at Bradley here, he's following the hand signals from the handler and he knows which position to move into. Well done, they're very good these dogs, aren't they? Let's give them some support. Right, moving over to Rally now, we're looking at distance work. So here is Splash. Would you believe he's 10 years young, enjoying his time in the ring there? So that was a lovely turn and call to heel. And now we've got our little poodle there, that's LB. 
and he's changing position at a distance. So in he goes into the down, very nicely done, up to the sit and into the handler, a present and a finish. Well done, it's it for those rally dogs, fantastic. So now sticking with rally for a bit, we're gonna look at walk arounds, which is a crucial part of rally. And you'll notice as well here, we've got some signs laid out and that's because in rally, we have to follow the signs that are laid out in the ring and the handler has to do the course in the correct number order and it's timed. So a walk around is when the dog is in either a sit, a stand or a down. And then the other part of that is a send around, which is one of the newer exercises in rally. So we're doing a lovely down walk around there with splash and LB was doing a lovely stand send around there. Very nicely done. So over this side, we're not ha we haven't gone to sleep, by the way. We're actually doing a down stay, which is a crucial part of obedience competition. Anyway, that's given you a very brief look at what we do in obedience and rally, but do come and find out more from us in Hall 3. And now I'm handing to Working Trials. But can you give a big thank you to my team? Thank you very much. Thank you, Claire. Good morning, everybody. Going to have a short demo of the sport of working trials. Like bloodhounds, our sport is almost 100 years old. It is derived from police dog work, so very much about tracking and searching. Now, there are some exercises rather unique to working trials, and at the moment, this exercise, the speak on command, you'll see one dog in a static position, encouraged to bark. Now, those of you who've got a noisy dog at home, and you don't know how to stop it, this is how you do it. Teach it to speak, and then you can teach it to be quiet. And you'll see Becky doing slightly more advanced, that she's actually getting the dog to bark at heel. While she's doing that, Pam is laying a track for her dog. Now, working trials dogs do not track in the same manner as bloodhounds. Bloodhounds hunt, and they hunt the actual scent of the person. We follow a pattern, a disturbance on the floor. So I'd like you to imagine this is a 10 acre grass field. I'd also like you to forget that the world and his wife have walked over this field for the last few days, but we're going to show you what a dog can do. The dog will work on a harness and line. This is Phoenix, Border Collie, the most popular breed within the sport. And the dog finds the first article. Keen to go. This is Pam. Pam's from Hampshire, which is next to the best county in England, Surrey. And you'll see the dog meticulously working and now taking the turn. As it's so difficult, Pam has encouraged the dog by putting one or two little bits of food on the track. There we go, the article. Now the dog finds the article not on sight of the article, but because it has the scent of a person on it. And it's actually her own scent, isn't it? So here we go continuing to work. Now this in competition would be some three hours old. Obviously we're not going to leave it three hours here because you'd all miss your lunch watching us, wouldn't you? So we're just doing it quickly. There we are. And we're at the end. Well done, Pam. Now I'd like to show you a little demonstration. We're going to show you that working trials is not just about big, big dogs, not about collies, not about German shepherds. And here is the star, okay? This is Horace, and Horace is six years old, and he's a trained athlete. Believe you me, this is a little dog who thinks he's a big dog. So we're going to show you a little bit of agility with this dog. So we've brought his own little scale jump. Now it would be quite dangerous to put our big dogs over the scale. Okay, Emily? So, yeah. 
and you'll see the dogs are doing the other jumps at the other end. Now this little chap is going to scale this and he's going to come back over. We've all been to church this morning and said a few prayers, so I'm sure he's going to do this. Way. What a little star, isn't he? Now these jumps in competition, the long jump would be nine feet, which is almost three meters. The hurdle would be three feet. And this scale for bigger dogs would be six feet, which is a couple of meters. Now we're going to show you a property search. We're going to come out and find these articles. And the dog's going to find them by scent. All right, there we are. First article and retrieve. Now I'd like you to imagine this is a grass field and the grass is long, not like this lovely astroturf. So the dog would not be able to see the article. So he'd have to use his nose. The handler wouldn't in competition be allowed in the area. Shady has obviously found some tasty morsel on the food left by Pam. There we are, there's his third one, lovely. Okay, well done. Right. Now, just finally, we're going to show you a send away. Now, working trials dogs would be sent some 300 yards, and you'll see this dog moves, and it's not bothered about any of the other dogs that's here. It redirects to the right. Notice how Becky controls the dog on a whistle. No shouting, screaming, very quiet. And then she calls the dog back in. Isn't that lovely? OK, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much from the Working Trials team. Let's give them a big round of applause, all the experts who have come down to give us a glimpse into their beloved sports. And if you want to go and see them and talk to them and find out where you can perhaps get more information on any sport, then it's in Hall 3 at the Activity Centre. All the activities that the Kennel Club uh, promote are in there for you to talk to the experts and meet their dogs as well. Anyway, keep your, keep your seats. We've got the uh, Good Citizen Display Team in next. And my friend Mark is going to tell us all about The Good Citizen. Over to you, Mark. Thank you very much, Dave. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, welcome to our short demonstration on the Kennel Club Good Citizen Dog Scheme.
And welcome to the Kennel Club Good Citizen Dog Scheme display. And throughout that opening sequence, you saw many elements of the gold level, including always being a responsible dog owner and always carrying a poop scoop bag. And wherever you are, folks, always pick your dog's mess up. Crufts is no exception. And we're going to start immediately with looking at the beginning, the early training. So here in this corner, we're looking at socialization. Sorry, we're looking at walking over different surfaces, getting the dog juice to be in hand rubbed, and examination, and the basic puppy positions. Very, very busy over here at puppy class. Over here, we're looking at socialization with our dogs. Starting off right at the beginning, getting dogs used to other dogs, understanding dog body language, and other people as well. Also looking at food manners and how we play with our puppies. Here, we're looking at the recall on the various stages. The puppy recall on the lead, the bronze recall over a distance of 10 paces, and going on to the silver and gold recalls, which are while we're moving away. Finally, on the far side, we're looking at a road scene. Because the Good Citizen Dog Scheme is all about the skills that we take with our dogs when we go out and about. It's not just what we do in a training club. So here we have a busy road scene. Dogs being well socialized. There's a meeting of people and dogs here. We're looking for well-mannered dogs, not disturbing anybody, any dogs or any other people. We've got distractions. We've got a push chair, somebody with a walking stick, and we can see some very good and tight control when we're crossing the road. So various aspects of taking the dogs out and about. And talking of out and about, to get out and about, we often take the dog in the car. And road travel, car travel, is very important. So let's see a demonstration of how we travel with our dogs in the car. Oh dear, that is definitely the wrong way to travel with a dog in a car. As we saw in this uh, demonstration, the dog was on somebody's lap on the back seat, and as the car impacted, and it does happen folks, it got loose, went flying through the windscreen, it possibly could be a fatal accident. That is not the correct way to travel with a dog in a car. So let's look at that again, fingers crossed with the accident side. Oh dear, two accidents in five minutes. They're going to get one of those phone calls, aren't they? But what we see this time, the dog was kept in a crate or a cage in the back of the car. And whilst it may be shaken up in a crash or an impact, it will stay safe. You could also do the same thing using a body harness plugged into the uh, car's seatbelt system. So we look at different ways of car travel and getting dogs used to car travel in the Good Citizen Dog Scheme. Right, next we move on to being out and about with our dogs. So here we see a very busy scene, lots happening all over the place. In the middle of the ring, we've got a dog on the lead, playing with his handler. Got a little ball here, playing tuggy. And oh dear, somebody's naughty dog, not under control, has come in and taken the ball and upset the dog and the owner. Person letting go of the dog, was on the phone to their friend, didn't have control of their dog, and they've allowed it to interfere with somebody else. So, in the Good Citizen Dog Scheme, we advocate tight control with our dogs. Now, if, like me, you live in the city, it's nice to get out into the countryside and exercise your dog, but we need to be aware of our environment and considerate of the environment and the people in it. So, typically, we find out in the countryside, ponds sometimes with duck or other wild fowl on them. And we need well-mannered dogs in these areas. We don't want the dogs running into the ponds, upsetting the wild fowl. There could be fishermen there, tangling up their lines and things like that. So very, very good manners around ponds. We always keep our dogs under tight control. Here we see lots of dog owners here, obeying the rules, getting their dogs used to the tight control. Now horses, over on this side of the arena, we couldn't find a big one, folks. We had to use a small one. 
are a strange phenomena because as dog owners we think the best way to deal with horses is to hide with our dogs in the bush or out of sight so the horse can't see us. But invariably we'll walk out just as the horse is passing and upset the horse and the uh, dog as well. So what we advocate when we take the dog in the countryside is to let the horse see the dog and the dog and the horse. And the best way to do that is to walk head on. Keeping the dog under tight control if required and if the dog's a little bit concerned, you can always give the horse a wide berth, but make sure they can see one another. Now, often country paths will cut through fields and open spaces, sometimes through farmlands. Here we see a field of sheep grazing, and signs clearly saying, keep your dog on a lead. Bodie's owner, yep, reads a sign, keep the dog on a lead, so he knows he's got to keep his dog under tight control. So when he enters through the gate, with the dog under control, ensuring that the gate is closed behind him. He gives the sheep a very wide berth, just sticks to the footpaths. Sheep generally and dogs don't mix in fields, so the sheep will usually move away. But respecting the rights of the farmer and the sheep and keeping the dogs under control. And whilst we're talking about livestock, cows, also in the fields, present quite a different problem. More people every year are killed by cows than any other livestock. But let's see what happens with our dogs when cows that are very curious come towards us very fast. That's right, sometimes cows will stampede us in the fields and we're often tempted to pick up our dog, run with the dog in our arms or to try and rugby tackle the cow to stop the dog getting hurt. No. What we do is we drop the dog's lead and we run to the nearest exit. Trust me, your dog will beat you to the exit, and that's the best way we can keep our dogs safe. And there's nothing better after a long walk in the country than to stop at a lovely pub, especially when it's sunny, outdoors, meet some friends, have some food and something to drink. So here we have people eating burgers and chips with our dogs. What we're looking for here is well-mannered dogs. Good food manners is what we require. We don't want the dogs jumping up demanding food or begging for food, or we don't want an opportunist to steal while they put the owners away. So here we see a good example of the dogs being very well socialized and having very good manners. Well done. Now, send the dog to bed is another element of the gold level of the scheme. Sending the dog to bed is not a punishment. It is a safe place for your dog to be. It may be that your dog's got overexcited and needs a bit of downtime. It might be bedtime. It could be you've got visitors that don't like dogs or are allergic. There are a number of reasons. So sending the dog to bed is part of the gold level. We're going to bring it to you as a bit of fun. So we're going to make the dogs race to bed. Please give them lots of encouragement. Cheer, clap, shout, scream, sing. Do what you like to see if we can get these dogs into their beds as quick as we can. So I think we're set. Handlers, you know the drill. Ready, send your dog to bed. Oh, three very good dogs, very fast on this side, but three in bed straight away. Handlers, send your dog to bed. Oh, and eventually three dogs all in bed. Very well done, folks. Can we have three more? Go to bed. Oh, somebody decided to remake the bed after they got into it. Handlers, send your dog to bed. One in bed. One decided there's too many crumbs in the bed. They've turned it upside down. And one reluctant one eventually going to bed. But some very good examples of send the dog to bed. Remember, it's not a punishment, folks. Now, we're next going to look at how we stop the dog on command and how we recall the dog. Two very important elements of this scheme. So we're going to bring all the handlers and their dogs back into the arena. Once we're all in place, the handler on the very end is then going to leave their dog in the weight and move to the opposite side of the arena at the other end of the line and they're going to recall their dog to the center of the arena so command your dogs and leave your dogs
So one at a time, they're going to try and recall their dogs. Well, they will recall their dogs. And they're going to try and stop them on command in the middle of the ring. And a very good stop. Well done. Give them a round of applause. Now, it could be that you've got your dog recalling to you and you've seen some kind of danger to yourself or to someone else and you need to stop your dog in emergency. And the scheme promotes this. So that's the way we do it. Right, next we're going to look at recalling our dogs. We're going to try and do it all together. So first of all, from the sit position, we're going to ask our dogs to stay. Command your dogs, handlers. And then leave your dogs. Oh, we've got a creeper. One creeping. Oh, two or three creeping. Oh, dear, 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 dear. And recall your dogs. Well, that wasn't quite how it worked in rehearsal. But don't worry, folks, we're going to give them another chance, this time from the down position. So handlers, command your dogs. Make sure they understand you this time. And leave your dogs. Lilo never leaves daddy for long. Look, I'm going to play with someone now. No, I'm going to run out the ring. Had enough, bye-bye. Recall your dogs. <laughs> we can't use you, Lilo. You've got a part of clothes to do. Give them a round of applause. Very well done. Lots of distractions for these dogs as they do that. Dogs running towards them, handlers walking away. Very, very difficult. But recalling your dog, very essential at the, in the Kennel Club's Good Citizen Dog Scheme. Now, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that does conclude our very short demonstration on the Kennel Club's Good Citizen Dog Scheme. If you'd like to find out more about the scheme, you can, of course, visit the Kennel Club website, or you may wish to see us at the stand today. We're in Hall 3, and there is a training ring there called the Good Citizen Dog Scheme. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, I'll leave the finale to the dogs and the handlers. It's been my pleasure to bring to you the Kennel Club's Good Citizen Dog Scheme. Give them a big round of applause, folks. It's a good citizen team. They do a marvellous job promoting it, and it is a marvellous scheme. Thank you, everyone. A great display. And of course, thanks to Mark for giving us a lowdown on all about the, the scheme. So we'll be back with you shortly, folks. More excitement coming up soon. This is your play. This is your plan. Preparing for the future. Testing new places. Learning boundaries. Building models. A drawing can be obsessed with every detail of how dogs do. So your puppy can get the nutrition he needs to become.
I think because of the, the dire situation we knew she was in at the time, we all felt the same. Whenever we went back to that area, we wanted to check on Barry. I'm Sean Laidlaw, and this is my rescue dog, Barry. Before I found Barry, I was kind of lost in life. I'd left the military. I was kind of lost in civilian life. I didn't know, really know who I was, what I was, and losing that identity as a soldier was kind of hard. Like, I was struggling that bad that it was to the point where I thought, I don't want to be here anymore. Uh, I hit the reset button, and to me, normality was war. So I took a contract out in Syria to disarm bombs out there. Um, we'd had our morning routine done. Um, we'd driven in, parked up to a place that we'd been to before. We just heard a noise, a screaming noise. Um, and then there was this kind of concrete plinth, and that's where Barry was, just kind of caught in there. I said to him, right, let's get her back, then let's, let's go get her. So at the end of the day, once we finished our jobs, yeah. We'll just pick her up and we'll take her with us. One of my issues, I don't really think before I do, so uh, I got her back to camp and one of the guys turned to me and said, like, you've got a puppy. We have no puppy food. We have like, all these things that you need to care for a puppy, like, even like wee pads and things like that. Everyone had brought something to the table. The chefs were bringing um, dry Kellogg's as kibble. We had some of the dog handlers were donating us some food. Um, we had an American SEAL team that just turned up on our doorstep one day. But like, this is really weird. Like, we're in the middle of this war zone. You've got someone like, knocking on your front door to come play with your dog. Um, so it really distracted everyone from the harsh realities of what we were living in. I, um, I went to Syria kind of broken and not really knowing where I was in life and really on a knife edge of where I wanted to be on this earth and it wasn't until maybe week two of having buried that I realised I hadn't had any thoughts, I hadn't had an outburst or anything like that, she'd really kept me calm. And I think that was when I first realised the, the effect that she was having on me. I never got to say that goodbye and that kind of really started to frustrate me. They were going to leave the camp and Barry had no home. So instantly I had to come up with a plan. Luckily enough, I was already talking to a charity called Warpaws. To try and get a dog out was really difficult. Um, so we actually ended up smuggling her inside of a fruit basket through the checkpoints. And as soon as she got through the border at the other end in Iraq, Warpaws were there, they grabbed her straight away and took her away. Everyone assumes that at the airport it was going to be this big romantic fairy tale ending where she comes running up to me and jumps at me like you see in all the American uh, like YouTube videos. And it was nothing like that. I even expected it to be like that. It wasn't like that at all. I've been getting sent progress pictures every now and then, so I knew she was growing, but I didn't realise how big she was until she came out of that cage. She just was looking at me, like, who, who is this? And then I got her to sit and I knelt down next to her and she sniffed my leg. And I started stroking her head and I think that's where it kind of clicked. Um, and she just like barrel rolled onto the floor and I had a pause in the air. As, as crazy as it sounds, I just sit there and talk to her. She doesn't judge, she just sits there and wants to be loved. She was the exact same as when I left her, really. Uh, a little diva that loves attention, and <laughs> that's just who she is. When I come home, everyone was saying, oh, it's great that you've rescued Barry, and there was no way that I rescued her. She definitely rescued me. Um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. Ellie is my absolute life. She is just my rock for everything. She is just my constant sidekick. I probably wouldn't be here, to be honest, if it weren't for Ellie. My name's Hayley and this is my dog, Ellie. When it happened, it just felt like my world was just falling apart. Um, we was all sitting here as a family and she went upstairs and she said she'd be back down for lunch and she never did. We were best friends and she was my biggest support network and she was my idol. All my family had someone to talk to and someone to share their grief with and I didn't. Not have her there in my life, um, I just thought I just can't do life without her. Ellie stepped up straight away afterwards. She was my rock and she just followed me everywhere. Our bond just grew stronger. She just stuck by me, like she knew what was going on. She just would put her head on my lap if I was feeling sad at the time. If I just wanted to cry, she'd be there. 
with me. She just lay by my side. It was like she was saying that everything was going to be okay. Ellie was my motivation to get up in the morning. She was my motivation to get out of bed and get dressed, even if it was just to come and feed her. But she'd get me up, she'd get me walking, which in turn got me socialising straight away and talking about what happened. And she got me back to what I love doing, which is agility and here watch music. We go agility once a week and we train here at music every day. We train tricks at home, um, whether it be out in the park or in the living room. When I'm training with her, it's like I forget about everything around me. We go to compete every couple of weeks or so. We go to local competitions with agility and we travel up and down the country for here at music. When we go to shows, it's like being in a bubble, just me and Ellie. Um, nothing in the world matters. It's just me and her spending time together, training and enjoying ourselves. Being able to take home a rosette, it's good to be able to look back and see the journey we've taken together. And it was the reason I carried on my activities such as agility and here works music. She just gave me something to aim for in life. I owe Ellie my life because she's just one incredible dog. With out Jovi, life was a bit of a struggle. I've never had a, a dog quite like Jovi before. He is definitely one of a kind. So I'm Graham Sage, and this is my hearing dog, Jovi. So I started to lose my hearing at about 15, 16 years old. I did used to miss things like fire alarms and wake up alarms and cooker alarms and all of those sort of things that could cause safety issues. Sitting in, a, in an environment where you've got lots of people around you, but you feel alone because you can't get involved in, in the conversation because you're just not able to pick up what's being said. That also meant that I was keeping a bit to myself. My wife had heard about hearing dogs and recommended it. And um, so yeah, I sent in an application and, and it all kicked off from there. When I've got him, everyone is a lot more aware of that need um, to speak directly to me. Even if it's a conversation with someone else, they, they will speak clearer so I would understand. It really lit up our eyes as to how beneficial he really was. The boys love having him in the classroom, I must admit. Yeah, and they just have that sort of family feel when they're in the classroom. He's definitely helped the way that I teach and helped me understand the children better and the children understand me better and he can alert me to um, when the boys are uh, trying to communicate with me but I'm not necessarily hearing what they're saying or anything. Um, they can call him to them and then come and get me. If I've got a, an activity for the boys to go on, um, I can put a timer on and he'll come and alert me when, when their time's up. Uh, so at home he, um, he can wake me up to the, the alarm. Um, he alerts me to the doorbell. I'm so grateful that, that I've been introduced to him and, and you know the, the sort of things that he does for me, not just the actual work side of it, you know, how, how he alerts me to all of these things, but the social side of it since getting him, it's it's been a big big change. Because we've been through so much and we've gone through such a traumatic event, I think we formed a lifelong friendship that will never be changed. I am PC Louise McMullen and this here is a retired police dog Wolfie. Specialist told me that I would never be an operational police officer again, not only a dog handler. I wasn't going to listen to that because I'm quite stubborn and uh, was adamant I was going to get back. She just kept like striving and get, making little steps at a time. And it was quite a long journey really for her. Just showed that desire, like I am not going to be told I can't do it. Uh, so with the support of West Midlands Police and my inspector at the time, I managed to get back to being a fully operational dog handler. Wolf, you know, immediately connected. As soon as they got together, it's as if they'd been together as fun puppies. I think they only did a two-week rehandle course and then went out back out on the streets operational. I 
I must have been knocked out. And my initial thoughts were, as I opened my eyes, was seeing the flames because the car had caught fire. I injured my uh, wrist, fractured eye socket, fractured jaw, and I also sustained quite bad injuries to the centre of my back. As I was crawling out the car, my only concern was that I had to get the dog out of the back of the vehicle. I got there, I could still see some smoke or steam billowing. Louise was on the floor with Wolfie. I just knew that I had to, I had to get him to the vets because I thought he would die. He's not just a dog, he's a colleague to us. He's not shy to say that it was, it was emotional. I was in hospital then, just being apart and not able to be near him was horrible. He had to be carried out of the vets. He couldn't walk. He had hydrotherapy. He also saw a physiotherapist there. He's also helped me because I had um, a bad back and I was limited in, in how much I could do walking. So the two of us together must have been a right sight to see. Wolfie passed his licence again in the May 2019. And they proved that they were very capable of going back out there and going back out on the streets. However, um, Louise quickly identified um, some of Wolfie's behaviours that he wasn't actually happy in the vehicle. We had a really busy set of night shifts and I think it took him back to that November. We put it down to the fact that Wolfie is suffering from post-traumatic stress. Events such as the accidents that we've been through not only affects us, but it also affects them. My instant decision was to retire him from police work. Our friendship has grown even more in the fact that we spend more quality time together now, I think. It's sometimes nice to sit, have that companionship and that affection and love from them to make you smile. What Leah loves is to be able to get to know a patient. You know, we walk down the corridor and people say, hello, gorgeous, and he looks up. And I'm sure he thinks his name is gorgeous at times. I'm Lindsay Uglo, I'm the lead therapy dog handler of the team that visits Southampton Children's Hospital. SCH Therapy Dogs is Southampton Children's Hospital Therapy Dogs, so we're a team of six therapy dogs and four handlers. Um, the minute Lindsay and the dogs walk on, people switch off, people have time to relax. Um, the patients that are awake absolutely love the treat of having a dog. It's somebody who's non-clinical can come in and just offer them something that we can't as staff. They bring a bit of home into the unit, into what is a really clinical, intense environment. I knew nothing of his diagnosis or his condition, and then it was suggested that maybe I, I should introduce the dog to Oscar. Lindsay brought Leo over, put the paw onto Oscar's bed, and instantly his heart rate dropped, and we got a smile. Um, and it was a miracle. It was. <laughs> if we can give them that little bit of magic to cling onto, then that was that's really great. That smile made, meant a lot to everybody. All of what we do comes under animal assisted intervention. So within that, there's animal assisted activity, which is meet and greet. They'll go and say hello to everybody. They, they're like speed daters. If we're doing an escort or if we're supporting a child who's having a particular procedure done, we might be sitting with that parent and child for 40 minutes. And it's all about keeping the child with a, a positive thought process um, whilst they're having health care. Leo just comes into the unit, he's such a chilled dog. Just having that calming time, just patting Leo, is just therapy for us all. They're greeted by people from the minute we walk in the door to the minute we leave. He will trot in like he's owning the place, but to try and get him to leave on occasion, I've actually had to carry him out. The dogs just come in and their friendly faces, they give them something other than, than the healthcare environment to think about. They're not there to persuade or cajole the children, they're just simply dogs. And we are the bridge between the healthcare team and the, ch the child.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to part two of the championship agility here in the main arena at Crufts. Let's please put on International Ladies' Day, no less, International Ladies' Day, please let's put our hands together for our judge, Jackie Gardner. So we're ready to go with our first competitor. If you were here earlier this morning, you will have watched our jumping rounds. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the jumping round, we're going to take this agility round, we're going to add the two together and come up with our finalists that will go through to the evening performance tonight. So um, we have two judges in the ring. We also have uh, Martin Cavill, who's going to be judging the up contact on the dog walk. Okay, so we are ready to go. Uh, let me just introduce you to the first two jumps. This is, uh, sorry, the first two jumps. That's because of the conversation I've just had. Sorry, I do apologize. Uh, the first handler, Andrew Priestley, with Lucy the Border Collie, Ragamuffin Rockstar. So straight across, and they have to go into that uh, weave poles with the first pole on the dog's left shoulder. And turn on to the dog walk. We call that obstacle discrimination when the dog has to choose between the dog walk or the tunnel. Left turn down over the long jump, round the back of the cross jump, across, up onto the A-frame. Got to get the contact points on both sides. Right turn, back into the tunnel, and onto the seesaw, which has to hit the ground. Left turn over the final jump. Well done. Our first clear round, 44, 2, 4, 5. What a great first round that was. Nice to get the first dog round with a clear round as well. Next in, we have a Marita Davis working Duca. Bordecoy, three years of age, second time at Crufts. And they're up for well. Anyway, nice flowing courses. I like this. A little bit of work here and a little bit of work there, as they say. Rapid start down to those feet. What a superb entry that was into the weaving poles. So into the other rigid tunnel now, which is underneath the dog walk. Up on the dog walk, walk the command, we've got the running contact, nice back feet, footed contact there, over the long jump. Round over the cross and pushing the dog out to the left. And we're working away now down towards the A-frame. Okay, so we've got a refusal there, we're just past the line of the obstacle. Coming round with the seesaw, we're going to flick round the seesaw to 19 and over the finishing line with a time of 41.397 with five volts there for so, Marita and Duca. Sorry, hey. That's right. Uh, next to go on the line, we have Steve Richardson with Digit Crossbreed, Agility Champion, Morgul's Digital Demon. So many of our handlers getting a clear round in the jumping round, so they are going to uh, need to push it. Oh, look at that. Lovely independent weave entry. Wow, very nicely done. Into the tunnel. Round right turn onto the dog walk. Got to get that contact point. Into the tunnel. Our handlers pushing for the best times and the best possible route around the course. Onto the A-frame. Picks up five faults. So five added to the scorecard. Onto the seesaw. Push back, left turn. Well done, Steve. 38, eight, nine seconds on five forks. Goes into second place. Great time on that run, great time. Next team, we've got Dan Shaw, working geek. Border Collie, seven years of age. Perfect, most perfect dog ever. Bronze medals at the World, silver medals at the EO. One cross champion British Open last year. So we've had the jumping round this morning, this is the agility round, and then later on this afternoon we have the main final. So they're looking ideally to get two clear rounds in these runs this morning. It's a great run down through the middle of the arena there to those weeds. Dogs taking it nicely, some at the moment faster than others. So time the crucial thing. Lovely contact on the dog, slowing the dog down there for the contact. Will he run it tonight if he gets through? You never know. 
so flowing nicely now over the Crofts wall. We're up over the A-frame. Nice contacts there as well. Held the dog slightly there, just making sure we got them correctly. We're in the tunnel. We're coming around to the seesaw. A little bit wide on the turn. Lost a little bit of time there. Not a lot, but a bit. So Dan picking the dog up now for the finishing line. Here we go. 39.931 going to first place there for Dan and Geek. So next on the line, Debbie Simons with Dobby, Border Collie, four years old, famous Falcon of Mogwise Castle is his full kennel name. First time at Crufts. And I know Dobby is going to put 110 into this round. Straight across the weaves. Wow, look at that, finding that weave entry all on his own into the tunnel. Round. Onto the dog walk. Wow, just made it. Well done. Round the back. All relying on verbal commands and body language to steer Dobby around the course. Right turn. Into the tunnel. Right turn again. 39 to beat. Left turn. Go on, Debbie. One to go. Yes. 37. Oh, nine, eight goes into first place. Well done, what a cracking run, wow. Oh my word, that has certainly set a time and a half. That, has, that was a rapid round. Next to go, we've got Sean Anyworth, working image, border collie, seven years of age. She became an agility champion last year. She used to be the most unlikely dog, so we are super proud to achieve this status. So they're away, release command, good to go. Straight down the middle, as you already know. Beautiful weave entry. It's quite a distance. You can see the handlers don't have to go all the way down there. Well, you hope they don't have to go all the way down there. Saves them a little bit of leg work as well. They can position themselves quickly then for the next obstacle. Target the command, is it? I think. Go around for the long jump. Over the cross hurdle. Coming around now for the other cross hurdle up over the A frame. Flowing nicely at the moment there for Sean and Image. We're in the rigid tunnel. A bit of a wide turn, just a split second there, maybe a second, you never know. Turning round with the finishing line, 38.894, goes into second place for Sean and Image. Okay, so next to go on the line, we have Martin Reed and Spring, agility champion, Border Paws, secret surprise. I think Spring is quite keen to crack on, as you can tell. He's like, come on, let's go. So, right across the arena. Nice into weaves. Martin getting ahead. Trying to cut down all these turns. Gets a stopped contact in to control the end. Doesn't want to make a fault. Round the back of the cross jump. Right turn. Across onto the A frame. Followed by a right turn into the tunnel. Oh, just cut that a little bit too fine, so picks up five. My thoughts, it'll depend on the jumping as to whether he goes through. Lovely run there, Martin. 39, 9, 9, 3. Goes into sixth place. So, next to go, all the way from Scotland. We've got Ewan Patterson, won last night. He's had a good start this morning as well, working crazy. Border Collie, four years of age. Member of Team GB and Team Scotland. Crazy won first place agility round at the FCI. And the World Championships in 2019. The World Championships in 2019. So if you went here last night, you didn't see his run. Look at it on the Crufts YouTube channel. It was an absolutely amazing run. So a cracking run this morning as well. Fingers crossed. This will be another. So quite handy. Not a lot of verbal. Just use it when he needs to. Look at that. Running contact or what? Rapid running contact. So he's not uh, playing it cool, he's just kind of going as he would normally do, going at the pace he would normally do. Flowing nicely around a 16, we're into the tunnel. We've got three to go. We've got two to go. We've got one to go. Yeah, super run, 37.810, goes into second place for you, and it's crazy, what a run that was. Yeah, fabulous run there by you, and he's had a great week uh, here at Crufts, and as Nigel said, did a fantastic run yesterday in the international event. Okay, next on the line, Nara Cuddy with Lemon, and Lil Hayes Dark Pleasure is her kennel club name. 
three-year-old border collie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so we're running across to those weed poles, finding that gap nicely through there. Blind turn, we call that. Oh, just picked up the jump. So um, that is an elimination, unfortunately, for taking the wrong course. And uh, the dogs have never seen these uh, courses before, none of the handlers, actually, until they get here. Uh, the handlers have a chance to walk the courses, but obviously the dogs don't, so they're completely reliant on the handlers' guidance. Well done, Lara. Hopefully you picked it up at elimination there. So, next to go from Wales, we've got Stuart Harms working mole, border collie, eight years of age, fifth border collie in 27 years, and the first ticket as well. Looks like on the start line there, Mole's barking away, you'll find a prick, started working, this is it. Five and a five half. That's ten volts at the moment, I do believe. Well, we've come over the craft turtle the wrong way out of the course, so unfortunately we've got an elimination. Nice contact with the back feet there, I must admit, that was a cracking contact. So still pushing as if they were clean, gotta do it for the rest of the course, you may as well. Great contact again, round 16 into that tunnel. I'm sweeping round to the right, but we've had a quick look at the weeds. Just got to check them. Stuart's going to finish him off. Well done, unlucky there for Stuart there with Moll. So, next on the line is uh, Alan Wildman with Minx. Agility champion, Chikara Moore, born performer. So getting, making sure Minx is nice and settled on the start line. Sounds the tire. Sending into the waves. Turn out of the tunnel there, onto the dog walk. Our judge checking that uh, they get the contact point. Last one. Last one. Round. Right, right. Onto the A-frame. Sliding all the way down. Making sure she gets the contact point. That's a nice right turn. Command. Out and over the seesaw. Left turn. Well done, Alan. 43, 9, 4, oh, goes into fifth place. So, nice run as well there for Alan. Taking it steady, getting all the contacts. So, next in we have Natasha Wise working Pebbles. Border Collie, seven years of age. Uh, Pebbles got a green carpet in competitions at Crufts. Third year of the champion Crufts with Pebbles. Fingers crossed for another successful one. We're also part of the GB Agility team who gained bronze medal at the World Champs in Finland. Just correcting, making sure the line of the long jump's right. Because obviously that split millimetre or so on, if the dog catches that as it goes over the largest degree one at the end, could knock it over. And after that knocks over, then we have some faults. So I'm just spotting that, lining it up correctly. And Natasha and Pebbles will shortly be able to go. So, with the command there, nice and clear go. Pebbles is away, rapidly away. You in the weeds. That working ahead now. Into the tunnel. Going around for this dog walk. Plenty of verbal commands there, keeping the dog where she wants her. So, long jump. Five bolts at the moment. We're up over the A frame. Round of 16. Into the tunnel. This is the time's like. Seesaw coming out, no problem with the contact. Over 19, we want to go. Big round of applause. 38.278. Okay, so next to go on the start line, we have Lucy Hinchley with uh, Pixie. Nine-year-old Border Collier. Jersey champion, Border Spirit, Bright Star.
hammer off. Racing across the arena there. Oh, nicely in, the, in those wheels. Look at that, lovely. Into the tunnel. Getting the contact. Pixie making sure she puts the paws on it. Round the back of the cross jump. Oh, just missed the jump, so we're on five for a refusal. Over the A-frame, right turn, they're seeing this finish jump. As they come over there, right turn onto the seesaw. Two to go. Well done, Lucy. Five points, 43.100. That was a nice run of 40 with the five points there, there we go. Next team, we've got Gemma Haycock, working jukebox, bought a collie four years on Monday. Happy birthday. Duke's first time competing at Crust. Very excited to be competing here with him in two events on the famous green carpet. So, Duke's certainly picking the pace up there. Big stride out there as we're going down towards that rigid tunnel. Cracking set of wheels. You can see that Gemma now way ahead. Things of pace up there, nice right turn up onto that dog walk, steadying now for the contact, nicely executed. And now swinging around over the long jump, taking the cross circle. We're coming towards the A frame. We're on the A frame, good contact again coming around a 16, rigid tunnel coming up. We've only got four to go. Seesaw next, slowed down there, just paced it right there, got the contact, saved a little bit of time, and over the finishing line. Yes, super run. Super run there by Gemma and Jukebox. Going to third place, 38.503. Ah, another cracking run there uh, by Gemma and Duke. Next to go on the line, we have Joe Tristram with Bright Border Collie and Sawsil back in black. Bright's first time to Crufts. Uh, Joe's been here before. She just saw the seesaw, unfortunately, and uh, picked that up. They're coming, they can't see anything once they're in that tunnel, and uh, our judges deliberately set two choices there, and uh, unfortunately just put her foot on the uh, seesaw. So, unfortunately, elimination for Bright. Onto the seesaw. She says, I'm going to shout at you. Well done, well done. So, unfortunately, elimination there. So, next to go all the way from Scotland. We've got Jennifer Hart working Giggle. Bearded Collie, four years of age. Giggle's a homebred girl, my shadow, my best friend. 2019 was a roller coaster of a ride from the highest of the highs to the lowest of the lows. We're here to enjoy every second together on this big stage. Nice partnership this yesterday, saw the first time. And the lovely ones. I tell you what, that was well held, that was. She ran that extremely well as far as uh, Jennifer was concerned. My word, I'm not sure where we're going to go. But we're all right. But unfortunately, we've missed out the contact. We've missed the dog walk out. We've got an elimination. I think we'll just enjoy that, and why not? Why not? Take your own line. They're going to go around a 16. In the tunnel. Yeah, unlucky there for Giggle and Jennifer. Well done. Jess Claire Hugh, and this is Dora. This is a Malinois, so um, we we'll see more Malinois now in agility. But uh, we've seen many border colleges today, but uh, something different. And she's going to shout at Jess and go, "Come on, let me go." Four years old, very powerful dog. Jess is going to have to run to keep up with her. Nicely into the weeds. Wow, look at that. Very nicely done. Oh, what a shame. Just picked up the jump there. So, unfortunately, that's an elimination. 
Oh, she says, I like that. I like the tunnel. Dora doesn't care, I don't think, to be fair. I don't think she cares that she's been eliminated. There you go. <laughs> so let's give a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Well done, Dora. Oh, you've got to love it, haven't you? You've got to love it. Especially the start part. So next to go, Dave Munnings, working fame. Border Collie, eight years of age. Uh, famous been an incredible dog, winning every final in the UK and two medals at the FCI World Championships of the European run. This is with one, uh, this will be one of her last competitions possibly at Croft, so uh, you never know. We'll see Dave next year and they'll enjoy it whatever happens. So, Dave and Fame are away. Go weave and we did indeed. Cracking set of weaves. We're up on the dog walk. No problems with that tunnel. Nice contact as well. Over the number 10, the long jump. Kennel club. Hurdle to the eight taken with another one coming up now as well. Nice A frame sweeping around 16. Into the rigid tunnel. With three to go. Good contact on the seesaw. Jack and Zappy in the finishing line coming up. Here we are. 37 4, four fly. Second place for David Fame. Next on the line, we have Martin Reed. Uh, he's already run spring round, and this is Snooze. So he's going to give it another go. Bill Hayes, secret pleasure. Snooze. Into the tunnel. That's such a long run across that arena. They have to exercise control there as they go into those weaves. Round onto the dog walk. Just hanging on there, calling him into the tunnel, round the back of the cross jump. Onto the A-frame. Nicely done, right turn as we go round. We've got three to go, four to go. Oh, we saw the weaves. But we're okay, just wasted time. Martin recovering well. Well done, no faults, but the time of 30. 0.855 still goes into seventh place, even though he lost a bit of time there. My word, that was close. That was seriously close. Picked up those weaves. Hey ho, we're all right. Next in, James Seller, working Jamie, border collie, four years of age, and this is Jamie's first time at Crofts. So, Jane and Jamie come up in Northumberland. Just got the weeds incorrectly, so we get a refusal there. There we are, first pole's always got to be on the dog's left. As the dog does know, and unfortunately, we've got on the wrong side. So five at the moment. Oh, that was nice. Sometimes how they slow themselves down, but they do. Well, we did that at any rate as far as Jamie goes. So, coming around to 16 with four to go, into that rigid tunnel. Over 19, over the finishing line, five belts, 41 points, 971 for Jane and Jamie. So, second last uh, dog to go, I believe, in the large. And uh, this is Dalton Meredith with Costa, Neon Oxide. Oh, two more, two more to go. And then we'll be going on to the smalls, I believe. So, into the weave poles, nicely done. Ooh, well, well done. He looked at the jump. Got the contact nicely there. Left that sharp left turn. Just uh, checked a little bit too much there on the stride, so took out the pole, so we're on five. It's got to go back through those wings. Well done. 37, five, five, five. Great time, uh, but 10 faults, unfortunately. So we will wait to see if that's enough to go through to the final tonight. 
So next to go, we've got Pia Glover working pink, border collie, four years of age. Pink's a homebred bitch, and this is her first time competing and running at Crufts. She loves agility and also working sheep. So, nice start, just caught that one as it entered the tunnel, the rigid tunnel as it went into the A-frame. Actually jumped into it, you do see that sometimes, they don't kind of run, they actually kind of jump in, which is a bit odd. But it's not a problem, there's no contact, thankfully. Into the rigid tunnel, working away now, over the long jump. Round the cross hurdle, over the next cross hurdle, up onto the A-frame. Nice contact, coming round to 16. Into the rigid tunnel. A quick look, I think, there are those uh, wheeze. We've got one to go. It's very quiet. It's a clear round. Fantastic. 40.195. Gone into seventh place. Last dog to go in the large. This is uh, Koi. Very pretty, up there. Uh, with Lee Windiat. Border Collie, Mendip Star, Coyote Snuggly. So racing down to those weaves. Nicely in there. To the dog walk. Picks up five on the dog walk down. Didn't quite touch the white part of the dog walk. Up and over the A frame, nicely done. Right turn. On to the seesaw. Two to go. Well done. Five fours and 39.902. So our ring party are going to change the jumps and uh, put everything down. It's only the jumps that get changed. Uh, this is because all the dogs in agility are measured and they go into a height and a jumper height that's suitable to their size. So the A-frames and all the contact equipment stays the same. But uh, bear with us and we'll shortly be going on to the smalls. Right, so if you're watching this and you think, what about the final? The final is on this afternoon at 4.45, 4.45. So if you do go early, don't forget, you can watch the competitions on the Crufts YouTube channel. You can also catch up with what's happened over the last three days and after however many years it's been here as far as uh, being live on the YouTube channel. Loads of bad things to watch as well. Some of them quite hilarious. Some of them are very funny and obviously serious as well. So yeah, if you leave early and you want to watch it, by all means do. Otherwise, you never know, they might, in fact, they probably will because they showed the final last night on TV as well. So, we're into smalls. And we're starting off, first of all, with Sarah McLean, working Milo, Jack Russell Terrier, four years of age. She says, Milo is an incredible little dog and my shadow. So, we're away. where Sarah uses those long legs, sprints down, gets Milo going a bit more fired up. As you can see, plenty of enthusiasm there from Sarah as well as the dog. And plenty of verbal commands, because he barks quite a bit as well. He's gone round the jump, unfortunately, he hasn't picked the jump up. So we've got a refusal there. So five faults at the moment. Rapid running, come here, she, I, right, I definitely heard her say, come here. Did you hear her say, come here? I did. Unluckily, she's got an elimination. Is she going to run the rest of it? Go on, Sarah, run the rest of it. Give my other run around. It's not unlucky there. We've got the elimination. We've got that wrong side as well. Well, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Enjoy it. Enjoy the experience. Coming around with 16. Down to the tunnel. Up on the seesaw. You can guarantee he's going to get a huge fuss at the end of it regardless. Well done. Unlucky there for Sarah and Milo. So Mark Wingate Wynn is on the line with Snazzy, Shetland Sheepdog, all ready to go. First time at Crufts, quite a young dog, three years old. Oh, didn't quite go in the tunnel, so uh, picks up five forts. Oh, Mark's really happy to run down there, get down there. Well done. 
Nice and through. Such a quick little dog. Right turn onto the dog wall, running to get ahead to try and get the turn in. Well done. Here we go onto the A frame. Right turn through the tunnel. Nice, nice turn there. Hits the ground. One to go, go on, Mark. Wonderful. 44071 goes into the lead. Picks up uh, five faults just for that refusal on the tunnel. Wow, what a run. There we go. Bernadette Bay's in next, working Zoa. Uh, Shelty, five years of age, first time at Crufts uh, this, with this dog. Homebred is my third generation of Shelty girls competing at the Crufts Championships. So, Bernadette and Zoa. Let's see how they go. A little bit verbal, as we can hear. You'll hear a bit more of it as we go around. Even at the time. Nice, brilliant, way ahead there. Keep control dog, making sure we don't go over that other obstacle on the left hand side of the dog. Nice control there on the dog walk. No problem at all as far as the contacts go. Coming around to the cross hurdle. Across and then turning right to the second of the cross hurdles. Up over the A-frame, go the command. Right turn, command to 16, into the rigid tunnel, and then we do a right turn again. Up on the seesaw, come on, she says as well, come on. Come on indeed, we want to go, here we are, 43.947. Puts them into first place for Bernadette and Zoa. So next to go, Lauren Langman with Venture. Working Cocker Spaniel, uh, four years old. First time, really quick little dog. Absolutely covers the ground. <laughs> look at that go. Into the weeds. Wow, look at that. Onto the dog walk, Lauren trying to beat the dog, just manages to do it. Well done. It's like it's on a bit of elastic, isn't it? It's <laughs> Here we go, over the A frame. Right turn. Right turn onto the seesaw. It's got to hit the ground. Well done. One to go. Let's give him a big cheer. Oh, smashed it. 39, 3, 8, 7. I think she knocked about five seconds off the time there. Goes into first place on 39.387. Wow. Wow indeed, Kate, wow indeed. Unbelievable. I'd always worry with the A-frame with that dog, but it's going to slow down to the top, which it does, thankfully. Uh, next to go, we've got Joe Burt, working Max Toy Poodle, eight years of age. Super proud to have qualified for my first championship competition at Crufts. Going to enjoy this special time with Max. Nice little dog, this. Still got plenty of time to have a pop-up as we go around as well. Look at that beautiful, beautiful dog walk. But unfortunately, Max has gone the wrong way. So we've got an elimination. What a shame. What a shame. Good, good far as we go over the top. I like that. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Come on, Max. Come on, Joe. We've got two to go. Give him a big round of applause if they've got eliminated. We don't know. Exactly. There you go. Time for a cover. Okay, Selena Bray's on the start line with Raid, working Cocker Spaniel, five years old, Devon Gem Absolute Steel. Into that tunnel. They can't see that entrance at all. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, very nice. We call that independent weave, independent weave entry. When the dog so totally understands their job that they can just be sent into the tunnel. Ooh, that was a wide turn. Went the wrong way though. Unfortunately, picking up elimination there. That's a real shame actually, because that was a lovely run. Right turn onto the seesaw. 
Let's give them a big round of applause. Unfortunately, Selena and Ray picking up an elimination there. That was so unlucky, so unlucky. Next to go, we should have Emma Fairweather from Scotland. <laughs> Working Zip, Shetland Sheepdog, first time at Cross Champs for seven was after Zip won in his first ever champ final. Zip is a dog in a million and a joy to train. I love spending time together. He is always so happy. So, got a refusal, it looks a bit on the tongue. Turn off, turn off, wee, wee, wee. Ooh, good dip to the right there for that seesaw, but we're okay, Zip's back on track. We've got a refusal again, we're not picking up that tongue, unfortunately, there either. But we picked it up that time. I mean, come on, you're having a laugh, aren't you? Picked it up that time. Come on, up the dog walk. Yes, we're there. Back on track. So they've got an elimination. That's a great shame. Nevertheless, they've made the journey. They're going to continue with it. And as they say, they've got to zip it up at the end of the day. Right. Come on, right. See Storm coming up. Nice contact. Big round of applause. So they finished there for Emma and Zip. Unlucky with that elimination. So, uh, Lynn Lowry is on the line with Eddie Crossbreed, nine years old. Nine years old. Eddie comes to Lynn Dillon. This is a uh, full kennel name. Look at him motoring down there. He's even got time to have a quick bark. Look at that, lovely. Oh, came out. Five, five faults for not completing three. So he has to go back and uh, make sure that he completes them correctly before we carry on into the tunnel. Yeah, go on, over the dog walk. Shouting at mum while he's there. Lots of encouragement from Lynn. Right turn, oh, he looked at the finish up there. He thought he'd finished, I think, actually. On to the season No, he said, I don't like that. Oh, there you go. Well done. Oh, he looked at it again, but we're okay. So we're on 10 faults. Well done. Well done. 59 seconds on the clock. Goes into fourth place. You've got to smile, haven't you? You've just got to smile. Dog loved it. Anyway, next to go, we should have Louise Eden working fuse. Shetland Sheepdog, eight years of age. And again, another small vocal dog. Now it goes quiet. Not for long. So we're in the weeds. Nice, steady set of weeds. That was a bit of a yak, that was. What was going on there? Probably saw the dog walk. Here we are, on the dog walk. Good running contact. Judge Chaffee with a back feet contact, but it looks like from where I am, but I'm not the judge. Oh, the craft circle coming around to the second of the craft circles and the A frame. Lap 16. Rigid tunnel coming up. Up onto the end of the seesaw. Few still giving it some. Louise giving it some as well over the finishing line in. 42.865. And they go into second place. What a superb run there for Louise and Fuse. I think she was pleased with that. <laughs> uh, okay, Donna Jarvie's on the line with Kayla, the Jack Russell, ten and a half years old. Very cute. Racing into those weaves, there you go. Look at that, nicely done. Right turn. Onto the dog walk. <laughs> Still barking. <laughs> onto the A frame round. Come on, Kayla. Right turn onto the seesaw. Yay, two to go. It's a cracking run. Well done. 43.526 on a clear round. Well done.
Fantastic run, and into third place as well. I, believe, I can remember rightly, I think they had a good run this morning, so we'll definitely be seeing them, I think, later on. Uh, next to go, we should have Ros Quayle working Tula, Shelty, seven years of age, first time competing at Crofts. So happy to get one, uh, get my turn to run Tula here, and hope that we can overcome the nerves and have fun. You'll be fine, we're all behind you. So, there we are, Tula away. Ros away as well, and we're down to the weeds. Ros is going down pretty much to the weeds. Two and that little bit of uh, encouragement on the entry of the weeds. So turning around now with a nice dog walk, hopefully. Good one in dog walk. Judge happy with that as well. Round to ten. Pushing out round the uh, cross hurdle. Coming round now towards the A frame. Come on, Tula, come on, Ross. Swinging round a 16. Into the tunnel, and Tula still giving it some. We've got a seesaw, we've got it. Round to 19, come on Ros, come on Tula. 44.938 into fifth place for Ros and Tula. Next to go on the start line from Edinburgh, Scotland. Yay. Michelle Henderson with Pinto, the toy poodle. Greco hotspot. Oh, he's like... Arguing a little bit there, going into the tunnel, so uh, five thoughts for a refusal. And again, into the weeds. Oh, Mr. Poles, who picks up five. Oh, he says, I can do it, see? Over the dog walk, gets the contact point. Come on, Pinto, down to the cross jump. Round, up and over that A-frame. That's a long way up for such a little dog. So we're on 10 as we come round to the seesaw. Left turn, come on, Pinto, one to go. Well done, 57.135, hello. Yeah, well done. Do you know sometimes you're kind of standing here and you watch the dogs going around and you think, that's the dog I could quite happily cuddle and take home with me. Just, I don't know, just got the thing about it. There we go. Anyway, we're on to Sophie McBeth now, working Kima, working Cocker Spaniel, five years of age, first time on the green carpet. She's just come back from a long rest as she gave me a lovely litter of pups before Christmas. So I'm delighted to have her back in the agility ring. And obviously here at Cox as well. Go we, she said, but we did have a glance to the right there. Really low dog going through there, but unfortunately we picked up a refusal. We missed the entry to the rigid tunnel. So now we move the dog walk. Into the tunnel coming nicely now around to number 10 for a long jump. Now we've got the top corner. Here comes the A-frame. 16, oh, just roll 16 there, five faults at the moment, bit of a wide turn on the seesaw. Round of 19, coming across 20, time of 45.595, going to seventh place with 10 faults. So next on the line, Ashley Butler with Sully, crossbreed. Agility champion, the closet monster of Ashpen. And uh, this is a little rocket, this dog. Into the tunnel. Very nicely done, into the weeds. Racing, literally, across to the tunnel. Ooh, really tight, onto the dog walk. Getting a stop in to control the end, into the tunnel. Left turn. Around the back of the cross jump. Up and over the A-frame. Right turn, these turns are really tight. This is a good time, 39 to beat as we go onto the seesaw. Two to go, two to go. It's a great run, just beating our existing leader, 39-3-7-1. I'm not even gonna work that out. So it's naught point something. That's why we have a thousandths um, on the clock in agility, because it's just so tight. We certainly do. And next to go, we've got Chloe Brown working Thai Shetland Sheepdog, eight years of age, competing at the European Resort. And I'm gonna stop there and continue watching the round. 
There we go. Nice entry into the weeds, flowing nicely, handily. You can see Chloe ahead of the dog, swinging around to the right now. Up onto the dog wall. Ty just having a quick look there at Chloe as we went across the dog wall, but we're okay. It's not a problem at all. I can look at the handle if I want to. Yeah, don't forget International Women's Day today. There's a lot of ladies competing, and we're going we're gonna to champion. Could be nice, could be interesting if there's a lady champion tonight, considering what day it is. We're up on the seesaw, coming around with 19. We've got one to go in a big round of applause, please. Here we are. 43.866 going into fifth place for Chloe and Ty. So Lauren has already had one go with Venture. She's going to give it another go with Blink. This is a working Cocker Spaniel. Agility champion, Sam Sear, blinking brilliant at Devergem. And this is another quick little dog. Straight across into those weaves. Wow, look at that. And she does scream as well all the way around. You can probably hear her. Oh, missed the dog walk, picked up by forks. Our judges on it. Up and over that eighth row, right turn, really nice turns. The time is amazing on this. On to the seesaw, right to the end. Two to go, one more. Well done, Blink. 39, six, four, seven. Uh, just picking up five forks, so goes into eighth place. So next to we've got Lara Staples working Jazzy, working Cocker Spaniel, six years of age. Jazzy's a rescue dog who has exceeded all my expectations. She definitely likes the sound of her own voice and we love having lots of fun together. So loads of rescue dogs compete in this uh, over the last four days, regardless of whatever classes they're in, but certainly quite a consistent amount in the agility. That was a nice little bit, kind of jumping in the way across the all the different times, but we're in, that's all that matters. Pick the weaves up, had a quick glance to the right. Another jump again as we go towards the weaves. Interesting. The excitement, see, that's the excitement. So, going around now for the dog walk. Oh! Okay, never seen that before. It's like a launch pad. So, just picked up five, unfortunately, on the uh, down on the dog walk. So, up over the A-frame. No launch pad this time over the tunnel, so we're all right. Over the tunnel. Ten volts at the moment. Picked up five, we've got 15 volts. Big round of applause, please, for Lara and Jazzy. Next on the line, we have Alan Bray and Tosita, working Cocker Spaniel. Agility champion, Devon Gem, fire starter at Up and Over Tiger. And we're off into the tunnel. Straight down to those roofs. And uh, this is the second to last dog. In the smalls, we're going on to the mediums. After this, gets the contact, left turn into and over the, the uh, long jump there. Right, up onto the A-frame. Right turn, 39 on the clock, 39.3 to beat. Right turn again, and over the final jump, 43.029 on the clock, on a clear round, goes into fourth, well done Alan. So our last small partnership to go, we've got Lucy Norton working Boost Crossbreed, six years of age, had over seven homes this dog, as before Dave Mullings took him on, and I actually ran him for Dave as David hurt his leg, no curses, and, and we will give it our best track. Boost equals crazy, loud, and tons of fun. They had an absolutely superb run this morning in the jumping, and I'm hoping they're going to continue this now with their agility run. We we're actually going around to one part on the course this morning, quicker than the larger dogs. Oh, Plenty of verbal commands there, but as you can see there, Boost having a little bit to the look to the left and the right hand side as we went towards the east, but we're all right. 
So we need that target. We didn't get the target, I'm afraid. We've got five faults at the moment. It's Mr. Contact. So, boost coming up over that A-frame. No problem this time with the target, with the uh, contact point. Round to the seesaw. It's going to be a quick time regardless. Checks, he says, turning right. What a wrap around turn that was. 38.765, which would have taken the lead, but we got faults. So we're into 11th place, I thought you believe. So the ring party springing into action. And uh, the jump's going up this time onto the mediums. And uh, remember, there's loads to do in all of the other halls. There's five halls of Crufts. Loads to do, so please do go and visit. Take your credit card with you. And uh, go and visit all the other halls and make sure uh, you see what's going on. We've got the activities room, we've got the YKC ring, there's the obedience. Uh, literally loads going on, anything to do with dogs all over Crufts. So we're ready to go with our medium. First medium is Dalton Meredith with Munchie. And agility champion Fan Davidozi Munchkin Jive. Go, weave. Straight down into the weaves. Nice and done. On to the dog walk. Gets the contact nicely. Left turn. Right, onto the A-frame, straight over that. Come on, Dol. Into the tunnel. Right turn. Nice, nice, nice. Two to go. Come on, Dalton. Yes, fantastic. 37, 5, 8, 4. Hopefully that's enough to go through to the final. Superb run. Absolutely superb run. That was next to go. We should have Shannon Springford working gift border collie, six years of age. Nice and this one. Straight down to those weaves and straight into that entry. Super gives Shannon a chance to get ahead of the dog. Into the tunnel. So plenty of vocals as you can hear from Shannon there. Just keeping the dog with her or where she wants it to be. And Gift working beautifully at the moment, coming towards this A-frame. On it she says, and on it it was. Went around a 16, we're into the rigid tunnel. We've got three to go. Come on, Gift, come on, Shannon. We've got two to go, we're over 19. We roll the ball! Oh, 39.092 with five faults, but what a stunning run otherwise. Next on the line, we have Rachel Hawley with Hattie, Cocker Spaniel. Charleston girl from Stamford in Lincolnshire. First time on the green carpet at Crufts. Blocking that first entrance of the tunnel there so she can sweep her into the second. Tunnel, tunnel. Nicely into the weaves. Right turn onto the dog walk. <laughs> Make sure I get it. Cross onto the A frame. Nice and down. Very gentle handling here as we go round into the tunnel. Right turn onto the seesaw. Well done. Waiting for the release command. Yeah. Lovely. Well done. Well done. 47, 8, 7, 2 goes into second place. So, a nice steady run there. And got the tennis ball at the end as well. So, next thing we've got Nicola Garrett, local lady from Rudry, working a Shetland Sheepdog for Z. I'm going to say Z. Six years of age. Uh, won two gold medals in the Pentathlon event at the WAO. They're already away. And has won two challenge certificates in agility. I've known Nicola for many years. At the moment, 
great partnership working nicely around to that long jump. Good running contact just on the dog walk as well. So we need a good, another good contact now up on the A-frame. No problem at all, coming around at 16. Went around at a seesaw with three to go. On it, she says, on it we did. Coming around to the left-hand side, Fizzy and Nicola Garrett in the 41, 247. Going to second place for Nicola and see. On to our next competitor, Natasha Chambers with Indy. This is a Shelty Cross Collie. Northman Indiegogo. Very quick little dog. Wow, nicely in there. Look at that. Very quick. Into the tunnel, right turn. Straight over the dog walk. Into the tunnel, wasting no time at all. Onto the A-frame. Oh, not, as the case may be, unfortunately. Picks up five, didn't get eliminated. So, uh, still all to play for. Has to go back and do it, but now uh, it's been eliminated, unfortunately, so that means she's out of the final. Such a shame, because that was uh, a lovely run. Over the final jump, well done. Unfortunately, just picking up an elevation. Wow, what a shame that was. That was a stunning run up to the uh, just before the A frame. Next to go, we've got Lauren Burns working Zebedee. Shelty cross border colleague Papillon. So, this is mine and Zeb's first ever time competing at Crufts and qualified for Champs as a dream. He didn't just win one ticket, but two. So, they're already away. <laughs> working nicely, Zebedee working nicely. Target, we got the target, we're all right, we got that target. That's the command, obviously, for the contact point target. So we're gonna have another one. Now we just roll, no, we haven't, we demolished it. Okay, so five faults on the far side. Swinging around now to the seashore. One to go and a huge round of applause with five faults. Good time as well. 38, 9, 5, 7 into fourth place for Lauren and Zebedee. Boing. So Harriet Harding is next to go. And she's running Izzy, the working sheepdog. Five years old, little Miss Iz. Third year at Crufts. Tunnel. Long line into the weaves. Nicely done. Sure. She gets the commands in early. Target again. Which is the command for the dog walk. Round onto the A frame. And target again. Right turn into the tunnel. Very nicely done. Nicely done. Left turn. Let's give him a big round of applause. It's another clear round. Close 39. Five, nine, seven goes into second place. Super run again. Next to go, we've got Cameron McLeod from Rug uh, Working Ruby, sorry. Working Cox Spaniel, four years of age. First time competing in the main arena at Crufts. Won bronze in the junior European Open in the Netherlands in 2018. And I'm going to carry on watching them. I remember these two. They were in yesterday. Fantastic speed. Whoa, that was close, that was close for what I saw that they nearly, nearly, nearly missed that entrance to the tunnel, but we're all right, we're on track. How does that dog slow down so quickly? I honestly do not know. That was rapid across the dog wall. What's the A-frame going to be like? Please slow down over the top. Wow, round of 16. We're into the rigid tunnel. The time's looking extremely good at the moment. So we're on the seesaw. We've got two to go. Just got out of the time now, across the finishing line. 40.371 into third place there for Cameron and Ruby. So next on the line, Derek Elms uh, from South Lanarkshire with Kia, the crossbreed, Calderwood Charmer. Nicely into the weeds.
Right turn. This is a rescue dog, nine years old. Picks up five on the dog walk. So five horses we tow go down to the cross jump. Onto the A frame. Right turn. Well done. Left turn, one to go. Well done, it's a lovely run, very calm. 44, 707 goes into eighth place. So next thing we've got Jenny Hillis working Roxy Crossbeat, nine years of age. I got Roxy from Lancashire Healer Rescue when she was nearly two years old. First time at Crofts for both of us and we still can't believe that we've qualified. You have and you're here and you are away. There we go. Again, quick little dog, as you can see, but we've just got on the wrong side of the weaves. We're back on track now, though. Unlucky, that was. See Jenny way ahead now. Roxy picking up the pace. Turning around now for the dog walk. Nicely held there, get the contact. I've got the contact. We can go now, off we go again. Over the cross hurdle. Working our way around to the second of the cross hurdles. Then that A-frame, here it is. Up over the A-frame, swinging around now to 16. Done well so far, we've had none of the dogs go over the last obstacle. So again, up the seesaw, coming around to 19, with a big round of applause with the five faults, unfortunately. Well done, Jenny, and well done, Roxy. Next on the line, we have Naomi Reed with Jinx, the crossbreed. Little Miss Jumping Jinx. Uh, Naomi says she was 12 years old when she first got uh, Jinx. So they've uh, kind of grown up together, grown into this agility sport together. That was a very nice weave entry there. Turning right. Trying to block the tunnel there. Got her onto the dog walk, into the tunnel. Around the back. Nicely done, right turn. This is another quick dog on to, oh, she looked at the weaves, but we're okay. Just managed to get onto the seesaw. Well done. Wow, look at the time. 39 of 567 goes into second place. And I'll tell you what, if I'd undertaken that sweep there, that would have been in first place. But what a stunning run that was. Next to go, we've got Abigail Doxford working Wigfield, working Cotton Spaniel, 10 years of age. Wigfield was rehomed to me because she was too mischievous in her previous home. We're delighted to be competing across for the fourth year running. So, obviously a bit of a tinker in the younger years, now matured a bit. And working very nicely at the moment into that rigid tunnel. Nice contact and across the rigid tunnel, turning around to number 10 and then pushing out over the cross hurdle and making our way around to the next of the cross hurdles. And here's the A-frame. Good one, contact on the A-frame. Plenty of verbal commands there from Abigail. She probably still needs to use a bit of verbal to keep the dog under control. Obviously it's been 19 years gone by, but we're fine now. Finishing line coming up, super run. 41, 8, 9, 3, into sixth place for Abigail and Wickfield. So next on the line, Hayley Telling with Teal, a uh, Shetland Sheepdog. Agility champion, New Illusions by Enchantment of the Five Colours is the dog's full name, very long name. Done lots of uh, international competition and uh, representing GB. Nice into the weeds. Oh, just misread that. That's quite a challenge there, quite a test. Oh, didn't quite make it across the dog wall there, just checking she's okay. Oh, she's going to carry on. So unfortunately being eliminated, just lost her footing there on the dog wall. Onto the seesaw. And let's give a big round of applause. Unfortunately, getting eliminated there. Unlucky run, that was very unlucky. So, next thing we should have Jane Chenery working Harvey, working Cocker Spaniel, five years of age. Harvey's given me such a special year. He was my first Cocker Spaniel, and I am now completely hooked on them. 
Uh, he's been very noisy, barking and screaming, as he just loves his agility. So, here we go. No, we're not going to stay in that sit, but we're up. We're all right. So, another vocal dog. Not a problem. Okay. That was a bit of a weird one. We've got an elimination. Okay, Jack has just been pulled in. So, eliminated there because the dog missed the tunnel, actually made contact with the down contact on the A frame, if that makes sense. So, on the white area, it's painted. So, because they've taken the wrong course and actually gone onto that contact, they get an elimination, which is a great shame. Great shame. Nevertheless, they'll get the contact this time, no problem at all. There we go. So, coming out of 16, and she's been, yeah, over the finish line. Well, they're giving her out of board, very unlucky. Slim chance of that, and I missed it there with Jane and Harvey. Okay, next to go, James Adams. He's had a great weekend here at Crufts. This is Willow, the working Cocker Spaniel, Devon Gem, Tis Gold Standard. And this is another rapid little dog. And James puts it 110% into this. Wow. Oh, he's the first one to get a blind turn in there, where the dog crosses behind the handler. Straight across into the tunnel, putting in every effort to cut it down. Cut the turns down, get as much out of the course as you possibly can. Right turn, round the back of the cross jump, across the arena. Looking to be 37.5, right turn, right turn into the tunnel. One out on the, to the seesaw, two to go, two to go, go on. Let's cheer him up. Yay, smashed it. 37198 goes into the lead and takes 0.4 of a second off our current leader. Wow, that was a stonker. That was a cracking run again. Absolutely amazing. Takes the lead as well. Next to go, Sarah Woodley, working Bodie. Miniature American Shepherd, six and a half years of age, but he loves his agility and playing football. He's a football dog as well. Don't know what team he plays for, but he is a football dog. His favourite place to walk is on the beach. Sounds like me, that does. There you go. It's his fourth year running, and he's qualified for Crocs. So, a rapid little dog, this one. Doesn't waste any time. We've had a refusal, eh? That's a shame. So, elimination now, because we've gone back over the jump. We obviously recorrected it, rather than do it incorrectly. We've corrected it, and we've got an elimination. Nevertheless, they're going to keep flying around. Bodie will be barking, flying as he normally does. Oh, he's gone quiet at the moment, he's disappointed. Come on, Bodie. Come on, Sarah. Over the finishing line with a big round of applause there for Bodie and Sarah. Very, very unlucky that was. Okay, next on the line, it's Leanne Knight with Sonic, the Shetland Sheepdog. Into the tunnel. Into the weave poles. Nicely done. Round to the right. Onto that dog walk. Just picks up five faults there on the dog walk. And a refusal at the tunnel. So we're on ten. Ten faults in total. Nice little the A-frame, so ten forces we come round through the tunnel. One, two, go, as we come over the final jump, well done. 47, six, five, uh, O on a uh, ten force goes into 13th place. So, next to go, surely, we'll have Heather McLean working Macca, supported by the Scottish team, is that correct? Seven years of age, that's the dog, of course. Uh, Mac was bred by myself out of one in a million dog, Mui. She's very strong willed bitch and loves to argue with me. No, I've been told that. Oh, what a quick look back then. We're all right, we're in the weeds. As you can see, the head are way ahead. So, Mac are up onto the dog. I went, Mac is on the way up to the dog wall, we disappeared. Anyway, we're back on the dog wall now. He's got five faults at the moment. We're in the rigid tunnel, swinging around to number 10, the long jump. 
We've rocked the long jump. It hasn't fallen over, so we're okay. We can rock it, that's not a problem. Nice and held contact coming around to 16 in the rigid tunnel. Five faults at the moment. Will we see them later? You never know. I hope so. 19 and coming across the finish line. Big round of applause there for Heather and Macca. This is Fly the Fox with Rue, working Cocker Spaniel. Oh, just missing uh, the dog walk there, picks up five faults. So five faults coming across the dog walk. Just for missing me up there. Okay, so over the finishing line there for Blythe with Rue. He's back, here he is. Steve Richardson, working Willow, Shetland Sheepdog, five years of age. So quick look at Steve there by Willow. Steve now ahead, as you can see. Steve's one of these guys, known him for many, many years. He's uh, very athletic, and he uses his speed and agility himself to get his dogs going. And at the moment, Willow's going nicely. I don't like to say too much. A-frame coming up. I see all the contacts. He's been that probably for later on as well, so he's got that for tonight's final if he makes it. I'm sure he will. I hope he does, anyway. We shall see. So, across to 19, coming through to 20 there for Willow and Steve. Big round of applause. Well done, guys. So, this is our last medium dog to go. We've got Amelia Nicholson working Willow. Collie Cross Cocker Spaniel, four years of age, doing a jelly for 13 years, and Willow is my first dog to win a champ ticket. Uh, my little shadow and adores agility. This is our first time in the main arena. That's a great start with those weeds. Flying this one. A little bit of a squeal as well. That's the dog. Oh, what a shame. Did come off that jump pretty quick, to be honest. Did come off the jump pretty quick with a left right turn, I should say. So we're back on track. They're going to continue work. Carry on working it around. Going to put this contact right. There we are. We're happy now. We're back where we should be. Half over the A-frame, going round to number 16, into that rigid tunnel. Coming around to 19, turning to the left, going to finish with a big round of applause there for Amelia and Willow. Right, stay ringside, we'll be back very, very shortly with presentation.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. It's presentation time. And we're delighted to be joined by Mr. Bill King, uh, member of the Kennel Club, uh, escorted by Mr. Dave Ray to present the awards for our championship agility round. We're going to be starting with the smalls and winning the small agility round was Ashley Butler with agility champion, the closet monster of Ashburn. Taking second place was Lauren Langman um, with Mays Deerwen, Shine Bright at Jev and Jem. And in third place was Louise Eden with Obey the Boys High Voltage. On the edge the whole time. On the edge. On the edge. And on to the mediums. In first place, James Adams with Dev and Jem, Tis Gold Standard. Second goes to Dalton Meredith with agility champion Van Dabidozi Munchkin Dive. And in third it was Naomi Reed with Little Miss Jumping Jinx. And on to the large winning the large was Debbie Simons with Famous Falcon of Mogwai's Castle. Second goes to Dave Munnings and agility champion Combine Away, ready for fame. And our third place is taken by Ewan Patterson and Dev and Jem Quick Time. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together as they take their lap of honour. Okay, so if you're like me and you sit at night time watching the TV, thinking to the challenge, you think, what am I going to watch? And you sometimes struggle to find something, don't you? You want to actually watch. And then you see one of these ones where they have these kind of disaster things and they send, well, people out. But they also send dogs out. So, coming up very shortly, because I'm not sure whether they're coming in from my left-hand side or my right-hand side, I'm going to call a video.
love it out here. I understand the draw of the outdoors and I understand what can go wrong. I join because I like knowing that if a member of my family were out there, there'd be somebody to help me find them and I get to work with my best friend. The call came in early on a Friday. A man was missing near Oxford. Bo and I were in the car in five minutes. I remember it was cold. I was in winter gear inside the control van and I could still feel it. To do this job, you have to be an optimist. But missing nine days in that weather, it was hard to believe we'd find him in time. After two days, we searched over 15 square kilometers with no luck. The odds of finding him were pretty low. The next morning was Mother's Day, but we went out one last time, mostly to finish the search right. We were looking further west of where we were supposed to be, in the middle of this field where we thought for sure he'd have been spotted by a helicopter. But Bo took off like a shot, heading straight for this embankment. I was back home with my family, monitoring the radio traffic on wave. I heard the priority call that he was found. Hypothermic, but alive. I called in the emergency services to their location and got him airlifted to a hospital. Even if I never find someone again, the training, the hours, the sacrifice will be worth it. A man is alive because of us. The family is together. His niece came by afterwards. She was crying, but she looked me in the eye and thanked me for saving his life. That was a really good Mother's Day. Bo got a pouch of cat food. He loves it. He's a hero. He can eat what he wants. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our demonstration here today at Crufts 2020. What we're going to show you today is some of the work of the dogs from Lowland Rescue. These are all dogs that have been trained to find missing people. And we operate all across the UK. We have 35 teams across the United Kingdom, all made up of volunteers. So the police call us, but it is a completely voluntary service. So all the dogs that you see here today are pet dogs of the volunteers that they're working with. And what we're going to take you through is a little bit of the training that we do with the dog and how we get them to be qualified and operational, ready for use to go out like you saw on the video and hopefully find people who have gone missing. So the very first stage of the training with the dog is what we call piggy in the middle. So this is just a little game of where the dog and the handler and the person who's acting as their missing person we just play a little game of piggy in the middle. So the dog's going to go backwards and forwards between the reward, toys or food, whatever works for them. Sometimes they'll get it from the handler. Sometimes they'll get it from the person who's playing the missing person. And that's important because when we get to the end stage of training, this is really what this game is. Go and find somebody, come back, go back to the person. So it's just a really big game of piggy in the middle really at the end of it so this is the very first stage just to get the dogs confident running backwards and forwards between people once they're doing that we move on to a scene runaway so the person is going to take the dog's reward the handler is going to hold on to the dog the dog will get to see the person go they'll get nice and excited by that uh, the person will run off hide and the handler will let the dog go and find them and they'll get lots of reward from the person that they've found. And we build that up as much as we can, lots of different places, lots of different people, just getting the dogs really, really confident going from the handler to the person. Then we move on to an unseen runaway. So the handler will hold on to the dog, but the dog will be turned around so they can't see the person going. And then when they're ready and in place and hidden, the handlers will turn around, let the dogs go and find them. And again, they're going to get lots of reward from their person. So obviously, this is a little bit of an artificial environment because we've got to use hides to hide the people and the dogs are just going backwards and forwards from the same one. But it's really important that we build up loads of different places that they can do this, really build up their confidence in doing it. So once we've got them finding people, we need to know that they've found somebody. So we're going to show you a little bit of some different alerts. So um, the dogs need... Hello. Have you brought me your ball? That's very nice. Thank you. <laughs> 
So the dogs have got different alerts. Depending on the behaviours that they offer, we will, um, we will work with what the dogs find quite natural to them. So the first alert that we're going to show you uh, is Rowan Otto, the Labrador over here. Now, you might see that he's got a little tag hanging down from his collar. That's called a bring cell. So he's going to do a bring cell alert. So whilst he's looking for his person, that's just hanging down from his collar. But if you watch when Ro lets him go, he's going to go and find his person and then he'll pick it up and put it in his mouth and carry it back to Ro beautifully so that you can see, Ro can see that, oh, he's found the person because he's holding his strap in his mouth and she can reward him for doing that. And then over the far side, Inca, she's going to be a standover bark. So she's going to go and find her person. When she gets there, she's going to give several loud barks to let them know, let her handler know that she's found the person. And she will stay with them and stay barking until the handler gets there and then she gets her reward. Well done. Then Sassy, the little border collie over the other side, she's a jump alert. So she's going to go and find her person. When she's found, she comes running back to her handler and she's going to jump up to Rich to tell her that, oh, look, yeah, we've found them. Very good. Well done, Sassy. And then lastly over here, we have Hattie. She's a bark alert, but she's going to come away from the person and bark to her handler, and then she'll get rewarded with her handler. So we're going to let them all do it once more so that they can just get another reward for doing an alert. You can see them all going together uh, and give them a lovely round of applause when they've done their... Uh, when they've done their alert. Good dogs. Brilliant. Okay, so once they've done that, they, they've then found the person, they've learned to come back and tell the handler that they've found the person. They then need to get the handler back to the person. So we're just swapping a couple of dogs out. So this is the end game of the piggy in the middle. So they're going to go from the handler to the person, back to the handler, back to the person. So it's all just built up to this. Uh, so they're all going to go together for this one. So we're going to let them go off. And you can see that they'll come, find their person, come and do whatever their alert is. And then you'll see the handlers sort of say, what is it, or show me. Uh, and the dog will then take them back to their person and then they get loads and loads of fuss and reward over there. And obviously, for operational purposes, we increase this, the distance that they work, how long they work for, how many people that they can find, all uh, as much as we can to build it up so that the dogs are uh, searching quite happily for around about an hour's length of time. Uh, before they find people and that they'll come and alert, always come and alert the handler to the fact that they've found and then take them back to them. So that is a very brief overview of our air scenting dogs. So what we are going to show you next are our ground scenting dogs. Now the dogs that you've just seen, the air scenting dogs, they are all picking up any human scent. So when they're working in the woodlands and things, if there's anybody in the woods, uh, they will find any person that, that is there. They're not looking for a specific scent. But we also have dogs that we train to look for, to scent discriminate and to look for a particular scent. So this is really good. Uh, a lot of the call-outs that we get are for people who are living with dementia who may have wandered from their home. Uh, so it's really great if the dogs can um, find uh, a particular scent of a particular person. So what we're going to do is we're just going to drop my little article down there. And Diesel with Jan is going to come along the people along here. And hopefully when he gets to me, because it's my article that he's going to smell, he will stop with me uh, and indicate to his handler by looking at her that he's found the right person. So we're going to let him come along and see everybody. And then you can see whether when he gets to me, he lets his handler know that he's found me. Very good. So he just turns around and then stays with me so that he lets his handler know that he's got the right person. Good boy. Okay, so building on from that, what we can then do um, is a trail for the dog. So Elle is going to walk a trail for us now. 
So she's going to go and place her scent article on the floor uh, by that hide, and she's going to walk around the arena and go and hide in one of the hides. As she's walking, she's leaving a scent on the floor uh, that will be coming off of her, and Bert is going to come and he's going to hopefully follow that trail to where she is. So if we've got somebody who has gone missing, we can get an article of clothing belonging to them or something that smells of them. And then the ground scenting dogs can come along and follow the trail of that person. And it doesn't matter who else has walked there. So there's been loads of people in here, loads of different dogs. But he'll go take a sniff of, uh, of the scent article so he knows which scent he's looking for. And then he'll have a look around, pick up the scent, uh, and follow it along to, uh, to the direction that she's gone, and hopefully to wh wherever she went to hide. So you'll see that Bert works with his nose down on the floor, and that's because he's following the scent that is laid down there. So um, there's quite a lot of air movement down here from the air conditioning. So that will move around a little bit. So he might not walk exactly where she's walked, but he's very much got his nose on the ground, whereas the air scent dogs have their heads much higher and are working on the wind to find the person. I didn't see where she went, so don't. Oh, yeah, there we go. So he's found her. And then he gets lots of fuss and retreats and reward for finding where she went. So those are. Uh, those are our ground scenting dogs. So that was a very quick overview of the work that we do. As I said earlier, we are a completely charitable organization. So um, if you wish to come and support the work that we do, or you want to find out more about how you can get involved, either with or without dogs, we, take, uh, we do all sorts of other things. So flood rescue, work with drones and things as well. You don't need a dog. We've got a stand in Hall 3, Stand number 110, we've got some really good giveaways to give people as well. So pop along there, find out about what we do, how you can get involved, uh, or just chat to the guys and, um, uh, and maybe make a little donation and pick up your freebie. So thank you all very, very much for watching us today. We're going to let the dogs go around so you can give them a nice big round of applause. And thank you all very much. Well, we've got something a little uh, different for you now. Yesterday, we had the, the, the International Hear Work to Music class in this arena. We had some absolutely wonderful routines. And we've got the one that came second in the competition yesterday, who did a... It was really, I think, touch and go. Who, who got the Hello and voice. welcome to Best in really Show Day of Crufts 2020. We're coming to you We're live from the main the arena here at Birmingham's NEC. We'll There's a jam-packed schedule for you. Amazed. First of all, we're kicking Amazing things off with a performance from the second place in yesterday's international freestyle finals. This is Lisa Broworld and her dog Cumin, a Shapindar bitch. Now, if, this is really unlike you've anything any you've ever seen before. They're going to perform so to the greased mega mix. The and if you've never so seen a dog drinking from a straw or playing a typewriter, road. you're about now to be impressed. The that is obvious. There's already a queue forming outside. It is a limited time in the arena because it is closing earlier today because it's uh, best in show night later and a lot of preparation to do. But we would like to squeeze more people in if there are empty seats. So please, please, please. Be nice to the people who are waiting outside to come in and would like a seat. Move into the middle and have your empty seats. So here on they the come, Lisa and Cumin. 
Lisa says, Cumin's a drama queen who loves to perform, and you're to about to see Mark the Levine. evidence of that. Lisa, who competed in the championships yesterday. So here for they come, Sweden. Lisa and Cumin. Second place over from Sweden in the international freestyle the finals. The Prepare to get those old, toes actually. tapping as they perform they to the Greece Mega Mix. They're going to perform to a Greece Mega Mix. And you'll soon recognise the artists, of course, John Travolta and Oliver Newton, Olivia Newton John. Incredible display there from Lisa Broeld and Cumin. A Schappendorf breed not seen here. They're over from Sweden and came second in yesterday's international freestyle finals. What a performance from that pair. That dog, 10 years old, 
I'm still jumping around like a puppy there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have got a really, really amazing treat for you now. And to tell you all about it, I'm going to like to introduce you to Dr. Christian. So it's time for something entirely different now. We're going to have a display of medical detection dogs. Now, I'll hand you over to Ring Comms in a moment, but these incredible dogs use their heightened senses to alert us to medical issues. So we're very, very excited to be here and to show you what we can do. We're also a little nervous, so be kind to us. As you heard, I'm Dr. Christian Jeston, and I have made various programs with medical detection dogs over the years. And each time I watch these extraordinary four-legged medics, I'm always blown away at just what their wet noses can do. And I'm not a little jealous at how much better they are at their, at their jobs than I am. The use of smell to detect disease is becoming more and more important as we try and find quicker, cheaper, and less invasive ways of being able to diagnose conditions. We're looking for some of the world's biggest killers. In many cases, the dogs do it themselves, or alongside that, we're learning from the dogs. We're learning from the way we, they smell to be able to develop some artificial intelligence, if you like, an electronic nose to be able to detect conditions. Medical detection dogs have already proved that their dogs can detect diseases like various cancers, Parkinson's disease, malaria, and other infectious diseases. The biodetection dogs working on these diseases can, they can detect minute amounts, trace amounts of odors in samples. If I give you an illustration, it's the equivalent of being able to detect a spoonful of sugar dissolved in two Olympic-sized swimming pools of water. I think you'll agree that is quite incredible. Medical alert assistant dogs are already helping people who live with various conditions that cause them to become ill very rapidly, very quickly. And we're talking in a matter of seconds. They have no idea that they're about to be in danger. Their dogs smell or detect a change in their body odor and alert the person. So the person can then either access the medications that they need or take themselves off to a place of safety. We're talking about conditions like type 1 diabetes, like POTS disease, which is a sort of heart condition or blood pressure condition causing collapse, Addison's disease, which is a hormonal disorder, and various allergies. Before they had their guardians, their knights in shining armor, these people may have been very, very restricted in what they could do, had no confidence, no independence, and may well have been confined to their own homes because of the risk of collapse and injury, or worse. What always strikes me when I see these dogs working is just how much they love their job. Now, I enjoy my work, but hey, being fed a little treat every now and again would certainly help things along a little bit. You may have, as I initially did, rather nightmarish, dystopian views of sterile-looking laboratories with miserable-looking dogs in tiny cages sitting in front of conveyor belts of human samples that they have to sniff at. Well, I can reassure you, nothing could be further from the truth. The charity has a strict no-kennel policy. The dogs all live with volunteer, with volunteer families. It's all just a game for them. They do the job, they get a reward. But for us, this could be a real game-changer. And these dogs will save lives. I want to pass on now to Mr. Chris Allen, who has the enviable job of being the dog, the dog supply and training manager at Medical Detection Dogs. And he's going to show you some of these brilliant beasts in action. Thank you very much, Dr. Christian. Let's take a round of applause. OK, so before any of our dogs become a medical alert assistance dog or become a biodetection dog, there's a lot of work that's got to happen. And the, the hard work starts with our wonderful volunteers. Without our volunteers, our charity would not exist. Please give Shirley coming into the arena with her 20-month-old little working cocker spaniel. He's met his client. So in a few months' time, he's going to be out working as a life-saving assistance dog saving someone who has type 1 diabetes. 
Next, we've got coming into the arena a lovely eight month old yellow Labrador called Chip. Give Chip a round of applause. Chip is socialised close to our headquarters around in Buckinghamshire. Next, we've got Misty, also a eight month old Labrador, being socialised in our Essex area. These are brothers and sisters, believe it or not. They come from the same litter. Look at the size difference. That's it, give them a warm welcome. Our socialisers are supported by the team back at the centre with all our trainers. So we've got Sammy coming into the arena now with a lovely chocolate Labrador, nine month old chocolate Labrador called Basil. And then lastly into the ring, we've got Steve coming in with his 18 month old Labradoodle. So as well as these puppies, We've got about another 50 puppies in socialising at our centre and they come from all different walks of life. They come from breeders, they come from private homes and we've got a couple of dogs, Louis and Jasper, that have come to us from Dogs Trust and Wood Green. So we take dogs from rescue centres as well. So as they leave the arena, give them a round of applause. They're going to be life-saving assistance dogs or biodetection dogs supporting the development of medical science. I'm now going to pass you over to a very, very special lady. It's Claire, Dr. Claire Guess, who's the founder of Medical Detection Dogs and the C Chief Executive. So give Claire a round of applause as she comes into the ring. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. So, well, it was 20 years ago when the first anecdotes started to be heard that dogs seem to be able to detect cancer in their owners. You've probably heard of them. I was privileged to be part of the first study published in the British Medical Journal that indicated that dogs can indeed be trained to find human cancer. And what a difference that's going to make. But Medical Detection Dogs was founded in 2008 to take this work further and to see the potential to saving lives. Let me introduce you to the science of the smell of disease. It's exciting, isn't it? Now, we all know that these dogs our dogs may have fluffy coats, very waggy tails, and sometimes very muddy paws, but they have got the most sophisticated sensors, much more sophisticated than any technology on the planet. We know a dog can track unique odors. They can track our odor for many miles. What we now know is that they can, they can detect the odor of disease, and each de disease has its own unique odor. If you look to my right here, we're gonna look at the carousel. Kizzy, the little working cocker, is going to work round. There are urine samples and tiny urine samples in each pot. If she smells the odour of cancer, she will sit and indicate that she's found it. And there she goes. Please give her a round of applause. Now, that looks easy, but we mustn't forget that this is quite remarkable. Kizzy has just found, from a drop of urine, somebody who's sadly suffering from prostate cancer. Now, if we go to my left, on the stands here, in each stand, there's a swab, a head swab that's been taken across the forehead. One of these individuals has Parkinson's disease. If he finds it, Bumper will stop at the stand. Again, totally remarkable. <laughs> these dogs are absolutely wonderful at their jobs. Parkinson's disease has no current early diagnostic test. So you've seen it with your own eyes, and I'm sure you believe it, but there's still a lot of scepticism about this work. For me, the story became personal when my beautiful dog, Daisy, warned me of an undiagnosed breast cancer. Sadly, Daisy passed away two years ago, hence my Daisy scarf today. Without her, I could well not be here today to tell you this story. Whether it's the dogs that do this work, or whether it's technology that learns from our fantastic dogs, this is going to save lives around the world. And just to finish, I want to thank you. I want to show you some world firsts. So please, if our world first can come in. So this is a world first dog. Now this is a canine cancer detection dog, being supported by the Kennel Club Foundation. Please give her a round of applause. She is going, thank you. She is going to detect bladder cancer in her canine companions. Secondly, we have a malaria detection dog. Now, parasites are very clever things. They change our odor. This dog can, tr can, ch can detect whether somebody is carrying the malaria parasite. This could change diagnosis in the future. And thirdly, what could be more poignant this week? 
than a bacteria detector dog. This dog detects Pseudomonas, but we have dogs working in other bacteria and will have them in viruses. We know that this could be a major, or is a major threat to mankind in the future. So please give a, I'm gonna hand back over to Chris, but give these wonderful, wonderful dogs a round of applause. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Claire Gass, for that wonderful insight to how our biotechnology dogs are trained. So, while these guys leave the arena, we're all now gonna bring in our medical alert assistance dog. So we've got Becky, Presley, the Black Labrador, and Helen over here, and then we've got Deborah and Nell over here. Nell's a dog in advanced training, so we're gonna show you some of the scenarios that our dogs would be expected to work to and how we train them when working with clients. So you've got Presley over here, He's, in, he's picked up the, the odour change in Becky, and I don't know whether you saw that, but he alerted her. He gave her a paw, he got her attention, which was enough to then get Becky's attention, and she would then take treatment. Over here, we've got Nell working. So Nell's learning the first stages in the odour. So it's come in close, come in tight, get, get excited, show interest around me, because you're gonna get a treat if you really, really respond to me. So you can see here, she's busy sniffing, that's it, losing that nose. There we are, she'll get a treat. Over here, we've got Becky now getting into bed. So, oh, have a sniff, he's gonna get close, and then he'll soon, hopefully, pick up the, the smell that Becky, the odor change in Becky, and he's gonna get on the bed, he's, he's tracing it, He's having a good sniff. Lots of dogs have been in this arena. There we go, we've got the alert. He's now gonna go and re retrieve the testing kit and bring it back to Becky. So she would then be able to test her blood and also take her medication. So these are clients that have got type one diabetes, potentially a cardiac condition called POTS, could be allergies, it could be Addison. So clients with real, real life-threatening conditions. We've seen some of our scenarios but what I want you to do now is look at the screen and we've got some real time, nighttime footage from one of our assistance dogs out working. So we've got Charlie, Jeff asleep in the bed here. Charlie's come into, into scene there. He's, he's detected that there's a cortisol change in his client. So he's jumped on the bed to wake him up. If he didn't wake him up, Jeff could end up in hospital. It's that clear. So he's come across, he's woken him up and he's now reached across for his medication. So this is really important for all our clients. As you can see, it is real life-changing stuff that our dogs do. I'm now gonna pass you back over to Dr. Christian, who's been joined by some wonderful, wonderful life-saving partnerships. Thank you, Chris. Right, now I want you guys to meet and actually hear some, some of the people who are lucky enough to live with these wonderful beasts. So first up here is Lizzie with her dog, Henry. Please give her a big round of applause. And Lizzie, I want to ask you really how having Henry has changed your future outlook. How has he changed life for you? Yeah, so I have a condition called POTS, um, which stands for postural tachycardia syndrome. And it basically means when I'm upright, my heart rate rapidly increases and my blood pressure drops, causing me to black out frequently. Um, before I had Henry, um, the lack of alerts meant that I was constantly hurting myself and I had to be babysat and I just had a, in a childlike state, basically. Um, but then my hero dog came along and he gives me about a five minute warning before a blackout happens and I can get to a safe place, lay down, let the episode happen, no injury, no chaos. And he's just been wonderful. Um, he's opened up so many doors. I graduated uni last year, and I'm looking at a master's degree now. He's just saved my life. Amazing. It's wonderful to hear that. Thank you. Thank you. And over here, we have Jamie and his mum, Naomi, and Richmond. That's Richmond, isn't it? Jamie, you've had type 1 diabetes really for as long as I think you can probably remember. Um, and I know it's really severely affected you and your family. Can you tell us a little bit what life was like before you got Richmond? Until I had Richmond, I used to always have an adult in my bedroom, often a nurse, and always spent Christmases and birthdays in hospital. And now, how are things? Let's ask your mum, give her a go. Um, yeah, so life was very much um, testing Jamie every sort of 15 minutes to two hours at the absolute most, 24 hours a day. Um, and life revolved around the test, the results of the test, treating the test, and then waiting for the next test. Um, so Richmond life is, is great. I feel like you have a bit more freedom now, I hope. Guys, thank you very, very much.
Well, there's no better way, is there, than actually seeing these dogs do their stuff in front of you. It is quite extraordinary to watch. Within just seconds, they can accurately identify relevant samples. And if you think about what we currently do with testing, tests can take much, much longer to get results. Tests can be a lot more invasive. They can be uncomfortable, causing a lot of distress and a lot of worry for families whilst they wait. So think about how these dogs can really change things medically for us. Um, you saw Presley and Neil show how they can, it doesn't matter what their partners are doing, they will quickly know when danger is imminent and they will make the appropriate warning sign. Can you imagine having such a reliable bodyguard with you 24 seven? Now, this is in many ways the most important bit. This charity receives no government funding whatsoever. It relies entirely on charitable donations. And if you're as impressed by what you've seen today as I certainly am, then please, please do consider getting involved. Uh, you can fundraise, you can volunteer, or you can consider sponsoring a puppy like little Dotty up there for only five pounds a month. Please consider making a difference by helping them because you know that they will be tirelessly helping us. Thank you very much. I am stood next to Dogweed, but I don't care because I am loving life. Let's go and find out what Crufts is all about. This is the beautiful Tom, who is an Irish setter. So what group would Tom belong in? Tom is a gun dog, and as you'll see from his lovely soft mouth, great for carrying game and working, really, really good sense of smell. And as you'll see, he's also got a wonderful temperament. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> This is the very handsome Chance. Do you want to explain a little bit about Chance? Okay, Chance is a Bichon Frise, a yes. member of the toy group oh. and a dog that would have traditionally been in very, very nice households of ladies. So you really have to have the time to care for this wonderful coat. <laughs> I mean, he has better hair than me, to be fair. And me. <laughs> This is Kimmy, who's a beautiful Akita. Do you want to explain a little bit about what group Kimmy belongs in? Yes, absolutely. So as an Akita, Kimmy is in the utility group, Scarlett. And this is a group of, bre of breeds that don't traditionally sit in any of the other groups. We've, you know, we've had the hunters and the working dogs. So the utility breeds are mostly breeds that have had their relationship as companions with people in the home oh. but some of them do have some other purpose in history now most of them are all companions and as you can see in the case of Kimmy a lovely one so cute this is the beautiful and very lively Fallon. Do you want to explain a little bit about Fallon? Yeah, so Fallon is a Samoid and they are a pastoral breed. So as you can see, she's got lots of energy. She's constantly alert and you really, really have to understand the history of these breeds. So with, in ca case of Fallon as a Samoid, she would have originally been used for deer herding. She's very, very lively, very alert. And <laughs> ones that you definitely need to be suitable for. <laughs> I can, yeah, I can imagine Fallon deer herding, actually. I can imagine that. <laughs> so, Bonnie, I would say that you are an expert. Because <laughs> you breed dogs. Yeah. How long have you bred dogs for? Well, my whole life, essentially. My mum jokes that I was born in a uh, whelping box, but 
little bit far. Yeah. <laughs> so I think like there's a lot of confusion around like how to buy mm. a puppy, how to buy a dog. Um, I have a Shih Tzu and a Chihuahua, and I'll be honest, the first time that I went to sort of buy a dog, it was a little bit like a job interview. It sort of like not put me off, but I was a bit like, oh, they're asking all of these questions. Yeah. But actually, that's a good thing. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They should be asking you lots of questions and they should be asking you as many questions as you have for them about how you live, how the dog will fit into your lifestyle and whether they are the right dog and breed for you. So if someone isn't asking questions, mm. is that when you should sort of worry? That would be a bit of a red flag for me. Yeah. What are the other sort of red flags that people can be like? So you'd oh. always want to see uh, the puppies with mum. Uh, you'd want to come, go and visit them. Uh, you'd want to see the dogs in the home, um, their, their puppy pen, where they've grown up. You want to see it all kind of in-house, in situ. You don't want to just kind of see them elsewhere, kind because of in place. I think there's a lot of sort of, like, my friends have felt like they've rescued dogs before. Yeah. So they've seen dogs that maybe aren't in the best of conditions and then they think, oh, well, I'm rescuing that yeah. dog. And that's always how I seem. But actually, the more that time that I've spent with the kennel club, I've realised that probably isn't a good thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You think, oh, gosh, I want to just get them out of this situation. But in the long term, as you say, you're kind of fueling it and you need to get them from the right place. And in situations like that, you need to report them to your local authority and they can look into it further for you. Because there is dog breeding licences. There's the Assured Breeder Scheme where you can go to to get... Uh, a puppy right where it has all the health tests and appropriate um, before breeding. <laughs> so basically you should not feel like you're rescuing a dog. Yeah. You should just go through the right means of contacting the local yeah. council, the kennel club and they can help you. Definitely, yeah. You do not want to feel uncomfortable. As soon as that happens, walk away. Because really, it's like adopting a child yeah because i know that sounds really dramatic but they're a big responsibility definitely they take up so much of your yeah. time and you need to make sure that yeah the, that and, and right if you. they're a good breeder they'll be wanting to get in contact with you and wanting to get updates and, and know about that dog because they've put a lot of time and effort into it as well that's certainly what i'd want to do i'd want to know how they're doing and see them frequently or so you know, to not birthdays. not sort of feel intimidated by the yeah. by people saying how big's your garden how, <laughs> where, how often are you home completely normal yeah. yes <laughs> oh, thank you thank you bunny thank you. <laughs> oh yes oh i love these look at you so japanese shiba inu which actually means small dog in japanese that's gogo gogo -go, like kill bill that's right <laughs> nice oh look at you let everyone see how pretty you are <laughs> Look! Oh, look! <laughs> I feel like I'm living the Disney 101 Dalmatian fantasy here, yeah? Oh, look at you! So I am here with Kevin the Borzoi, who is originally a wolfhound in Russia. So, in a nutshell, what Kevin would have done back in the day, he would have hunted wolves place them in his mouth and if he was struggling to breathe with these wolves in his mouth what he would have done is they have really flexy noses so the noses can bend this way and that way and they're the only breed that do that and also another fun fact kevin on his hind legs is six foot three which is the same as my boyfriend so there you go hello annie so this is Ernie and his dad is Bert, obviously, and he is a black and tan coon hound. Now, they actually only became Kennel Club registered in 2018 and they came over to the UK from America in 2014. And this little one, Ernie, is actually training every day to become a search and rescue dog. What a life. I recognise that man there. I said I would bring your exclusives. That is Mr. Arena itself, Mr. Nick Brooksward. Come with me. Hello, Nick. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm really good. Good to see you. You are the top dog here. <laughs> I'm very apt. So how long have you been Mr. Arena? Well, about the last 15 years. 
That is amazing. It's bonkers, isn't it? It is barking mad. It is totally barking <laughs> mad. So what is this room you So where you are now is the collecting ring. This is where everybody comes in before they go into the big ring, into the main arena. So this is like really exclusive. This is totally and utterly exclusive. Yeah. It's really heavily guarded by the NEC team. Uh, and nobody can get in here unless they've got the correct passes. So it's, See, it's bringing your exclusives here with Mr. Really Arena. Exclusive. <laughs> so in here at the moment, if you look over there, Scarlett, you've got the Royal Air Force. They've just been in. Then the West Midlands Police. They're in the far corner. They're on at the moment. Then you've got the fly ball getting ready here. In a moment, in a couple of minutes, couple of hours' time, this will be full of all the group judging with the working and the pastorals and the international junior handlers. It never stops in here. It you is. know, there's probably five or six hundred people in here there's at any such one a, time. A buzz around here. A huge it as buzz. Well. I mean, there's eight and a half thousand people sitting in there at the moment. It is, it is unreal, and the atmosphere as soon as you walk it's electric, in there. electric, isn't it? And I can't even imagine how they're feeling right now. I bet they've got butterflies in the stomach. Well, certainly the fly ball lot are, because today is the deciding factor as to who goes through to tomorrow's grand final. So they've got to go well today to make it through to tomorrow's final. So they're a bit nervous, aren't they? That is. Well, I'm going to go and watch that. Thank you so much, Nick. Lovely Thank you. Have a great day. Busy. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ashley Butler and I'm going to be showing you how to get started in Hilwert to Music. Back in 2012, I went on Britain's Got Talent with my dog Pudsey. We then went on to win the show and have performed around the country and the world on stages and TV shows, including Crufts. Unfortunately, Pudsey has passed away, but I still get to perform with my other dog, Sully. Good boy, well done. Let's get started. Hillwork to Music is where you choreograph a routine to music for you and your dog. There are two different categories, Hillwork to Music and Freestyle. Hillwork to Music is where the majority of the routine has to involve obedience hillwork. Freestyle is where you can put anything into the routine that you think is appropriate and that follows Kennel Club rules. Are you thinking about getting started in Hillwork to Music? Well, here are some of the things you need to know. All dogs, pedigrees and crossbreeds can compete in Hillwork to Music. In order to compete at a Kennel Club licensed competition, your dog will need to be registered with the Kennel Club's activity or breed register. Start basic obedience training as soon as possible. This will help with your relationship and their focus on you. It's important to keep reinforcing and strengthening all of your training. Train in different environments to make sure that your dog becomes familiar with distractions. It's a joint performance, so practice your moves and your routine just as much as training your dog. Most importantly, Hillwork to Music is all about teamwork. So build a strong relationship with I train my dogs using a clicker. I break each move down and teach them separately. It's important to explore all the different positive training methods to find out which one works for you and your dog. We're going to show you some of those moves now. So we're now going to do a spin. So Sully can spin clockwise and he can spin anti-clockwise. Close, good boy. And then back, good boy. Once more, close and back. Good boy, well done. So I teach this with a treat in my hand. So if I want him to go clockwise, I use my left hand, okay? So treat in the left hand. I bring him round in a circle, wait for him to come in front, click and treat. Good boy. If I want him to go anti-clockwise, I have the treat in my right hand. Good boy, well done. Exactly the same, round in that circle, wait for him to come in front, click and treat. The next move we're going to teach our dogs is a leg weave. So I'll show you with Eliza first of all. Ready, legs, yes, legs, good girly, legs, nice. Legs, good girl, legs, good girly, well done, clever girl. So when I am teaching the movement to Eliza, she clearly likes her toys, but I revert back to treats, so it slows her down and gets that control into her. Ready, Eliza, come, good girl, well done. So I start with treats in both of my hands and my legs shoulder width apart. I bring the dog through, round the back, click and treat. Through, click and treat. Through, click and treat. Good girl, well done. 
If I want to make the move more complicated, then I add walking forwards to it, okay? Ready, go round. Yes, legs, good girl, legs, nice, legs. Good girl, legs, good legs. Good girly. A really complicated movement is reverse walking. So we'll give you a demonstration first of all. Ready, Sally? Ready, steady, and walk, walk, walk. Good boy, walk, walk, walk. Good, good boy, well done. So I teach this with a treat in either hand, it does not matter. I start with the dog in front of me, hand just on their nose, ready? So I rock backwards because I want the dog to come into me. Brilliant, well done. And then I rock forwards, click and reward, okay? To start off with, all I want is maybe one or two steps, tiny movements. Rock backwards, good, and then rock forwards. Click and reward. Good boy, well done. To make this move even more advanced, I would teach the dog to get that distance. Okay, ready? Walk, walk, walk. Good boy, walk, walk, go. Good boy, clever lad, well done. That is reverse walking. When you feel ready to enter a Hillwork to Music competition, you need to pre-enter. You will be judged on content and flow of the routine, accuracy in team performance, and musical interpretation. Sully and I will show you one of our routines now that suits both of our styles. I've taken you through the basics of Hillwork to Music. It's now time for you to go find your local Kennel Club registered Hillwork to Music Club. Don't forget there's loads more advice on the Kennel Club's website, including how to qualify your dog in Hillwork to Music at Crufts. That's all from me. Check out the Kennel Club's social media channels for more videos. Bye. So I am here at the Whimsy stand with the lovely Zeus and Dr. Danielle. Now, I've noticed that just like humans, the first things that you notice about a dog is its smile. So like I say, I am with the wonderful Dr. Danielle who can tell us how to get the perfect smile for your dog, just like Zeus. So I have a little chihuahua. You do? What, what advice would you give to us to get her smile up and ready? So you need to do something every single day. Now, the ideal world, you need to get to your chihuahua with a toothbrush and clean every single one of their teeth. A little bit challenging, most people like to keep their fingers. So the next best thing is to use an edible dental chew. So this is the chihuahua size, perfect for their mouth. But then for a dog like Zeus here, it's more one of these big ones. So these are fantastic in that they come with a variety of shapes and sizes, but also they clean two times better than the competitor products and they last three times longer. So it's something that's best on their teeth and keeps them happy as well. So they would literally only need, Zeus would need to eat one of those a day? One of those a day and he'd be as happy as Larry and he'd also have the most beautiful smile, which is what he has. He has and I feel a little bit like Claire Borden right now because <laughs> I may not be a warden the best in show, but I am a warden the best in smile and that goes to you Zeus, look at that, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> The lovely Scarlet Moffat there with our brand new Crufts Extra feature where we take you behind the scenes at the world's greatest dog show. If you're just joining us, then a very warm welcome to our live stream here from the main arena on Best in Show Day at Crufts 2020. people queuing off and I must implore you again if you have empty seats in your rows would you please squeeze up into the middle from each end or only one end if there's only one end to your row 
and allow other people to come and get a seat. There are hundreds of people out there who would love to come and enjoy the
going to introduce you first of all to our judge, Gunter. Gunter's our first ever international judge from Germany, making his way into the middle of the arena now. And he's also got a ring party to help him. And they give up their time to ring party to do the line judging and so on. So a big round of applause for our uh, ring party as well. Okay. So it is the climax the of the fly ball. The quickest dogs at Crufts 2020 are raring to go. Last year we had a tie and a new record. The arena is jam-packed. High-speed canines in the fast lane, a massive attraction. First final aces high against commandos and then Brig Muttley crew against Focus. Aces high will be on the far side. Current Crufts champions, equal record holders as well, 15-20. They've been a bit messy, they've reached it the hard way, have aces high. If they get it right, they could possibly threaten the record. Commandos are a fantastic team as well. Third year at Crufts Flyball, Friday's champions, got two teams through to the final last year. Commandos on this near side, and aces high on the far. Caro will go first for Commandos, and first to go for aces high will be Riot. We're all set for the final of Flyball. Quickest dogs at Crufts 2020, raring to go. It is Commandos on the near side, aces high on the far. Best of three. First to go for Commandos is Caro. First to go is Riot for aces high. Nothing in it at the moment. Aces high on that far side. Second dog is Heist. It's with aces high on the far side at the moment. Nova to go third for aces high. You have it right now at the moment. Nova to go. And then we will have on that pass. That's a terrific, terrific performance from aces high who get it comfortably. Get it comfortably. We're just under a second in this fantastic start there by Aces. Uh, just setting out the stall now. That'll really put the pressure on the Commandos for this second leg. Commandos will really push now in this second race. They know it's all about the box turn. They know they are slower. They've got to get it right. Otherwise, it is going to be Aces High going through. Aces High perfection in that first race. Can they repeat it? They've been a bit messy coming to this final. All sorts of errors. Aces on the far side then. The lights are on and we are running. Good start by Aces on that at far side. It's with Aces at the moment. Commandos battling back all about the turn in far. In fly ball. There is a fault as well. And on that far side, the ultimate uh, finisher is Hustle, who gets through. Fault on the far side as well. We're hearing about a fault. We'll look at it. They're still running on this near side. We will wait for the verdict of the judge from Gunter Frecken, the German judge. Which way is he going to point? Which way is he going to point? He's pointed this way to Commandos. One apiece. Commandos said they were going to have a real crack in that second race, and indeed they did. He did. I can't quite understand why the Commandos didn't rerun the last dog. I still think they would have had time to put the extra dog in and still win it. But there we go. Best of three, and we are all set one apiece. This is the deciding one. Commandos so consistent, aces high, so quick, but making mistakes again as they have throughout the competition. Aces I have the speed, Commandos the teamwork and accuracy, the lights are on, we are off and running, nothing in it at the moment, still probably with the quicker dog on that far side with Aces High, it's still just with Aces High and all clean and quick at the moment, Aces I have, have it, a fault on the near side, was it a drop ball on that far side as well, hustle to finish it off for Aces but they've dropped the ball on that far side. And they're running an extra dog, and you know what? You know what? This could well have gone this way. It has indeed. It has indeed. It's gone the commando's way. What a shock. What an upset. They knew that aces were quicker, but they were cleaner, and they go through.
They've been having a few problems, the Aces, this year with drop, uh, or what they call now, spitting balls. Commandos just stuck to the task in hand, uh, and uh, they did fantastically well. immediately into our second final let's take a little breath there. and in the second final it will be focus from yorkshire on the near side joint crafts record holders 15 20 beat killy ultimates yesterday to qualify runners up last year focus very very quick and there's been one surprise already. Brig, Mutley Crew, the juniors got through to the Young Kennel Club final yesterday. Consistent again. They know they're not the quickest. An all-family pets these dogs at Brig, Mutley Crew. They're looking to make up that. First to go for Brig, Mutley is Zach. Rebel, first to go for Focus. Focus on the near side. Rebel to go first. And we're running. Good start on that far side as well by Brig Muttley Crew. But it's been focus on the near side as anticipated. Very quick and clean focus on the near side. Third focus dog is Ken I. It's going focus his way at the moment. Good turn and this has gone focus his way surely on the near side. They have the speed, and we look to our German judge and focus our one, two, the good. Two good clean runs there, but uh, focus looking particularly impressive here, so all to do now for this second leg. Just a fantastic crowd here, queuing round the block to get in 7,000 full capacity fly ball, a massive attraction at Crufts. Brig, Muttley crew have to strike back here. Beat the ro local rivals North Lincolnshire to qualify as well. Never won this one, reached the finals three years ago. That's Brig, Muttley crew on that far side. One down and trailing at the moment. Blind start from focus on the near. It's still with focus on the near side. Second off completed, good turn, that turn all important. Focus still have it, good turns again. It's with focus now to finish off. Focus to finish it off. And indeed they have Roscoe finishes off the focus. And focus emphatically, cleanly go through to the final. Again, two good clean runs. And in the end, it was uh, fairly straightforward for focus. They were always just a few tenths of a second quicker. And Nice clean pick up there from that dog, well held ball, and it must hold the ball until it gets back over the finish line, which it did, and they are very happy with themselves. Focus then reversing the result on Thursday, and Brig Muttley Crew, who have been inundated with requests to join the club since they appeared at Cross, will not make the final. We are all set then for the final of the fly ball at Crux 2020 from Teesside in Yorkshire. Commandos on that far side. Friday's champions runners up yesterday. Here we go then with the final. It is Commandos on the far side. Third year at Crufts through to the final and focus. Joint record holders, currently the fastest team in the UK. Focus on the near. Lights and they are running. And it's a fine start on the far side by that first commando's dog. He's big just with commandos, but here come focus on the near. Good twisting turn from Mouse to second over the near side. It is with focus this opening race so far. And focus it is. Quick, quick, 
and very clean and look at that time as well 1550 that is motoring it was absolutely fantastic times 15.5 there for the run by focus they actually changed their order if you'd have been watching from the first couple of legs that they've run here today really good tactical fly ball racing focus are a victory away from becoming champions at Crofts 2020. Runners up last year, will they go one better this time round? Commandos so consistent, and they will push really hard in this second race. They will push to go all the way. That is Commandos on that far side. Caro, Mabel, Luca and Kaylee all set for Commanders. Team captain Andrew Shaw, the box loader, Joe Johnson, and away they go. But on the near side, it is with focus at the moment. It's just with focus on the near side. Quick clean and very accurately indeed. Focus opening up a lead here, surely. And here goes the last focus goal. And there's a, there's a fault on the ball on, with focus. I'm hearing there's a fault on this near side that could well... Could well square things up. Yeah, Focus having to run an extra dog. And that means, once again, the final will go to a decider. Focus have the speed, but they are making the errors. Yes, a fault by Focus. And it was actually a dog dropping a ball. The ball must be carried back over the start line. That meant it had to run again. All about teamwork, all about accuracy, all about the turn. Look at that crowd here. There's thousands queuing outside, as I understand it as well. And it goes right down to the wire. Gunter Frecken has handled proceedings with great care. A little reminder of his focus from Yorkshire on the near side, the commandos from Teesside, and Yorkshire on the far. So close. Great roar, a great surge of emotion here. Everything depends on the next 15 seconds or so. Away we go, and a fine start on the near side by Focus. It's Skane with Focus once again, but don't forget how they messed it up in the last one. Still with Focus. Good turn and pick up. Last off going for Focus. They're already celebrating. They're already celebrating. And they have done it. They have gone one better than last year. No blurring with focus this time round. Crystal clear, very sharp, huge emotion from focus. Fine team as well. Kim Gillespie, Amy Rutherford, Craig Burroughs, Gary Minneking, Mike Hallaman, Jenny Leaf, team captain Leanne Burroughs and Rachel Minikin, not forgetting Mouse, Can I Panic, Onyx Rebel and Roscoe. A very popular victory. It was fantastic victory there for Focus, and these are great shots. Pushing off, back down that line, and they were starting to cheer at the stage, so were the crowd, and absolutely fantastic. And always be remembered for the first year that Jim Rosenthal lost his voice in the middle of a flow ball race. Absolutely great. Got very excited, that is for sure. Focus, the champions, absolutely outstanding the joint record holders as well no records today but they are the champions for sure Confirmation then of the result. Focus, runners up last year, champions this time. Commandos so consistent, making a great run of things in the final. Aces high and Brig Muttley crew completing our four finalists who have entertained us royally today. He's done an absolutely fantastic job for us. All now looking after and running our fly ball competition. So thank you very much. So we're going to go on to the presentation of awards and taking the top spot. And the there we go with the Grand presentations to the, to the flyball judge. Uh, and focus. now to the winning team, Focus, goes the victory, famous victory here. Very, very well deserved.
they came into the final quite easily and they just it was an absolute dream for them this is what they've been working so hard for throughout the year week in week out and they're getting the just desserts the team consists of kim gillespie amy rutherford craig burrows gary millikin mike hallam jenny lee and the box loader rachel millikin Great work this weekend. Yeah. All getting their rosettes and glassware, all supplied by the Kennel Club. Thank you. One to it, up with three fingers. <laughs> Superb job. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry, thank you. Thank you. You've got to put your back up on the train. Yeah, can you? And the runners up this year, after a very hard court final, they've had a fantastic weekend here at Flyball. There's a commandos consisting of Rachel Short, Janet Anderson, Nikita McNiff, William Whiteley, Sarah Robinson, Dave Anderson, and their box loader was Joe Johnson. It's been absolutely brilliant four days of fantastic fly ball. The crowd have absolutely loved it, as have we, Jim. Indeed, nothing like my annual injection of uh, fly ball comes to a close 16 teams started here on thursday whittled down to the final four today and uh, i don't need to to underline how popular this aspect of crops is not a seat to be had in the house it's lightning quick if you love your sport instant and you love it rapid this is the sport for you and myself and uh, Graham Partridge, we will so return later in the afternoon. Really we'll see you for that for the uh, Crocs Agility see Championship final. Please see you later. Please put your hands together. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Sergeant Mark Ginger, and we are the Royal Air Force Police Dog Demonstration Team. Thank you very much. This year, we have a brand new display for you, with a few new tricks up our sleeve as well, so I hope you enjoy it. We have also joined forces with the Royal Air Force Benevolent Fund. The RAF Police and our dogs are supporting the fund's campaign to get more veterans in need back onto the radar. What we do on behalf of the nation today is as important as it has ever been in our history.
gets her a next generation platform in the form of the F-35. Being an RAF police dog handler, you find yourself in some high threat environments. Dogs are a force multiplier, whether it be protection dogs looking after strategic assets at home or abroad, arms explosive search dogs out with the fighting arms, looking for IEDs and keeping the soldiers safe, or multi-purpose drug detection dogs. Today you are going to see a demonstration of the true capabilities of the Royal Air Force Police Underdogs and they are doing this demonstration in support of the Royal Air Force Benevolent Fund. When I was in Afghanistan as an arms exposure search dog handler with my dog Memphis, I initiated an IED and had life changing injuries and the Royal Air Force Benevolent Fund have been with me for every step of my recovery. Be reassured that the Royal Air Force Benevolent Fund is there for every member of the Royal Air Force family. Join the search, change your life. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get the show on the road. So it's time to introduce you to our handlers and their dogs. First up, from RAF Waddington, it's Corporal Corden and Bruce. So, Bruce is a, an explosive search dog. Um, he's just checking the arena for us, just making sure it's all right. Oh, that's, yep, yeah, on, on his box. Well done, Bruce, thank you. Right, and from RAF Marham, it's Corporal White and Dara. From RAF Odium, Corporal Bremner and Xantos. Representing RAF Coningsby, our team leader this year, Corporal Cooper and Rhea. And that naughty boy over there, it's his turn next. Corporal Smith and Tommy. And last, but by no means least, from RAF Rise Norton, our very own cross celebrity, Corporal Taylor and Gusty. Lots of interesting smells in the arena, as I'm sure you can appreciate today. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, our display today will be one of obedience, agility, and individual training. It is very important to remember that all the dogs in the arena today are operational military working dogs. This is not their day job. These handlers and these dogs are used to patrolling airfields all over the world, protecting the, the assets and the personnel of the Royal Air Force. They do this at night and they do this in all weathers. This environment is very new to them. The environment is new to the dogs and it is new to the handlers. Some of our handlers here today have been in the Air Force less than a year. Five of the dogs you will see today have never done anything like this before. So as I'm sure you can appreciate, the environmentals for these dogs are very difficult. So I'm sure if there are a few mistakes, you can empathize with us today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a challenging road for us to get to cross this year. The team has faced professional challenges. We've been recalled to duty, therefore taking us away from our training. We have had last minute replacements. That naughty boy over there, the fluffy one, Tommy, he's only been with us for five days. Five days training, ladies and gentlemen. My team has faced personal challenges, illness in their family, even bereavements. I am immensely proud of what they have achieved to get here today. They are testament to the professionalism and dedication of the Royal Air Force. And I hope you are proud of what they have achieved as well. That's enough from me, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see some from, from our dogs. So, as our handlers clear the centre of the arena, they leave behind our team leader, Corporal Cooper and Rhea. Now, thank you very much. In the Royal Air Force, we are quite used to jumping through hoops, but we're not as good as Rhea. Now, Rhea is an extremely agile girl, and we hope you see that today. We're going to start off. Corporal Cooper's going to show us the single hoop. Very nice. But she made that far too, look far too easy. So we're going to try the double hoop. Very nice. Rhea jumping extremely well today. So let's make things more interesting. Where's our assistant? Right, let's see what we can do. And off the back from Rhea. And through the arms, very nice. But still making it look too easy. There are a lot of very nice smells in the arena today. So what do you think, Corporal Cooper? What's, what's she got in her today? Triple hoop? Quadruple hoop? Wow, I don't know. What do you think, ladies and gentlemen? The quadruple hoop? Wow. Let's see what she's got then today. Lining them up. Oh, fantastic. Rhea jumping very nicely. But that is still far too easy. So, yes, the small hoop, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, quite a small hoop. Not much bigger than Rhea herself. So, ladies and gentlemen, if she manages this, I want everybody to give a huge cheer for Rhea. Yes! Well done, Rhea. Excellent work. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you see uh, a couple of weed poles being pulled out, and I'm sure you've seen 
quite a lot of agility at Cross this year. Quite a lot, lot of dogs doing the weave. Um, and we know we're not quite at that level, but what we like to do is make things a little competitive. And today we are going to settle a score, a five week long score, to see who is the best weave in the team. Now yesterday, Xantos won. So Bruce has got the opportunity to tie things up or it'll be a clean sweep for Xantos. So everybody on this side of the arena, you're gonna be cheering for Corporal Bremner and Xantos. Nice. And everybody on the other side of the arena, I want you to cheer for Corporal Corden and Bruce. Lovely. Wow, loads more noise over that side, ladies and gentlemen. Arms, you've got some uh, catching up to do. So, handlers, are you ready? Are you steady? Go. Santos <laughs> flying. Bruce catching up. Oh, it's close. Oh. And a little bit of showboating. Very nice. I think Santos took it. It's, yeah. It's 2-0 to Santos. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'll draw your attention over to the left-hand side of the arena where you can see our ladders. And setting themselves up at the foot of the 12-foot ladders, Corporal Cooper and Rhea. Rhea quite keen to get started. So, this is an exercise of strength, dexterity and control. But most of all, it needs to be a very positive experience for Rhea. It's not a normal thing for a dog to climb a set of ladders, but with trust with her handler, it's an exercise that we like to teach our dogs. And it proves that there really is nowhere to hide from an RAF police dog. So, Corporal Cooper, are you ready? She's keen to keep going. We just asked Rhea to take a moment just to enjoy the view while we uh, reset our safety stewards, as safety of the dogs is the most important thing. Very nice, Rhea. Beautiful control from the team. Corporal Cooper just repositioning to ensure that Rhea maintains control throughout the exercise. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, another huge cheer for Rhea. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we move across to the other side of the arena where you see our scramble wall. Now, this is an exercise of pure power and agility. You right there, Bruce? Ready? No? Not today? Oh, too small. Oh. So, uh, oh, can we have Bruce's uh, substitute on? He's a bit of a prima donna. Not, not sometimes he doesn't want to do things. And after all, he is a Springer Spaniel. So. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, what I'll do is we're going to divide up the audience and you can cheer for your relevant dog again. So, everybody on this side of the arena, I'll ask you to cheer for Corporal White and Dara. Yes, nice. And everybody at the back of the arena, you're going to be cheering for Corporal Bremner and Xantos. And everybody on this side of the arena, your dog will be Corporal Mundy and Noisy Nina. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Corporal White and Dara. Dara safely over the six foot wall. Next up, Corporal Bremner and Santos. Very nice, Santos. And finally, Corporal Mundy and Nina. Very nice. All our dogs safely over the first one. And our arena assistants 
put another slat into the wall, raising it to approximately seven feet. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to need loads more no noise to get these dogs over this wall. Kubawai and Zara! Uh, sorry, push. Uh, Corporal White, we don't accept cheats. You're disqualified. <laughs> Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm a stickler for the rules. So, next up, Corporal Bremner and Santos. Oh. I think that was a bit of an early takeoff, Santos. Too excited. Let's have another go. Well done, Santos. There we go. And finally, Corporal Mundy and Nina. Well done, Nina. So, two dogs still in the competition. We raised the wall to seven and a half feet, roughly. So, everybody on this side of the arena, I'll ask you to choose whoever you want to cheer for. Let's hear it for. Corporal Bremner and Xantos. Oh, problem? No? Oh, just check the wall for me, please. Health and safety is a paramount of importance. Ah! Corporal Bremner, what have I said about cheaters? Disqualified. Ladies and gentlemen, the rules are the rules. So, everybody in the arena, let's hear it for Corporal Mundy and Nina! Beautiful, Nina. Now, what do we think? Have we got another one, Nina? Would you like to see one more, ladies and gentlemen? Shall we raise the height of the wall? Yes, so let's put that wall up to around eight feet. And Corporal Mundy and Nina are going to need everybody in the arena to get behind them as they attempt the eight-foot wall. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for our scramble champion, Corbin Mundy and Nina! Oh. There's that early takeoff again. Should we have another go? Should we have another go? Is she all right? Just check her over. Is she okay? Yes. Right, come on, Nina. Let's... Let's hear it then, ladies and gentlemen, for Nina! Oh, just not got it in her today. Our scramble champion, Nina! So, ladies and gentlemen, you've seen how high our dogs can jump. Now, let's see how fast they can run down the agility line. Now, somewhat like the fly ball, these dogs respond to noise. So, as we introduce the dogs, I'm going to need everybody in the place to go crazy. First up, it's our scramble champion, Corporal Mundy and Nina. Well done, Nina. And Corporal Smith and Tommy. Oh, Tommy. He's just happy to be here. And with the high risk crossover, Santos and Rhea. Very nice. Let's hear it for Corporal White and Dara. Very nice, Dara. And finally. Corporal Taylor and Gusty. Um, Corporal Taylor, where's your hat? You're incorrectly dressed. Um, can you, we do have our senior officer here. Can you sort yourself out, please? Well done, Gusty. Man's best friend in action, ladies and gentlemen. And Corporal Taylor, you're going to need to get yourself to stores and get a new hat on Monday, I think. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of our demonstration today. All that's left for me to say is thank you for all of your support. You really have been a fantastic audience. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, as our team march towards the front of the arena to take their places in preparation for the salute, receiving the salute today, Air Officer Commanding Number Two Group, Air Vice Marshal Gillespie. Ladies and gentlemen, the Royal Air Force Benevolent Fund estimates that as many as 100,000 veterans are in urgent need of what could be life-changing support. We all have a last chance to do our duty just as they did theirs, by giving them and their families the support that they deserve. If you know someone who served in the Royal Air Force who is in need, search for the Royal Air Force Benevolent Fund online to find out how they can help. Ladies and gentlemen, just one more thing before the team leave the arena. A member of our team, Corporal Jess Bremner, who served in last year's team and is obviously in this year's team, this is the last demo with us this year. And I just wanted to take a moment to thank her for all her work and to wish her well on her overseas deployment, ladies and gentlemen. So, ladies and gentlemen, you really have been an amazing audience today. Thank you so much. Please show your appreciation one last time for the Royal Air Force Police and their dogs. Wonderful, wonderful display to complete this Sunday afternoon performance of Crafts 2020. For those of you who do have best in show tickets for this evening, you are more than welcome to use the forum live. Ask any of the Resorts World Arena staff and they'll direct you to the forum live. But for those of you, please do now vacate your seats as we set the scene for Crafts Best in Show 2020, live tonight on Channel 4. So please now, we, may we ask you to vacate your seats. We now need to uh, set the scenes for Best in Show 2020. Thank you so much for being with us and uh, enjoy the rest of this incredible show in the remaining halls. I'm so excited. I have been watching Crufts since I was a little girl and the moment has come. 
People's doggy dreams can come true. I am here at the Young Kennel Club ring with not other than I am fan girling. Ashley and Sullivan if he's naughty, but Sully if he's good. Yes, most of the time it's Sully, but if he's having a naughty day, it's Sullivan, and he knows it. <laughs> so, I mean, you are a legend in this. I can say this, you are. <laughs> in heel to music. He'll work to music. He'll work to music. There we go. I mean, I'll be honest, I call it doggy dancing. Yeah. So I feel like I've learned a lot from BD that there are actual technical words. Yeah, so um, it's called Hill Work to Music. You either have the Hill Work category, which is predominantly um, Hill Work obedience, um, and then you've got the freestyle side of it as well, which you can put pretty much anything into it as long as it goes along with Kennel Club guidelines. Nice. So are you going to teach me how to do it? Give it a go. Sully is a bit crazy today, so you might be called Sullivan. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'll show you first of all. Ready, Sully? So what we're going to do, I'm going to give you a treat in a second, and you're going to have a treat in your hand, and you're going to go both. Good boy. There we go. Nice one. Well done. Clever. So here is your treat. Be nice and clear with your commands, okay? Boss! You're both again, don't give him the treat, and then you're going to say back, okay? And he should turn anti clockwise, hopefully. Boss! Boss! Back. Good. Back. Nice! Yeah. Well done! Good boy! He was actually really good then. So you were saying the wrong command, but using the right hand. So oh. he followed your oh, hand. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're going to go the other way. So that, that one's back, anti clockwise. So right hand. My name's Anthony Clark. I've been lucky enough to compete at the top level of British agility, winning the championship at Crufts, and also competing and winning medals for my country. I'm currently competing with my dog, Protest. Agility is where a handler has to guide a dog through an obstacle course, as fast and as accurately as possible. If you're thinking of getting started in agility, here are some things you need to know. Firstly, agility is open to all dogs. Both crossbreeds and pedigrees can compete. In order to be able to compete at a Kennel Club licensed agility show, your dog must be registered on the Kennel Club's activity or breed register. When training your dog, it's important to find a reward that works for them. I train protests using treats and toys. Before starting agility, it's important to master basic obedience to maintain focus and attention on you as a handler. 
Keep reinforcing these behaviors as these will stay with you for the rest of your dog's career. Once these foundations are in place, make sure you speak with an experienced agility trainer and they will advise you when you can start. Finally, agility is all about teamwork. So make sure you build a strong relationship with your dog. I'm now gonna take you through each individual piece of equipment. Depending on your dog's height, the equipment will be adjusted accordingly. A standard jump. The idea of this is for the dog to be able to take off from one side and land successfully the other side without knocking the jump pole off. Let's move on to the long jump. The idea of this is to gain distance instead of height without knocking over any of the sections. Next, we have the rising spread jump. This tests both distance and height. Now we have the tunnel. It's pretty self-explanatory. We want the dog to go in one end and come out the other. The breakaway tire. The idea is for the dog to jump through the tire without breaking it open, because this would result in a fault. The wall. This is a solid jump. The idea is for the dog to jump it successfully without knocking the bricks off the top. Next, we have the weave poles. The dog must enter with the first pole on its left-hand side and continue through the poles until they are completed. So now we're gonna move on to the contact equipment. The contact zones are indicated in a different color at the start and finish of each individual piece of equipment. First, we have the A-frame. The idea is for the dog to climb up and over, touching the contact zones on both ends. Secondly, we have the dog walk. The idea is to go up, across, and down, touching the contact zone at both ends. Lastly, we have the seesaw. It's pretty self-explanatory, but one thing to remember is the dog must be in contact with the seesaw when it touches the ground. This concludes all the equipment that you will see in a standard agility course. When you're ready to compete at an agility show, you will have to pre-enter. You will get to walk the course before the competition starts. You will be judged on speed and accuracy on the course in which the judge is set. I'm now gonna show you Protest and I running a full course. I've taken you through all the basics of agility. It's now time for you to go and find your local Kennel Club registered agility club. That's it from me. So check out the Kennel Club social media channels to watch more videos and good luck. So I am joined by the wonderful Charlotte from the Kennel Club and we are at the Corgi stand. Who's this beautiful little boy? This beautiful boy is Kobe and he is a corgi, a pedigree corgi. Right, so I've seen that word <laughs> all over. What exactly is pedigree? So pedigree, particularly when it comes to the registration of dogs with the Kennel Club of Pedigree Dogs, means we understand all about Kobe's family. So you'll see online lots of products for ancestry and people wanting to understand their history. Yeah. But within Kobe's case, the Kennel Club has all of the information and we can trace his heritage right the way back through his family. I think so you could find out who he's like great great granddad was absolutely That's so good. and it's really really important to us Scarlett because we use all of Kobe's pedigree information and all of the other breeds information to help with health research projects and it really really helps a lot of people make a real big difference to dogs so what is the difference between pedigree and crossbreeding? So the biggest difference is that we really understand all about Kobe's family. So we know everything about his history and his family. Whereas with a crossbreed, it's unknown heritage. We just don't know the background behind their parents and their family. So it's sort of like when we look at like how, who our great granddad is or our great 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 grandmother. Exactly that. It's all of that tracing of the family heritage and what's in there. And as I said, that's so important for health research and any projects that we wanted to do to support dogs. So this little one technically is a corgi. He could be related to the Queen. He could. And the Queen actually has a kennel, a kennel club kennel name and hers is Windsor. <laughs> Hang up, my dog. My dog also is in the kennel club. Does that mean that technically I could be friends with the Queen? It, I mean, there's always that possibility, Scarlett. <laughs> I mean, 
can't believe it. I can't believe that my dog's in the same place that the Queen's dogs are. <laughs> that is cool. That is cool. Hi, I'm Vary Horn and I started training with my first dog to be an all-round good pet. I then started competitive obedience where I've been lucky enough to compete all over the UK at all levels, including at Crufts with my Border Collie Isla. So competitive obedience is essentially you and your dog working together as a team to complete a series of exercises as accurately as possible. As you move up the classes, the exercises will become more difficult for you both. So if you're thinking about getting started in competitive obedience, here are some things that you'll need to know. Firstly, all dogs, both crossbreed and pedigree, can compete in obedience, but in order for you to compete at a Kennel Club licensed obedience show, your dog will need to be registered on the Kennel Club's activity or breed register. When training your dog, it's important to find rewards that work for them. I train Isla using both toys and treats, as that makes it really fun for us both. Finally, it's really important to build a strong relationship with your dog as obedience is all about teamwork. I'm now going to take you through some of the key exercises that you'll see in obedience training and competitions. Heel work is where your dog has to maintain a consistent position on your left side as you move around the ring together. The main aim of a recall is simply for your dog to come to you when called, sit in front of you and then return to the heel work position. As you progress through the classes, your dog will be recalled to the left-hand side of you as you continue to walk in a heel work pattern. Retrieve is where your dog will fetch an article and bring it back to you. As you progress through those classes, the judge will provide the article for you. Scent is about your dog using its nose to find a specific smell, this being either yours or the judge's scent, on a particular cloth amongst a pattern. The dog must then bring that cloth back to you and present it. The send away is where your dog is expected to run from you in a straight line and drop into a down position in a pre-designated area. The dog must then stay there until it's called into heel. Stays are pretty self-explanatory. Your dog is expected to stay in one position for your class's allotted time. Distant control is an advanced exercise where your dog is expected to follow a series of commands from you whilst you stand a few paces away. When you're ready to compete in your first obedience competition, you will need to pre-enter. At the show, your judge will demonstrate the series of exercises for your class at the start of the day, so make sure you're there in time. You will be judged on how accurately you and your dog complete the exercises. The winners will be the dog and handler who have completed the class with the least amount of errors and therefore losing the lowest amount of marks. So if taken you through the basics of competitive obedience, it's now time to find your local Kennel Club Registered Obedience Club. Don't forget, there's lots more advice on the Kennel Club's website, including how you could qualify your dog for obedience at Crufts. Make sure you check out the Kennel Club's social media channels to watch more videos. That's it from me. Bye. Scarlet Boffin 2020 at Crufts, living the dream. Now there are seven different groups of dogs. This beauty, Luigi, is an Afghan hound. So I'm assuming he's in the hound group? Absolutely. So we have two types of hound in the hound group. We have our scent hounds and we have our sight hound. And this beautiful boy here is a sight hound. And he was originally, their purpose was hunting. But now they obviously, as you can see, have a wonderful temperament for the home as well. So this is the lovely Leila and Grace, and they are Scottish Terriers. Hello. So what group would they belong in? So the Scottish Terrier is a very iconic terrier breed. And this breed, Scarlet, was actually originally used for badger hunting. Can you believe that? I cannot imagine <laughs> little Leila badger hunting. <laughs> so this is a lovely black colour that Grace is. And Leila over there is a Wheaton. So a lovely breed and obviously now really, really popular as pets. How cute. Charlotte, I've been all around the breed rings today. Can any of those dogs that have been in those breed rings become Crufts best in show in that main arena? Absolutely they can. So if we think about the breed rings, we first of all have to understand that we go from puppy to veteran, okay? And we, go, we split boys and girls. Oh, so that's your first part. <laughs> so hang on, it's sounding a bit sexist yet. Do they then go head to head or? Yep, right, so good. your best girl, goes against your best boy and then we have our ambassador that goes into the group and that ambassador for their, for their breed we call the best of breed right 
okay? Then in each evening, we're having these group competitions. So we divide our groups by their purpose and their function. So they're similar dogs with a, with a similar purpose. So we've got toy, utility, terriers, hounds, gun dogs, working and pastoral breeds. OK, so there's a lot okay. to remember there. But each one of those groups will also have a winner. And that winner will go into Sunday's best in show competition. So. I read somewhere, this, correct me if I'm wrong, that there is 25,000 dogs around that area competing. Yes, there absolutely is. And one of those dogs will be our best in show this year. That is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, what, that's really... a one in 25,000th chance. I know, and those dogs have had to qualify to get here. So there's a long old journey before you even get through the doors of Cross. And then to get there on Sunday night, it's a lifetime achievement for most people. That re like really, really is. So is the chance for me and my little Chihuahua Bonnie, if, if she qualifies? I think... Crufts is the place of dreams, so if you've got that dream, Scarlett, I think you have to go for right. it. I'm going to stock up on polish now to shine my trophy. Just going to do your research. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Jim Rosenthal here alongside uh, Graham Partridge in the main arena, filling up very nicely on the second day of Crufts 2020. And uh, we are all set for a little bit of a new experience for both of us, uh, Graham, isn't it, really? And uh, rescue dog agility. It's not a competition, it's an exhibition, promoting great work by all those rescue organisations within the United Kingdom. And friendly rivalry might be there, but there are some wonderful stories behind all these, behind all these uh, dogs, and we're looking forward to letting everybody know about them. Graham, welcome and good afternoon. Good afternoon, Jim. Uh, really looking forward to this event. Uh, I think we've got seven rescue organisations um, represented here today, but up and down the country there are a lot, lot more, and they do absolutely fabulous work uh, taking in dogs uh, that need to be rehomed for whatever reason, and we'll talk a bit more about that. Uh, in just a minute, but uh, it promises to be great fun. I'm not saying we're going it to is. see some top class agility, but uh, whatever happens, t this afternoon is about having fun with your dog. It is, which is, of course, as, as you've told us many times, is what agility is all about. What a nice change it makes, isn't it, Graham, that we're not up here staring at the clock and wondering about a hundredth of a second and wondering about rounds being ruined. We're just here to enjoy some wonderful dogs, tell some wonderful stories as well have a good chuckle along the way absolutely as you say and um, we're going to see, see see some good fun we have got a little course laid out it's got yep. some tunnels and an a-frame um, and some weaves uh, and i think there is a, a set order that they're supposed to be going around <laughs> it but i think we'll probably just we'll just probably just take, a, take well, that with a bit of yeah yeah pinch of salt i think as 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 per normal we will react to what we see in front of us and all of you watching no matter where you are will do the same i think we're looking at our first of the large dogs and that is uh, jemima uh, handler bev nordy and um, what i will what i will do is just tell you the story before we see what um, jemima and bev can do so jemima uh, is a collie a hunt away, nearly three years of age. She was picked up as a stray, taken to the National Animal Welfare Trust, Hale Branch in Cornwall, lived with Bed for 15 months, and started agility training a year ago. Barks are fun, and that's the hunt away instinct in New Zealand where these dogs originate. And that's how they herd cattle and sheep there. And she has boundless energy. And um, all these dogs will be the same we're not expecting <laughs> lightning speed are we over the a-frame and actually missed the contact and went back and hit oh the i contact. think missed the contact yeah five points for that but uh, if you think i'm going to get that white bit you've got another thing coming i think was the expression there and the national anima animal welfare trust one of the, the top national welfare charities rehouses over 1200 homeless pets every single year now we're looking at duke malinois sarah weller the handler not the easiest dogs lacks a bit of confidence at times 
but has taught the handler an enormous amount, and that's something you can talk about, Graham. We always say the handler has to teach the dog, but uh, obviously uh, Duke has taught Sarah a huge amount too. I think we can always learn uh, a lot from our animals, and especially when uh, we're dealing with animals that perhaps haven't had the best start in life. Um, they just need their confidence building, and that's why uh, we're watching a lot of these rescue organisations doing agility, because agility, uh, when you've got a rescue dog, is an absolutely fabulous way to help bond with your dog, to help build confidence, providing it's done correctly. Um, and then as you see at the end there, the first thing the dog does is go for its reward, which is the toy, and that's what makes doing agility so much fun. Next. On the famous Crufts carpet is Hamish, three-year-old working sheepdog, Lester O'Connell, the handler from Scottish Rescue. Working sheepdog, rescued at 13 weeks from a house with two small children, taken into a foster care uh, by Lester. Member of our family after day one and fitted in perfectly with the three other collies. Competing in agility for a couple of years, has worked up to grade seven last season. I'm looking forward to the challenges of the championship. So this could well be the real deal in the next couple of years, Graham. Yes, uh, uh, but isn't that fantastic to see a dog that's had a poor start in life, uh, forming a new bond, new relationship with its new owner, uh, and doing something which it obviously absolutely loves. I mean, what better, what better than that? And a terrific empathy here between the sizeable crowd in the arena and all the dogs and the handlers. We're looking at Sooty, a Labrador cross, handler Helen Allison from the National Animal a Welfare Trust, once again, six-year-old, doing agility training for the last uh, three years or so. Very smart cookie indeed. And you can see why she's uh, nicknamed Miss Wiggles. That old body never stops wiggling, Graham. No, and she's having an absolutely fantastic time. Uh, and unfortunately, what we hear so quite often uh, with dogs that need to be rehomed is, oh, they were too boisterous, um, I couldn't control them, we weren't expecting any of this. But uh, if you can start and do something with your dog, such as agility, there are lots of other things that you can do, but if you've got a, a mentally tired dog and a physically tired dog, you've got a dog that's going to be so much you know, easier to live with. Right, and they are both enjoying this experience hugely. And next to go, uh, next is Debbie Snedden with uh, Jack. And uh, Facebook will be blaming it for many things, but uh, one of them could be Jack. And this is a nice story. His post uh, appeared courtesy of the Dog Aid Society, seeking a home for him, referred to as Big Daft Jack. But he's affable, he's affectionate, doesn't take life too seriously. And he realizes that agility is fun and he's moving up the grades. He's, he's grade five, so he's getting there, Graham. Well, he sounds a bit like me, actually. He's affable, <laughs> loves agility, um, and yes. I'm getting up through oh, the grades hold on gradually. A fun, yeah. fun. On a, on a, on a, <laughs> we'll have a debate about fun. <laughs> there we go, picking up that toy that they love so much, that tuggy toy. And Most of the training we do for agility is all done with uh, fun methods, either a toy or tidbits. Uh, it can even be just vocal, um, motivational praise. Everything we try and do, um, and it should be done even with dog training, everything should be positive training, Absolutely. concentrating on not having any negatives at all. And there we go, then there's a, that's the large section completed. You'd have noticed one or two adjustments being made to the course we have the first of the medium dogs to come mystic meg or megan rescue from ireland jody parry is the handler valgrave's border collie animal rescue rescue charity based in surrey established in 1978 by val phillips organization small and personal animal rescue service and really graham you, let's talk about the fantastic job that each and every animal rescue service does. In an ideal world, we wouldn't need rescue organisations at all, but unfortunately we do. Um, some dogs need to be rescued for, um, for very good reasons, such as their owner's died or something like that, and that they're, they're, they're having trouble placing the dog. 
um, but uh, unfortunately people do take on dogs that are unsuitable for them um, or they just the dogs you know become have a litter of puppies and are unwanted and they just dump them I mean it's just awful but the, the time and the effort that the, the volunteers for these organizations put in is just so commendable it's not true we're looking at Ash, two-year-old Labrador Cross. Alison King is the handler. Adopted uh, from Blue Cross. Poppy Farm Rescue, this one. Separated from his sisters because they used to fight over the food. And then he went to be a prison dog handler. And the idea was he was going to be a sniffer dog. But um, he wasn't having any of that, was Ash. Hated the environment and, in fact, managed to escape prison twice. <laughs> yeah, I, will, I will try and avoid working myself if I can. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, do, I do have some, some empathy with the dog, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> there we go. And Alison has worked really hard uh, with this dog. A first-class clown and uh, tail wagging there, full of enjoyment. Well done to Ash and well done to Alison as well. Derek Elms and Keir, crossbreed, nine-year-old rescue, rescued from the Dogs Trust at eight weeks of age, but has really rocked on th since then, and I think we're going to see something pretty classy, a couple of championship tickets, XL Dog Agility Medium Team last year, championship final in 2019, part of the XL Dog Agility Medium Team for 2020, and we'll be in the championship this weekend. This is a lovely, lovely animal. Bit of a class act, this pair. They've really taken to the agility and obviously doing really, really well. As you can see, well done. Here's uh, Claire Wilkins and Tilly. Four-year-old. Claire's had her since she was eight weeks old. First dog as well. Learnt agility together, these two. And there's a real competitive appetite that, uh, that Tilly has. And that's interesting, isn't it? The two of them, the handler and the dog, learning the game side by side. Yes, and that's fantastic. As you say, you can learn so much together, learn from each other's mistakes, um, and it's an evolving process. Dog training in itself is an evolving process. You have to have to know each other and build this bond and this confidence uh, between the partnerships, and that, that's part of doing something, whether it be uh, agility that we're seeing here or doing some working trials or some obedience or even just going out and having fun with your dog and throwing a ball. Well, that's what they've been doing so far, having plenty of fun. And we move through and look at uh, Julian Mills with Daisy, five five year old uh, crossbreed. She's just turned four. Bit of a diva, this dog. And uh, a mind of her own, as has been underlined here. You want me to do what? You want me to jump that? You are kidding. No, oh, I'll go around scary the side. person in the corner. <laughs> go, go around the side. It's love. Yeah. No, I know, th I know that man sat down and, and he does deserve barking at, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd be interesting to see uh, Daisy. We'll, we'll take her own time, we'll do her own thing, we'll go her own way, and so many of the crowd here goes, yeah, just like my dog. And I think this is also, a, I know we're, we're laughing, but it's actually um, quite interesting because the dog's a little bit unsure, but you can see... Uh, the handler there is just taking his time, keeping yep. it fun. Everything's got to be light and just, just centered. Oh, come on, there's nothing to be afraid of. Let's get on and do, uh, well, do what we've trained Julian to do. Julian used to be in our TV business behind the scenes, and uh, he, his career has obviously rocked on since he left the world of television. Well done to Julian. In the spotlight for a change. And well done to Daisy as well. Very much. I'll take that now. Thank you former unit manager in TV. OK, here's Laura and here's uh, Annie, six-year-old, five-year-old cockapoo. Bit of a genetic mystery. This one. Ah, whoa, <laughs> hold on a moment. Hold on a moment. Just pop back this way, if you would. Meeting and greeting in the crowd is Laura. Yeah, uh, well, and, but she got the reaction. Someone popped their head over and said hello back, you know, so that was very nice. That's Annie. Annie, the dog. Laura, the handler. And um, Annie, well, used to lack a little bit of confidence, but um, unbelievably friendly and looking to make friends with around about 5,000-plus people in the arena. <laughs> and definitely 
not taking the shortest way around here, eh, Graham? Exploring every nook and cranny of the, of the arena. No, definitely not bothered about time faults, but uh, no. the main thing is he's just... He's, he's but there you go. Oh, there I, go. I can do it. I can do it when I want. What's the problem here? It's just the equivalent, really, of, 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 of taking your dog out for a walk, for a stroll, having a bit of fun and having a jump around a few obstacles, really. That's what we're seeing here, and a big hug and a kiss at the end. I'll go where I want. Thank you very much. <laughs> the weather is expecting the, 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 the dog to wave back, I think. <laughs> this is Polo and Tessa. And during Polo's adolescence, Wood Green supported Tessa's Polo's with behaviour and training advice. This with three other rescue dogs. Now this, the first rescue dog agility performance, and fingers crossed, uh, for Tess, but used to the spotlight, this one, Polo performed on stage at the London Theatre for Autism, raising awareness uh, of autism and celebrating the talents of autistic youth and adults. And might be the first time, but um, taken to the Croft spotlight exceptionally well, Graham. Yeah, now, now we're getting into it, really. It's just <laughs> these dogs do do know how to play to a crowd, and uh, it's, just, it's just having a little bit of a bark and uh, getting a respected reaction from the crowd. are absolutely loving this display. It really is great to see. Last of the medium dogs, then. Polo handled by Tessa. And that'll mean another little uh, alteration in the uh, height of the fences. And we have um, quite a few small dogs to come. So just while they're, they're uh, altering the height of the jumps for the small dogs, uh, just an important message is uh, that if you are thinking about having a dog, uh, just consider popping along to the rescue organisations and just see what, uh, what sort of dogs they've got. I'm sure some, one of them's going to steal your heart and it really is absolutely fabulous to be able to give a dog a new home. Now there's an oh, gone round the arena. Oh, look at that. Look at that. And let me tell you, Betty, two years of old, two years of age, Poodle Cross, handled by Lindsay from Wood Green. And would have to say not spectacularly concentrated and interested in the course here. But what an engaging animal that is. And sort of peering at that stuff what, what are those things exactly what, what, what do i have to do here okay i'll follow you and uh tunnel you must be kidding i'm i'm going over there i'll pop back all right no no sorry sorry that looks a bit dark and threatening to me in will she come out yay there we go there we go well done betty and will she go in again that's the next precisely. thing she's back in there precisely. now precisely and but, I've been in there once, I'm not going in there again. This could be quite a lengthy process, this, you know, and um, the A-frame ignored completely. That's probably <laughs> wise. That's probably wise. And, and again, you could, if you had put the bubble with the dog, you go, well, look, I've been through one of those once. I'm surely not again. I'll go around the side. I've done that once. In you go. We wonder whether which end <laughs> Betty will reappear. Fantastic. Fantastic. What a show. What a show. <laughs> he doesn't want to go out now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just uh, can't step on that bar. Nope. I'll do it my way. <laughs> Okay, this is 16-year-old uh, Megan Good and the handler for three-year-old Trixie, a terrier cross. And just looking around, everybody here, there's pretty much a smile on everyone's face watching these dogs, knowing the background and knowing how entitled they are to have a couple of minutes of absolute pure pleasure. And just a little bit of style there as well, Graham, that uh, you as just, hello, hello, hello. It's a popular place to go. I don't, I don't quite know 
that, that far right hand corner as we look at it. Yeah, somebody's got a bag of chips over there or something like that, I think. Might that's be. It. Hold on, A frame. Oh, great. Great effort over the A frame. Again, Trixie, I'll do it if I want. No worries about that. I can do this. But just uh, wants to see a few of the sights on the way round, Graham, really. Oh, now, now we're going to have a great finish, you see. Well done. This is classy over the A-frame, championship classy. Absolutely, made both the contacts there, Jim, you notice. Okay. Yeah, we're into the big dog uh, section now. Jack, four-year-old poodle cross. Cat Combley, a big dog emerging out of sync, but no one worries too much, do we? He probably just turned up and said, I'll go now. <laughs> I like the look of the smaller jumps. Why not? We'll take some of that. Right, we're back on course now with Bridget and uh, Lightning. Papillon Cross Collie, rescued from the streets in Romania and brought to a UK foster home. Two and a half years been in, in that home. Very friendly and affectionate dog. Not the only dog that we will see who've been rescued from Romania. Happy ever after then uh, a small rescue centre based in Bristol. Well done to the Papillon, well done to Lighting and well done to Bridget. They're off and running already. That is Diamond and uh, Sharon Can, six-year-old Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Good bit of style going through the weaves. And Sharon trains with you, Graham. Yes, she does. We'll wait to see how she gets on before I admit it, but uh, this dog is just such great fun. Uh, it has not got a serious thought in its head at all. Uh, much to Sharon's frustration on occasions, but you just have to love this dog. Absolutely fantastic. Well done, Diamond. And well done to Sharon as well as we turn our attention uh, to Anne Chalice and Bear, seven-year-old Pom. Little Battersea rescue dog, this one. Battersea's been around since 1860 in central London, cares for over 7,000 animals a year. She's having a great time out there. This is a really developing into a really good round, Jim. <laughs> we it should develop into serious commentary shoot, in a minute. I gonna... But very quick, we should have put the clock on, really, shouldn't we? On to Bear. Well. What is Bear doing here, Fantastic. you wonder? Proper pedigree. Proper future as well. 40 seconds that round. Lightning. Here's Fergus. Joe Lyons, the handler. Started puppy training at Wood Green when he was 10 weeks old. And... Uh, all the fun of the second afternoon at Crofts in front of him, Graham. Terriers, they just they just have the best time anyway. Yeah, oh no, well, oh, uh, no, you must you've got yep, tidbits okay. in there. No, give me a tidbit, he said then I might do it. Oh, okay. It's all bribery, is it? Is that, is that the secret of it all? No, it is. <laughs> Oh, you can see in the back pocket there, you can see the dog's oh, toy. Oh, and that's you. what he's after. Oh, gotcha. Well, a course of <laughs> taking very much um, a course of his own is Fergus. Just occasionally, though, glimpses of uh, what could be an absolute quality agility dog. Nice jumping style there as well. Well done, Fergus. A little tweak at the end. Yeah, no, no is problem. He, no problem. Is he going to get that things. toy? That's what we want to know no now. Problem. Is he going to get the toy? Yes, he there is. There we oh. go. That's what he's <laughs> waiting for. Now Good he's going to kill it. He, now he's going to kill it. Yeah, I've got it. Nobody else is having it. Now he has the taste. Oh, is that a chicken? Hang on, is that? Looks like. He's got the taste of the carpet, all right. I'm here. I'm not going to go. And by the way, I'll take a good old lump out of my toy and 
All right. I think that's that's squeaky chicken. Is Lucky it? Dog. That's me done. Jenny and Teddy. Oh, hold on. He's hold on. Here <laughs> comes that chicken again. It's back. Oh, oh now here we go. It's mine. It's Fergus has got it. Took a curtain call there. Interesting reappearance. Wanted, wanted another, another little bit of adulation. I think he just wanted to show Teddy that he, he's got a toy and he didn't. So. Okay, we're looking at Teddy and Jenny, another Romanian rescue, picked up off the street with his blind mother and two sisters. Right, action replay. Here comes Fergus, plus chicken. <laughs> Lost it there, regained it there. Get that off me if you can. Not a chance. This is Amy Bennett with the cockapoo. Never. Oh, look at this, Jim. Hello, uh, uh, hello. Get the clock on it quick. Get the timer up. Unreal. What are you doing here? Whoa. 29 seconds. Beat that, Graham. 29 yeah, well, seconds. I, I've known Amy for a long time. She uh, is actually a, a Massive agility <laughs> person. She's got several agility oh. dogs. But look, this is a rescue dog. Look what you can do with and achieve with it. Fantastic. Here's Claire and Quizit. 13-year-old lurcher, retired from agility, but still loves a sprint around the course and still loves a very steady stroll around the course as well. Enjoying his senior years now. And, oh, yeah, big dog. I've been involved taking the small jumps because uh, of his health, and that makes a lot of sense as well. The welfare of the dog. All 26,000 of them that are here, all important. And a nice little, how can I say, elderly pace. I can empathise with that. Hopping over those jumps. But still stylish after all these years. Still enjoying himself, still having a great time. Here's Teresa McTaggart and Bramble. Four-year-old uh, Terrier Cross came to 18 weeks uh, to Teresa. Very friendly and intelligent. And one of the biggest achievements. Came third in the first ever championship final in April of last year. So another dog with plenty of ability, Graham. No, and you can see why doing really, really well here. But and they're making it look easy, but I can tell you there's been a lot of work, and when you have a rescue dog, there's that extra bit of work to put in it as well, so this is a really great effort we're seeing here today, brilliant. This from the Scottish Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Lovely to see them here. This is the penultimate uh, small dog then, Sue White, running lollipop for Battersea, rescued at seven months, and now lives with 11 other dogs. Sue in the wheelchair, competed in the World Para Agility Show as well. Absolutely fantastic. I uh, actually had the, the privilege several years ago of judging the Para Agility World Cup. Had some fantastic stories, fantastic dogs. Sue's a regular competitor on the agility circuit uh, week in and week out. Uh, she's got quite a few dogs, but uh, this is just uh, one of uh, her uh, rescuers. I think she's got 11 but uh, this is just one of the rescue dogs. She does great, great effort. And uh, the, the wheelchair's going pretty slowly at the moment, but let me tell you, that, that wheelchair's got, got turbo boost on it. Okay. Oh, oh, oh there's, dear. There's not a lot of turbo <laughs> boost on show at the moment from Lollipop, I have to say. Rooted at the moment, Lollipop. And actually, sort of quite comfy there as well. But, um, Ah, I see the I reason said, yep, why. Yeah, when you've no. got to go, okay. you've got to go, I okay. think is the expression. don't think that happens too often on that uh, green carpet, does it? But uh, that would explain one reason why there wasn't a lot of mobility there. <laughs> perhaps, 
perhaps Lollipop will uh, get back in gear, if I can put it that way. There we go. Okay, now then. Now you know what you've got to do. In and out of the tunnel. Wants another treat to go over the A-frame. That's what he's after. <laughs> not daft. Not daft, really. You give me one of those, I'll go through that tunnel. Cheers. Another one. Over that jump. He knows. Another he one. Knows. <laughs> <laughs> well, for a variety of reasons, we won't forget Lollipop in a hurry. Quite an apt name, really. But I think <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. Come on, Sue. Well done. Okay, here comes the superstar. Here comes Ollie the Jack Russell a couple of years ago. Widespread adulation. Where he and his owner Karen Parker gave a fantastic show here. Unforgettable, a YouTube sensation. And still got that uh, massive slice of showmanship about him, has Ollie. One of the most popular dogs you're going to see throughout Crofts 2020, this. Brilliant, brilliant cameo at the end. Thank you, Ollie. Had to be here, had to do it. This is my stage, this is where I belong. I am the entertainer. And you could almost see the smile on Ollie's face. <laughs> Great pictures as well. And by the way, nifty over that A-frame. <laughs> well, I'd love to tell you who this dog is, but I haven't got a clue, if I'm honest with you. But um, we'll do our best, as always, Graham. I think it's uh, another farewell performance. Another uh, cameo. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it is. <laughs> Bit of a tunnel blocker. Leave the best till last. Leave the prime entertainers to close the show. That's an old show business, Maxim, and that's what we're getting here today in the Rescue Dogs Agility. Uh, just a bit of a show-off, really. Now we're going to play peek a -poo. Oh, yeah, that's there we right. go. That's right. Guess which end I'm going to come out of the tunnel. Don't fancy that jump at all, nor that one. It's almost that's a game. A it's also oh, a bit of Mickey oh, taking oh, from the dog. Me. Now, that's definitely against the rules. I promise you that... I, I, wow. Because I'm a judge, you know, and okay. I, that is against the rules. <laughs> that has to be a few faults, that. <laughs> has to be the first time I've actually seen a dog take a chunk out of an obstacle. <laughs> Likes, likes the taste as well, I think. What a rascal. Absolute rascal. They're loving it, though. And I think we're going to get a parade of all the rescue dogs that we have seen. Well, very different entertainment to what uh, myself and Graham are used to, and it's all about uh, watching the clock and are they touching the, uh, the right parts of the A-frame and the dog walk, and are they going in the weeds the right way, etc., etc. But what a wonderful slice of entertainment at Crufts. Something at this fantastic show for everybody. And uh, great stories behind so many of those rescue dogs. Too. I think because of the, the dire situation we knew she was in at the time, we all felt the same whenever we went back to that area, we wanted to check on Barry. I'm Sean Laidlaw and this is my rescue dog, Barry. Before I found Barry, I was kind of lost in life. I'd left the military. I was kind of lost in civilian life. I didn't really know who I was, what I was, and losing that identity as a soldier was kind of hard. Like I was struggling that bad that it was to the point where I thought, I don't want to be here anymore. Uh, I hit the reset button, and to me, normality was war. So I took a contract out in Syria to disarm bombs out there. Um, we'd had our morning routine done. Um, we'd driven in 
parked up to a place that we'd been to before. We just heard a noise, a screaming noise. Um, and then there was this kind of concrete plinth, and that's where Barry was, just kind of caught in there. I said to him, like, let's get her back then, let's, let's go get her. So at the end of the day, once we finished our jobs, yeah. we'll just pick her up and we'll take her with us. One of my issues, I don't really think before I do, so uh, I got her back to camp and one of the guys turned to me and said, like, you've got a puppy. We have no puppy food. We have like, all these things that you need to care for a puppy, like, even like wee pads and things like that. Everyone brought something to the table. The chefs were bringing um, dry Kellogg's as kibble. We had some of the dog handlers were donating us some food. Um, we had an American SEAL team that just turned up on our doorstep one day. Like, this is really weird. Like, we're in the middle of this war zone and you've got someone like, knocking on your front door to come play with your dog. Um, so it really distracted everyone from the harsh realities of what we were living in. I, um, I went to Syria kind of broken and not really knowing where I was in life and really on a knife edge of where I wanted to be on this earth and it wasn't until maybe week two of having Barry that I realised I hadn't had any thoughts, I hadn't had an outburst or anything like that, she'd really kept me calm. And I think that was when I first realised the, the effect that she was having on me. I never got to say that goodbye and that kind of really started to frustrate me. They were gonna leave the camp and Barry had no home. So instantly I had to come up with a plan. Luckily enough, I was already talking to a charity called Warpaws. To try and get a dog out was really difficult. Um, so we actually ended up smuggling her inside of a fruit basket through the checkpoints. And as soon as she got through the border at the other end in Iraq, Warpaws were there, they grabbed her straight away and took her away. Everyone assumes that at the airport it was going to be this big romantic fairy tale ending where she comes running up to me and jumps to me like you see in all the American uh, like YouTube videos. And it was nothing like that. I even expected it to be like that. It wasn't like that at all. I've been getting sent progress pictures every now and then, so I knew she was growing, but I didn't realise how big she was until she came out of that cage. She just was looking at me, sort of looking like, who is this? And then I got her to sit and I knelt down next to her and she stiffed my leg. I started stroking her head and I think that's where it kind of clicked. Um, and she just like barrel rolled onto the floor and I had a pause in the air. As, as crazy as it sounds, I just sit there and talk to her. She doesn't judge, she just sits there and wants to be loved. She was the exact same as when I left her, really. Uh, a little diva that loves attention, and <laughs> that's just who she is. When I come home, everyone was saying, oh, it's great that you've rescued Barry, and there was no way that I rescued her. She definitely rescued me. Um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. Ellie is my absolute life. She is just my rock for everything. She is just my constant sidekick. I probably wouldn't be here, to be honest, if it weren't for Ellie. My name's Hayley and this is my dog, Ellie. When it happened, it just felt like my world had just fallen apart. Um, we was all sitting here as a family and she went upstairs and she said she'd be back down for lunch and she never did. We were best friends and she was my biggest support network and she was my idol. All my family had someone to talk to and someone to share their grief with and I didn't. Not have her there in my life, um, I just thought I just can't do life without her. Ellie stepped up straight away afterwards. She was my rock and she just followed me everywhere. Our bond just grew stronger. She just stuck by me, like she knew what was going on. She just would put her head on my lap if I was feeling sad at the time. If I just wanted to cry, she'd be there with me. She just lay by my side. It was like she was saying everything was gonna be okay. Ellie was my motivation to get up in the morning. She was my motivation to get out of bed and get dressed, even if it was just to come and feed her but she'd get me up, she'd get me walking, which in turn got me socialising straight away and talking about what happened. And she got me back to what I love doing, which is agility and hear what's music. We go agility once a week and we train here what's music every day. We train tricks at home, um, whether it be out in the park or in the living room. 
When I'm training with her, it's like I forget about everything around me. We go to compete every couple of weeks or so. We go to local competitions with agility and we travel up and down the country to hear what's music. When we go to shows, it's like being in a bubble, just me and Ellie. Um, nothing in the world matters. It's just me and her spending time together, training and enjoying ourselves. Being able to take home a rosette, it's good to be able to look back and see the journey we've taken together. Ellie was the reason I carried on my activity, such as agility and he works music. She just gave me something to aim for in life. I owe Ellie my life because she's just one incredible dog. With Jovi, life was a bit of a struggle. I've never had a, a dog quite like Jovi before. He is definitely one of a kind. So I'm Graham Sage and this is my hearing dog, Jovi. So I started to lose my hearing at about 15, 16 years old. I did used to miss things like fire alarms and wake up alarms and cooker alarms and all of those sort of things that could cause safety issues. Sitting in, a, in an environment where you've got lots of people around you but you feel alone because you can't get involved in, in the conversation because you're just not able to pick up what's being said. That also meant that I was keeping a bit to myself. My wife had heard about hearing dogs and recommended it and um, so yeah I sent in an application and, and it all kicked off from there. When I've got him, everyone is a lot more aware of that need um, to speak directly to me. Even if it's a conversation with someone else, they, could, they will speak clearer so I would understand. It really lit up our eyes as to how beneficial he really was. The boys love having him in the classroom, I must admit. Yeah, and they just have that sort of family feel when they're in the classroom. He's definitely helped the way that I teach and helped me understand the children better and the children understand me better. And he can alert me to um, when the boys are uh, trying to communicate with me, but I'm not necessarily hearing what they're saying or anything. Um, they can call him to them and then come and get me. If I've got a, an activity for the boys to go on, um, I can put a timer on and he'll come and alert me when, when their time's up. Uh, so at home he, um, he can wake me up to the, the alarm, um, he alerts me to the doorbell. I'm so grateful that, that I've been introduced to him and, and you know, the, the sort of things that he does for me, not just the actual work side of it, you know, how, how he alerts me to all of these things, but the social side of it since getting him, it's, it's been a big, big change. Because we've been through so much and we've gone through such a traumatic event, I think we formed a lifelong friendship that will never be changed. I am PC Louise McMullen and this here is a retired police dog Wolfie. Specialist told me that I would never be an operational police officer again, not only a dog handler. I wasn't going to listen to that because I'm quite stubborn and uh, was adamant I was going to get back. She just kept like striving and get, making little steps at a time. And it was quite a long journey really for her. Just showed that desire, like I am not going to be told I can't do it. Uh, so with the support of West Midlands Police and my inspector at the time, I managed to get back to being a fully operational dog handler. Wolf, you know, immediately connected. As soon as they got together, it's as if they'd been together for, as fun puppies. I think they only did a two-week rehandle course and then went out back out on the streets operational. I must have been knocked out and my initial thoughts were as I opened my eyes was seeing the flames because the car had caught fire. I injured my uh, wrist, fractured eye socket, fractured jaw and I also sustained quite bad injuries to the centre of my back. As I was crawling out the car my only concern was that I had to get the dog out of the back of the vehicle. I got there, I could still see some smoke or steam billowing. Louise was on the floor with Wolfie. I just knew that I had, to, I had to get him to the vets because I thought he would die. 
he's not just a dog, he's a colleague to us. I'm not shy to say that it was, it was emotional. I was in hospital then, just being apart and not able to be near him was horrible. He had to be carried out of the vets, he couldn't walk. He had hydrotherapy, he also saw a physiotherapist there. He's also helped me because I had um, a bad back and I was limited in, in how much I could do walking, so the two of us together must have been a right sight to see. Wolfie passed his licence again in the May 2019. And they proved that they were very capable of going back out there and going back out on the streets. However, um, Louise quickly identified um, some of Wolfie's behaviours that he wasn't actually happy in the vehicle. We had a really busy set of night shifts and I think it took him back to that November. We put it down to the fact that Wolfie is suffering from post-traumatic stress. Events such as the accident that we've been through not only affects us, but it also affects them. My instant decision was to retire him from police work. Our friendship has grown even more in the fact that we spend more quality time together now, I think. It's sometimes nice to sit, have that companionship and that affection and love from them to make you smile. What Leo loves is to be able to get to know a patient. You know, we walk down the corridor and people say, hello, gorgeous, and he looks up. And I'm sure he thinks his name is gorgeous at times. I'm Lindsay Uglow, I'm the lead therapy dog handler of the team that visits Southampton Children's Hospital. SCH Therapy Dogs is Southampton Children's Hospital Therapy Dog, so we're a team of six therapy dogs and four handlers. Um, the minute Lindsay and the dogs walk on, people switch off, people have time to relax. Um, the patients that are awake absolutely love the treat of having a dog. If somebody who's non-clinical can come in and just offer them something that we can't as staff, they bring a bit of home into the unit, into what is a really clinical, intense environment. I knew nothing of his diagnosis or his condition and then it was suggested that maybe I, I should introduce the dog to Oscar. Lindsay brought Leo over, put his paw onto Oscar's bed and instantly his heart rate dropped and we got a smile. Um, and it was a miracle thing. We got... If we can give them that little bit of magic to cling on to, then that was re that's really great. That smile made, meant a lot to everybody. All of what we do comes under animal assisted intervention. So within that, there's animal assisted activity, which is meet and greet. They'll go and say hello to everybody. They, they're like speed daters. If we're doing an escort, or if we're supporting a child who's having a particular procedure done, we might be sitting with that parent and child for 40 minutes. And it's all about keeping the child with a, a positive thought process um, whilst they're having healthcare. Leo just comes into the unit, he's such a chilled dog. Just having that calming time, just patting Leo, is just therapy for us all. They're greeted by people from the minute we walk in the door to the minute we leave. He will trot in like he's owning the place, but to try and get him to leave on occasion, I've actually had to carry him out. The dogs just come in and their friendly faces, they give them something other than, than the healthcare environment to think about. They're not there to persuade or cajole the children, they're just simply dogs. And we are the bridge between the healthcare team and the, the child. On Friday, we saw the finals of the UK freestyle competition here at Crufts 2020. And now our winners, Nikki Hinson and Elsa, are going to take on the national champions from 11 other countries to see who will triumph in the Crufts 2020 international freestyle finals. I'm joined in the commentary box by freestyle and heel work to music expert Richard Good Curtis. afternoon. Good afternoon. Look, really looking forward to today. The uh, Freestyle Internationals, always one of those highlights. You don't know what to expect, really. Although I've judged in Europe, so I've seen some of these uh, competitors before. But of course, unlike the UK competitors, I might have seen them perform those routines before. These, I don't know. So I'm on the edge of my seat, just like you, to watch what's coming next. Well, you've converted me to these two disciplines over the last two days, so I am as excited as you are to see what we get today. Our judges now just coming into the ring. So same three judges, we've had the heel work to music and freestyle. We've got Pamela Rusko, Kat Hardman and Dawn Hill. 
Now, if you'd like to ask Richard a burning question about either freestyle or heel work to music, you can get in touch with us using the hashtag AskCrafts, and we'll try and answer some of those for you during the performances today. Now today, of course, we're going to be watching freestyle, and we were watching Hillworks music yesterday, and basically, in freestyle, anything goes a little bit. Um, as long as the competitors don't do more than a third heel work, but I don't think you'll see that in these routines. We're going to see a wide mix of music and a wide variety of themes. I'm very excited to see the costumes and the props for this, because they're going to pull out all the stops, aren't they? They are, because some of these are the best in Europe. Uh, they've won world championships, so these are really seasoned competitors. So judging today is going to be a little bit different. We'll see two dogs and then we'll get the results for the first dog. So results are always going to be one dog too late. We'll talk you through it, so don't worry if that sounds confusing. <laughs> So each competitor has about four minutes to perform. We've got all kinds of music for you here. Certainly will be today. A wide variety. Some you'll recognise, some which we might not. But it's all about how they use this music today, how they interpret it with the moves that they've chosen to use. And we've got a packed arena, so great atmosphere. It certainly makes for a best atmosphere with this packed arena. So here we have our first competitor representing Switzerland. This is Monica Ballerini and Breeze, this border collie bitch, 10 years old. And they're going to be performing to Bring Me to Life by Evanescence. This is their second appearance at Crufts.
There we have Monica Ballerini and Breeze from Switzerland. Now, they've certainly brought the competition to life, but how was the performance, Richard? Well, it was a great way to kick off the show, wasn't it? And we saw some nice advanced move there where the dog was sent forwards, uh, facing away from the handler. There was also a section with a side pass behind the handler, which was very nice. And those are the d difficulty of moves that we're looking for there from a team that's going to hit those top um, marks. And uh, the piece of music there, ap very atmospheric music. She tried to use the music, so when it really built there or there was a stop, you noticed how the choice of move tried to reflect that music. So this is their second appearance at Crufts, and they've competed in many world championships. Is that experience really helping them here in the big ring? Oh, it definitely does. If you've been out there in that big ring, you're used to all that lights, the people clapping, and the dog is experienced because it is a very daunting arena and there's no way that you can actually prepare a dog for this amount of people. It's not like you're <laughs> going to get those practicing in your local in the park. Backyard, yeah. Yes. <laughs> So uh, the dogs showed very much the confidence we're looking for, that wagging tail. And uh, it's the confidence you've got to build into these dogs to come out here and sell the performance to the audience. Now, as we mentioned, judging a little bit different to how we've seen the last couple of days, we're now going to go on to our second competitor and then we'll get the results from our first competitor, Monica and Breeze. So from Hungary, here we have Christine Bookers and Meredith, an Australian shepherd. And they're going to be performing to Beauty and the Beast. This is a four-year-old bitch. And Christine says Meredith loves being a centre of attention, so all these people should help a little bit.
Hungarian competitors there, Christine and Meredith. Wonderful. Certainly got the crowd going. I loved that outfit change. What did you think, Richard? Yes, a good routine sometimes has that little extra surprise in it. And well, I don't think we knew that was going to happen, did we? And uh, what was nice there was that sometimes there was some really nice subtle signals from the handler. You could hardly see the signal, uh, be it vocal or physical, from the handler. And when we saw the dog go up onto its hind legs, the handler's hands were actually lower than the height of the dog. And that shows me that that dog really knew that command. Uh, because often handlers hold their hands up high. Um, nice attitude from the dog, using that Aussie bounce going round there. Such a lovely attitude. So here we see the scores for our first dog. So this was Monica and, and Breeze. And it's 24.43, which is a good score. A nine there for interpretation from uh, Dawn Hill. So a good, uh, solid performance there from uh, Breeze. From our Swiss competitor. Here we go, just seeing a quick recap of their performance. Monica and Breeze, they performed to Bring Me to Life by Evanescence. That's one of those songs you know, but you don't know what the name of the song <laughs> yes. is, isn't it? Yeah. So our current leaders, so only time will tell whether they remain there. So moving on to our third competitor, here we have Monica and maybe a Border Collie. This seven-year-old bitch, and they're going to be performing to Carol of the Bells by Lindsay Sterling. This is their first big competition, and what a way to kick that career off.
Our competitors from the Czech Republic there, Monica Zaplatilova and maybe the Border Collie. Richard, how did that go? Well, it was a lovely flowing routine. They really moved well around the ring and totally different really from the last one where we had a bit of story. That was really interpreting a piece of music. There wasn't really a theme there, but the handle was using that to uh, interpret the, all, with all those different moves. And of course, there was that little zhush at the end with those uh, ribbons coming More out. More hidden ribbons, I yes, love that. Which yes. were actually perhaps to cover up a signal which was a little bit of a sneaky thing by the handle, ah. but that's the sort of thing you need to do sometimes, disguise those signals. I love this. So we're going to get the scores now for our second pair. This was the Hungarian competitors. It was Christine and Meredith. And some good scores ah. there, well in the eights. So 25.57, which is a very good score. You can see there the judges all thought it was a really good performance. So here's a quick look back. This was our Beauty and the Beast routine from Hungary. And of course, this was before she did her bit of a surprise. She her changed. Yeah. She changed. There was that hind leg work I spoke about earlier. See how low her hands are compared to where the dog is. That's showing the dog knows that command. So here comes our fourth competitor from Norway. This is Marianne, Messi, and Vega, a border collie seven-year-old bitch and in case you can't tell from the outfit they're going to be performing to what did the fox say and I'm not going to tell you because I can't do it
what a great move. <laughs> wow. <laughs> An incredible performance there from Norway, Marianne and Vega. The crowd loved it. What will the judges say, Richard? Well, it'll be very interesting to see what the judges say about that. Totally different from the last routine. Perhaps not quite so fluid. Uh, um, uh, using a, a natural dog move of the big outrun that the dog did round the thing, but that used the arena. And that's something that the judges are going to be looking for. And of course, the uh, costume there is one of the things that the judges will take into consideration. Did it distract from the dog? Did it aid the theme? And they have to take all these things into consideration. They use that resuscitation move that has become an in move if you do any any routine it seems nowadays. But the dog did it very well. I'm full of enthusiasm, this dog. So our previous dog. So this is Monica and Maybe from the Czech Republic. They've mm. gone into second. On oh, 24.43 there. Uh, Dawn Hill quite liking the content. And uh, interpretation. Three small marks there for this lovely fluid routine by this little red and white collie. So our Czech Republic competitors there gone into second place. But it's all, maybe. it's all very tight already. We've got uh, 25.57 and then two on 24.43 really. So it's, you can see the qualities there already in this uh, lineup. So quick question for you, Richard. Can you have more than one dog? This has come from our YouTube audience. Well, we used to run classes where you could have multiple dogs. But uh, actually, nowadays, the sport's got so large that we only have one dog, one handler, unless it's what we call a fun show. So uh, in kennel club uh, competitions, you will only see one dog, one handler. But uh, you could have a go at that in a fun show. I remember seeing Mary Ray doing the pre-vesting show and she used to have two, sometimes three dogs in oh, that, didn't she? Oh, Mary's had about five sometimes and Mary started <laughs> off this sport. So here we have our fourth competitor coming in from Denmark. This is Emmy Simerson and Hero, the Border Collie. So this is a nine-year-old dog and they're going to be performing to Hocus Pocus by John Debney. They qualified here by winning in their native Denmark for the sixth time.
Danish competitors there. Emmy Simonson and Hero performing to Hocus Pocus. Was that magic, Richard? Well, it was superb uh, show of getting a dog to hold an object and then perform moves. Uh, that's a way that this handler can make her routine look more difficult uh, to the judges because the dog was holding something that was moving away from her facing the opposite way and that's the level of difficulty that at this level you're going to need to get in. You notice how she was, she was using a, a soft toy there and one thing that she will have to make sure she does is that to show to the judges that that is not a toy to the dog. But this nine-year-old dog showing how much this dog still at nine years old is enthusiastic about this sport. And just remind us the three categories that the judges are judging in here. They're judging in uh, content and flow, accuracy and team performance, and musical interpretation, each which has 10 points available. So three judges, three different areas, and then we get an average score. So we're going back here to our Norwegian competitors. This was our Foxy competitor, Marianne and Vega. And two of the judges there scoring a nine for interpretation. They like that interpretation. And uh, good marks for content as well. So into second place there at 25.47. Second place for twine, uh, behind Christina Meredith from Hungary. Look at that. I mean, the crowd loved this. If, if the crowd were judging, I think this might have been our winner. Yes, uh, the look <laughs> of this dog really brought that routine to life. And its enthusiasm was uh, what probably sold it to many of the people in the audience. It just had that fun look, didn't it? I think she needs another lie down after that. It was high energy. <laughs> That really was fantastic. So another quick question. We know that they can be marked down if the dog barks. Anything else they can be marked down for? Not uh, in the deduction section, but the judges are uh, able to take off marks in certain sections, say if the handler handled and touched their dog. So there are little things, but not deductions in the deductions box, as we call it. So our sixth competitor, just about to come into the ring from the Netherlands. Here we have Bridget Van Gestel and Amazie, her border collie bitch, eight years old. And in case you haven't guessed from the uh, face paint, they're performing to The Wizard and I from Wicked, the musical. Bridget says she's dreamed of performing here at Crufts and this is a dream come true. My whole life will change Cause once you're with the wizard No one thinks you're strange No father is not proud of you No sister acts ashamed And all of us have to love you And by the wizard you're aflame And this gives all this curse
vision's hazy But I swear someday there'll be A celebration through our hearts That's all to do Netherlands there, Bridget van Gestel and amazing. Richard, should the other competitors be green with envy? Oh, very good. Uh, that was a well-trained dog. Uh, Bridget is actually a past judge of this competition, so she knew what to expect out there. Good use of the prop there. We'll always, when you use a prop, we're looking for it to be used sort of several times during a routine. Uh, the routine did stay a bit in the middle of the floor rather than using, say, like our, our hairy fox, as I call yes, it. Yes. Did that big <laughs> out run and they used a bit of more of the ring. Uh, there was some good side passing at a distance, which was quite a hard move there uh, for the dog to stay at that distance. So a nice selection of moves there from this team. So here is our score for our previous competitor. This was from Denmark, Emmy and Hero. They danced to Hocus Pocus. So accuracy there was a few times a bit of miscommunication perhaps, so that's why our accuracy was a little bit lower. And a little bit of noise there at the bottom. Um, so 23.13 puts them into fifth place. So just a quick recap here. So Hero qualified by winning the Freestyle Dog of the Year in Denmark for the sixth time. Nine-year-old Border Collie dog. Here was one of those bits where the dog was showing its brilliant ability at doing one move whilst holding the object. Excellent stirring of the potion there. So judges there just waiting on the next competitor. Here we have from France, Monica Guinard and Edelweiss. This is a Border Collie, another 10-year-old bitch. And they're doing another musical number, The Phantom of the Opera. Now Monica says Edelweiss gives her everything, every time, even if it's not perfect.
What a lovely routine. An emotive performance there from our French entrant, Monica Guinard with Edelweiss. Now, Richard, they used the whole ring, even behind the judges. Is that going to score them bonus points? That, no, it won't score them bonus <laughs> points, but it's not going to be down marked. As long as the dog is working, if it does accidentally, say, leave the ring, um, then it won't affect their score. The dog always has to be working, but that was a very dramatic piece of music. Um, and it's quite difficult to interpret it in a way because there were some really powerful pieces there. But nice target work where the dog went out to the uh, a gravestone there and did work away. And the dog showed confidence in many of the moves that it did. As you say, quite a lot of changes of pace in that routine. They there? were, and it really has to be brought alive by the handler as well. So I think we're going to get our scores for our previous competitors now. So Bridget and Amazie from the Netherlands performed to the Wizard and Eye. So some people might be green with envy, you said to me, were they going to be green I with joke, envy? I they did. might be because <laughs> she's on 24.83 now and she's gone into third place. Good score. So just a quick reminder of that routine, I think. So we've got Bridget and Amazie, well, eight-year-old Border Collie. And and they performed to her the Wizard and Eye from Wicked the Musical. And a very well-trained dog there, showing there, using the prop and uh, just using a subtle head-on-shoulder move to reflect the music. So all the way from Japan, our next competitor. This is Michiko Matsura, a Missy aboard a collie. Eight-year-old eight bitch, sorry. They really enjoy freestyle, and they started when Missy was just two years old. This is their first time here at Crufts. Don't we paint the town And all that jazz I'm gonna lose my knees And roll my stockings down And all that jazz Start the car I know a whoopy spot Where the gin is cold But the piano's hot It's just a noisy hall Where there's a nightly brawl And not all that
energetic performance there from our Japanese competitor Michiko Masura and Missy. What do you reckon to that, Richard? Well, the first two pieces of music especially really suited that dog. The energy that that dog had, the whole sort of build of the dog and the wagging of the tail is one of the things when you're choosing a track, you're trying to use something that has the right beat and energy that fits the dog. If we'd had a big dog there, it, it really wouldn't have looked right to that piece of music. Does the dog recognise the music? Is that a stupid question? Well, it's not a stupid I get asked quite a bit that. And yes, sometimes they do, only because they have such a good time in training and the music's playing. So they think this means right music that music means food toys and having fun with my mum or dad oh so a dog can have a favorite song it can do <laughs> and this dog is a very agile dog and uh, the handler as well actually doing those leg weaves yeah i, I think i would have fallen over so i think we're going to get the results now from our french competitor which was monica and edelweiss Yes, there. A, a good performance, solid performance. Kath Hardman a little bit lower with her scores. 23.50 puts her into sixth place. A little bit of noise there, unfortunately. Just a quick recap. So they performed to Phantom of the Opera, 10-year-old Border Collie Bitch, and they really had such a lovely bond, these two. I'm sure they really enjoyed their day in the big ring here. And they've done very well. They were on the reserve list as one country had to pull out. So it was a bit last minute, so I'm sure there was extra nerves there in that performance. No doubt. So our next competitor. Well, fingers is, crossed for this one. We're very excited about this. So this is Nikki Hinson and Elsa. They won the UK freestyle finals here on Thursday. And as you can hear from the crowd, everyone can't wait to see a repeat of their performance to trip a light fantastic from the cast of Mary Poppins. Now, Elsa loves to dance, preferably at top speed. They were second here last year in freestyle. Our winners this year, can they go all the way?
day. Well, yes, I think this dog has got Duracell batteries in it. <laughs> it's the third day of competition for this young dog, and, I mean, she's still full of it. But it also shows what excellent training Nikki's done with this dog to keep this dog um, really foot perfect almost, I'd say. Uh, excellent attitude. And uh, that dog, you know, came out, gave the same energy. Really nice interpretation of that music. Good use of the prop there. And this is a really good example of using the prop well and having an outfit that complements but doesn't overshadow the performance. That's right, and it really showed off the dog. You weren't looking really at Nikki, you were looking at the team and you were looking at Elsa. And it is, after all, a dog training sport, and the handler is there to showcase that dog. And uh, Elsa showing her agility there during her moves. So I think we're going to get the score now for our previous competitor from Japan, for Machiko and Missy. Yes, some nice scores there um, in content and in interpretation. 23.97 puts them into sixth place. Hopefully worth the journey over here from Japan. Here we go. Just a quick recap of them. Springy little dog here moving very fast. It was. And with that jazzy music, it really sort of brought it to life. Handler interacting with the dog there and, and selling the performance with her little dance moves as well. The moves should never distract from the dog but they, they should aid the performance and show off that dog. I've got another question for you from our YouTube audience. What is the highest score ever given? Well, because 10 points for each section can be awarded, of course, the top marks is 30. So, uh, and has it ever happened? I think it may have happened in the early days, but nowadays the judges can be a little bit more fussy. <laughs> <laughs> so our 10th competitor from Sweden, Elizabeth Broadwell and Cumin. Now, this is a Schappendoss, a breed we don't see here in the UK a 10-year-old bitch, and this is going to get the crowd going. They're performing to the Grease Megamix. Elizabeth says Cumin is a drama queen who loves to perform.
competitors there, Elizabeth and Cumin. I mean, he just used a typewriter and drank out of a cup, Richard. <laughs> yes, I know. And wasn't that an innovative, nice routine? They were already on a hit. The dog, the little hairy dog, you know, really looked good for the crowd. The music the crowd would know. And then they did some innovative little things like that. And if you notice, they actually put the sound effect on the music as well. So the typewriting, the little dog, she whacks her tail throughout her, out that performance. And a really nice active routine. And you can see the bond that these two have with each other as they're performing. They're that. doing that typewriting <laughs> move. It was a real hit with the audience there. And uh, it really brought together that whole relationship these two have together. A simple side-to-side -side looking move. And, uh, you know, they're very effective to that music. So we're going to find out now how Nikki Hinson and Elsa have been scoring. Ah, well, they've gone into the a lead. 9.1 there, nine high marks in interpretation. I'm not surprised. 26.97 will put them into first place. And uh, it's not over yet, it's though. We've got to wait and see. Three scores to go. But at the moment, Nikki Hinson and Elsa are in the lead with their performance to Triple Light Fantastic from the cast of Mary Poppins. And that's a young dog I hope to see again in these finals. Certainly uh, one for the future as well, even if uh, today doesn't didn't come off. But I'm sure she's going to be up there in uh, the top of the line. So our judges really are having a tough time here. But it's not over. Our penultimate dog about to come in the ring. And here we have Sarah April and Riddick, Australian cattle dog. They've come from Germany today. This is a six-year-old dog. And in case you uh, wonder what happened to her on the way here, they're performing to Thriller by Michael Jackson. Now, Riddick was a rescue dog with a really sad start in life. But he's won through to the highest class of freestyle in Germany. And now he's here at Crufts.
our German competitors there, Sarah Apel and Riddick. Now, it looks like they've been watching The Walking Dead, Richard. <laughs> uh, yes, well, I know that track well. I've used it twice in routines myself. And it's a very atmospheric track, and the handler portrayed that really well there. Um, and the dog was wagging its tail throughout a heavier breed of dog, which would have taken more to sort of keep that motivation going and keeping that energy going into the dog. And so that's what's great to see with this dog, happy, smiling on its face there, showing good back end awareness in many of the moves. Look at that, that was lifting lovely, up yeah. the back leg. And uh, when it was reversing, these dogs have to be real athletes when they're performing. And that's a nice touch where the dog gripped the, the necktie and pulled away. So we're going to get our results now for Sweden. Remember Nikki from the UK. Oh, oh she's look just at that. been knocked off the top, uh, but yes, can't but deny that. Yes, but little Schappendoss, I have to say, it's got the character. And 27.07 goes into the lead. Nine's there really for the good content. Score. So quick reminder here of Elizabeth Bronwell and Koyumin, the Schappendoss, performing to the Grease Megamix. Playing a typewriter, drinking out of a cup. And it's got a super attitude, this little dog, hasn't it? I mean, it was bound to be a crowd favourite. What with that music and that little dog? Uh, hairy dogs always go down well in this sport. And with that wagging tail and the attitude that they had as a team, that's what we were looking at. And Nikki and Elsa still in second, respectable position so far. So, our penultimate dog coming into the ring. Scrap that, I mean, lying is our final dog. We're on the final dog from Belgium. This is Elke Bokson and Jesse, a nine-year-old Border Collie dog. And they're going to give us a bit of a fairy tale performing to Once Upon a Time. Jesse is Elke's first puppy. Now I've judged this team before doing their ET number, and I have to say they did very well there. They're into obedience, so we hope to see that control in this routine as well. So uh, a very different style of routine, I think, to our Greece that's in the lead. Once upon a time, there was a little girl. No, no, that isn't right. You see, it wasn't just any time, and this wasn't just any little girl. This story is about Emily, and it all happened a long time ago in a town doesn't exist. At least, not anymore. Emmeline tried her best to be a good little girl. Then she tried very hard to be a not so good little girl.
I don't know about you, but I've got goosebumps after that. Alfie and Jesse from Belgium. Wow, what an outstanding routine. You cannot believe the training that has had to go into that. There were some neat little moves there, which you, you would not know how many hours must have gone into training. And that dog's intensity, he was into watching that handler. Very little signal there, different type of routine, but told that story Look well. And that, those distance moves, we've never seen a dog do that distance, I don't think, over the last few days. Look at that side pass, that crossing of the legs. And the handler brought it to life with the music and matched it. And that's something we're looking for. That turn away, that's a very hard move because the dog's obviously got to turn away from the handler. We spend so much time getting the dog to watch <laughs> us. Yes. And using that prop again so well there. It was integral to the story, wasn't it? It really, and it did make your hair stand up, it didn't did. it? Yes, yeah. It, you could, even if you uh, never knew anything about freestyle, you could appreciate it. So we should be having... Should be having scores from our German competitor popping on your screen now. So Sarah Apel and Riddick going into sixth place, Richard. Yes, 24.57. Oh, I think it's their first appearance here, so that's not a bad uh, score to get. And uh, there were some nice, neat little moves into that uh, routine. That's real a routine. Just a quick recap of that there. Australian cattle rescue dog. Yes, a nice attitude. So now we've got our results for... Elke and Jesse from Belgium. Yes. Are they going to go so into the win? We're expecting uh, probably a quite a good score here, I would think. Let's wait and I see. I would be hoping for some oh, nines there. Oh, they've gone into the lead. And wow, look at that. We've got our first 10 of the 2020 cross. Wow. Uh, that's a very rare occurrence. I mean, the interpretation was amazing. And using the vocal uh, from the in the song as well really helped to bring it to life. 28.67 shoots into first place. That incredible performance of Fairy Tale Once Upon a Time there. And remember, this is even more astonishing. So Elkie's Jesse, Jess, sorry, Jesse is Elkie's first ever puppy. That's right. Incredible. And you can see why they are world champions in this sport. The, so it will be amazing to watch this team again later in the year, I'm sure representing their country again. Well, actually, it says here that this is going to be their last ever freestyle routine together. Yes, so, but they may do this routine again at another championship. Because uh, often the handlers will use a routine for a whole year because you can appreciate the immense training that went into that. You don't want to use it for one the competition. You use it for many. So last routine, but they could use it for the rest of the year. That's right, yes. So we're going to get our results now. So first place, as we've just seen, Alki and Jesse representing Belgium. In second, Swedish routine, that Greece mega mix with Elizabeth and Cumin. And then a really respectable third there for Nikki Hinson and her young dog, Elsa. Just three years old, that dog. So a lot more to come from that pair. So 12 competitors, all champions in their national uh, native country, all performing here. All done so well in the big arena, but you can't detract from our winner. Just our last two there. And what was so nice today was the wide variety of music we had there. It really showcased that the sport of freestyle, you can use the music that you really feel suits your dog. So quick question, Richard. If you've just been watching this and you are as spellbound as I am, how can you get started in this with your dog? Well, the best thing to do is go onto the Kennel Club website and go to the Hillworks Music section where you'll find a lot of good advice and you'll be able to attend a show. But also go on to places like YouTube and you'll see helpful little videos of how to get started with some of these amazing moves. Who knows, you could be here, maybe not next year, maybe a couple of years, well, you could be yes. here. <laughs> yeah, but what's so good about this sport is you can, you're seeing top dogs here, but actually you start off with foundation moves and they move into these brilliant advanced moves. So we're going to see the presentation now to our winners. So over from Belgium, Alki and Jesse in first position, Elizabeth and Cumin coming in second. And there's Nikki from the UK with Elsa in third place. A very respectable finish for them.
And I think everybody did so well today. I mean, it's absolutely packed here in the arena. It, you wouldn't believe the distractions that are here for these dogs. And they were all so attentive to their handlers. And what's so important is that wagging tail. I know I've said it for the last three days, but we would like to see the dogs really enjoying themselves in this ring. And you can see how they're all winners. Another day and any well, one of those could have taken that top spot. That's right. And a really outstanding routine by our winner there and a very deserved winner. I think it's her first time competing here at Crufts in this international freestyle final. So after three days, will we be getting you, Laura, into the uh, <laughs> freestyle ring? Are How you a convert? How many Irish setters can do uh, freestyle? Maybe, maybe yes. I can be the first. Well, there is a variety <laughs> of breeds in the sport. No matter what breed of dog you've got, you can actually do this sport because there isn't any required moves. People think it's a bit like ice skating where you've got to do required moves. But actually, there's no required moves in freestyle. And you can start and you can show off your dog. I'll come for some lessons, Richard. <laughs> get me there. So we're just going to get the presentation now. Alki and Jesse there. I think a few tears have been shed in the ring. It really is the pinnacle of the career for these dogs and handlers. Look, totally overwhelmed. And these two have such a tremendous bond. Yeah. They don't only do freestyle, they do uh, obedience as well. And it means so much. So well deserved. And look at that. Other competitors really genuinely pleased for her, which is lovely to see. Yes. Oh. <laughs> they can appreciate a really good, well-trained and thought-out routine. For Sweden! We've got tears everywhere here. So Sweden, Elizabeth and Cumin, the Schappendoss, a breed we don't see here. Some fantastic moves in that routine and the use of props with that tight right around cup. And a great yeah. favourite with the crowd. It had yes. that look of fun, didn't it, that little dog? And then Nikki, third place. That is such a respectable finish for them. Such a young duo. It was, and they've had such a busy three days in both finals for the UK, now representing. And, uh, you know, as, as the days go on, the, the nerves do build. So uh, I'm sure uh, Nikki uh, will be relieved now to have finished and uh, sort of have a little bit of a celebration because she won't have been able to do that over the last few days. I'm Sean Laidlaw and this is my rescue dog, Barry. Before I found Barry, I was kind of lost in civilian life. I didn't know, really know who I was, what I was. I'd left the military. I wasn't losing that identity as a soldier. It was kind of hard. So I took a contract out in Syria to disarm bombs out there. We just heard a noise. Um, and then there was this kind of concrete plinth. And that's where Barry was, just kind of caught in there. I said to him, right, let's get her back and let's, let's go get her. So at the end of the day, we'll just pick her up and we'll take her with us. It wasn't until maybe week two of having buried that I realised I hadn't had any thoughts, I hadn't had an outburst or anything like that. She'd really kept me calm. And I think that was when I first realised the, the effect that she was having on me. To try and get a dog out was really difficult. Um, so we actually ended up smuggling her inside of a fruit basket through the checkpoints. When I come home, everyone was saying, oh, it's great that you've rescued Barry, and there was no way that I rescued her. She definitely rescued me. Um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. My name's Hayley, and this is my dog, Ellie. When it happened, it just felt like my world had just fallen apart. Not have her there in my life. I just thought, I just can't do life without her. Ellie stepped up straight away afterwards. She was my rock and she just followed me everywhere. Our bond just grew stronger. If I just wanted to cry, she'd be there with me. She just lay by my side. And it was like she was saying that everything was going to be OK. She just stuck by me. Like, she knew what was going on. She got me back to what I love doing, which is agility and hear what's music. When I'm training with her, it's like I forget about everything around me. She just gave me something to aim for in life. I owe Ellie my life because she's just one incredible dog. I've never had a, a dog quite like Jovi before. He is definitely one of a kind. I'm Graham Sage and this is my hearing dog, Jovi. When I've got him, everyone is a lot more aware of that need um, to speak directly to me. 
The boys love having him in the classroom, I must admit. Yeah, and they just have that sort of family feel when they're in the classroom. He can alert me to um, when the boys are uh, trying to communicate with me, but I'm not necessarily hearing what they're saying or anything. Uh, so at home, he, um, he can wake me up to the, the alarm. Um, he alerts me to the doorbell. I'm so grateful that, that I've been introduced to him and, and you know, the, the sort of things that he does for me, not just the actual work side of it, you know, how, how he alerts me to all of these things, but the social side of it. Since getting him, it's, it's been a big, big change. I am PC Louise McMullen, and this here is uh, retired police dog Wolfie. I must have been knocked out and my initial thoughts were as I opened my eyes was seeing the flames because the car had caught fire. I just knew I had to get him to the vets because I thought he would die. He had to be carried out of the vets, he couldn't walk. He had hydrotherapy, he also saw a physiotherapist there. I injured my uh, wrist, fractured eye socket, fractured jaw. I had um, a bad back and I was limited in, in how much I could do walking, so the two of us together must have been a right sight to see. Our friendship has grown even more in the fact that we spend more quality time together now, I think. What Leo loves is to be able to get to know a patient. You know, we walk down the corridor and people say, hello, gorgeous, and he looks up. And I'm sure he thinks his name is gorgeous at times. I'm Lindsay Uglo. I'm the lead therapy dog handler of the team that visits Southampton Children's Hospital. Leo just comes into the unit, he's such a chilled dog. Just having that calming time, just patting Leo, is just therapy for us all. What we do comes under animal assisted intervention and it's all about keeping the child with a, a positive thought process um, whilst they're having health care. He will trot in like he's owning the place but to try and get him to leave on occasion I've actually had to carry him out. They give them something other than, than the healthcare environment to think about and we are the bridge between the healthcare team and the, ch the child. Your Excellencies, my Lords, ladies and gentlemen, it is a privilege to welcome you to Crafts 2020 Best in Show Night. May we ask you now to please stand for the National Anthem.
four amazing days here at the NEC and the Resorts World Arena. It's now down to this. It is Best in Show Night, where every single dog has its day. Good evening and a warm welcome to Best in Show Night, Crufts 2020. It's Jim Rosenthal and Graham Partridge welcoming you to the main arena at Crufts 2020 and we are set for our last major agility competition. It is the Crufts Agility Championship Final Grade 7, this for top dogs only. To qualify, each must have won at least uh, one championship certificate in the last 12 months. It's a really high-class competition. Agility and jumping earlier combined results running this final in reverse order. Let us check out the course. And this is a lovely, really quick course. They come over one, they go around the back of two, avoiding the weaving poles as they do that. And now a bit of a serpentine into the tunnel and they come out of the tunnel over five effectively the back of two then they've got to keep it really sharp here up over the dog walk they'll all love this really fast exit over on to the long jump and now they're going to do a little serpentine over eight left to nine avoiding the a-frame and then back over that one to ten on the seesaw they must keep it clean there they must touch the ground over the tire Weaves will be in their line over 13. Now they're into the weaves. Must enter to the right of the first pole. 
out of the weaves, up and over that A-frame, making sure they touch the white areas. Then they go round the back of 16, which is going to prove tricky. Then they've got a choice here. They can either go left-handed, as shown there. They could go right-handed onto this really, really quick finish. And it really is going to be exciting to watch over number 20. And it's as easy as that, as they say. As easy as that a course designed to test the very best just to say uh, there can be a winner without a clear round but if you do win and pick up faults you will not be declared a champion so a clean sheet is pretty essential it is a, a wonderful start to best in show night here at crufts 2020 it's going to be the small dogs first then the medium and then the large dogs and as Graham has been telling you a very quick course indeed and you're probably looking at hundreds of a second to separate who wins and, and who doesn't and it's going to be high quality entertainment the man who uh, has uh, set this course Course time, by the way, 48 seconds for these uh, small dogs. Uh, pretty academic, really. And here comes Jackie Gardner, our agility judge of dog trainer herself. Owns four dogs, a couple of retired. And a massive honor to be asked to judge the agility championships here at Crufts. And this year, an innovation, uh, Martin Cavill will be assisting, will be the second judge to Jackie. And here we go, the first of 11 small dogs in the Crufts Agility Championship final. They're off and running. Michelle Henderson and Pinto from Edinburgh. Fifth time competing at Crufts, two championship tickets. Pinto loves a bit of beach and swimming, but has to do her stuff now on the magical green carpet at Crufts. Marking her way round is Pinto. Toy Poodle, nine years of age. Neat, quick, tidy, so far, can do no more. Nicely through the weaves at, uh, at the top of the course and a buzz of appreciation from a sizable crowd here at the main arena. Just turning around the top end of the course, in and out of the tunnel, a very, very good start indeed for Pinto and for Michelle and for Scotland. 43 and clear. Very nice round there by Pinto, 43 seconds. The maximum course time is 48, so well inside that. Next to go Tula, Shelty, seven years of age. Roz Quayle, the handler from Lippook, first time competing at Crufts, hoping they can overcome the nerves and have a bit of fun. That, after all, is what is all about agility. Fun for the handler, fun for the dog, fun for everybody watching whether you are here in the arena or watching all over the world. We are looking at the best of the best, grade seven, the highest grade of all. So all outstanding dogs. And that has been endorsed in the first round and a half here. Tremendously quick through, through the weaves and the time, well up with the time as well. Good contact at the end of the A-frame, top end of the course, sharp right-hander through the tunnel couple to finish with that's very very good 39.1 couple of clear rounds already Graham yep very nice with Roz and Tula there no time wasted at all and a great jump at the end this is Ashley Butler has appeared regularly in our coverage over the last few days going for a hat trick in this event with Sully seven-year-old crossbreed crazy monster Loves agility, has won 12 championship tickets, won the Croft singles three times in a row, and the Croft small championship twice. These two have fantastic pedigree, Ashley and Sully, and already a very quick, confident start. Good contact at the end of the dog walk. Oh, this is terrific. Tight turn, bit of a hesitation there, but picked up five faults as well. Bottom of the dog walk, that was, I believe. So Ashley has to keep pushing with Sully, has to keep pushing but that has marred their round. A-frame is good, good contact there. Must make contact to remind you, a 
the start and the end of the A frame, and a very fast finish as well. So the time is terrifically quick. It is 34.5. Shame about the faults, Graham. It was such a shame and very unusual. I think she decided that she was going to try and play this safe, and that confused Sully a little bit, and uh, resulting in that miscontact. Next to go, Snazzy, three-year-old Shetland Sheepdog. Mark Wingate win from Derby. First time at Crufts on the GP squad, this partnership. So this, uh, this pairing, no stranger to Crufts or the green carpet. Very experienced. Had the number of dogs which competed at international level. So but Mark, very experienced here. He will want to get round here clear. You can't win the championships to get if you don't have a clear round so that's the main effort now you've got to beat everybody else really good style into the weaves now as he comes up to the a-frame just keep an eye on that time to beat is he going to be there it's going to be very close going around there just three more to go tunnel jump and jump oh smashed it smashed it jim absolutely new dog for mark with snazzy brilliant result though and inside the best time by a good old chunk four seconds Bernadette Bay, national and international pedigree, never far away from winning competitions. Zoa, five-year-old Sheltie, first time for Zoa at Crufts, home bred. And Bernadette's third generation of Sheltie girls competing at Crufts Championship. On International Women's Day, perhaps this is a combination to watch. Always look forward to watching this pair run. Uh, but certainly the handler anyway is always very quiet doesn't look as though she's moving at all but always manages to be very economical which results in some very very fast rounds economical quick faultless thus far seesaw is fine tight right hander in from the right hand side into the weeds right up with the clock but they have to finish smartly a frame good contact at the end of that another tight right hander top end of the course into the tunnel it's going to be a very good time it might not be the best but it is very very good indeed from bernadette bay and for zoa into second place very nice, as you can see, no time wasted there at all. R nice running contact there for Bernadette. Lucy Norton running boost, actually owned by Dave Munnings. Dave had uh, hurt his leg uh, earlier on, and, and Lucy had to run qualified boost, and that means Lucy and boost stay together at Crufts, yes? It does, and this uh, promises to be... Uh, Possibly interesting, I think, is the thing. Boost takes no no prisoners, really, so uh, Lucy's not yet that used to running him, but he's a quick dog. You can hear him barking all the way around, but Lucy's tremendously experienced, as you can see, keeping in front of the dog all the way around. It's key to communication, this is, really, and she's doing a fantastic job. Oh, Seesaw doesn't touch the ground. And that'll be five penalty points. It means that Lucy can win, but cannot be declared a champion. And uh, more faults picked up there, and in fact, an elimination for Lucy and for Boost Graham. Was, and you just saw the crossed arms there by the judge, which signals an elimination. And there we see the dog going over the jump the wrong direction. Donna Jarvie and Kayla from Peebles, north of the border, ten and a half years of age, this uh, Jack Russell. Tiny, but a huge heart. Partnership for six years and a buzz of appreciation from the sellout crowd here at Drufts 2020. A real crowd pleaser, this one is Kayla. And proper speed, proper pace. You have to chuckle, but they're very, very serious at it, and they are serious contenders here as well. That's all fine over the seesaw. Big round of applause, big effort from the dog to get that seesaw down in and out of the wheeze. Great sight, great spectacle. What more do you want from agility? But sadly, sadly, just got a bit excited. Back over the A-frame. It's still right up there. Kayla, the Jack Russell, ten and a half years of age. Massive, massive entertainment and applause. Wonderful, wonderful. Love watching that dog run. Great entertainment. Uh, and you can see the dog runs past the uh, up contact under the A-frame. That's the refusal. Here's another very quick dog.
Blink, six-year-old working cocker spaniel, and Lauren Langman, dream dog, part of Team GB. Just missed out on a world championship medal by fractions of a second over a couple of rounds. And they have a very busy cross, these two, and will want to make a big impression here. And that's a very, very impressive first 12 seconds or so from Blink, the working cocker, and Lauren. Yeah, hops off the seesaw. Bit of hesitation there, could cost him a, a few fractions, but it's still okay, it is still clean, and it is still quick. A-frame, good contact at the end of that A-frame. At the top end of that course, this is going to be excellent, this is going to be pretty good, this is going to be outstanding. 34.2 place, 35.8, first place for Lauren, and blink, do not blink. Very, very good, and you can see, even there was some confusion there, you come through the tyre and you're confronted with three obstacles, had to make the right choice, and she did. Louise Eden and Foos from Jersey, Shetland Sheepdog, very popular breed this in agility. And we're starting to look at the times now, 35s and clear is what the remaining competitors, there's only a couple after this, will have to beat. is okay, might need to pick up a bit of pace in the second part of the round, and that's Feinfeld coming off the seesaw. Just having to push a little bit there, so trying to get the dog off as soon as they can, which resulted in a fault, seesaw not touching the ground. But they're going to have a good finish here. This really is a nice, fast finish, and I'm really pleased to see Louise back again, all the way from Jersey. Well done. Up into the top seven they go, picking up those five faults along the way. Penultimate small dog Chloe Brown from Cornwall, eight year old Ty. As Chloe is your neighbour, Graham, I might uh, pass the microphone to you for this one. Thank you very much. This is uh, Chloe and Ty from Cornwall. Really talented partnership. This uh, got a big future in agility. I know that they've been a little bit unlucky in the past, but uh, they finished up in some really good places earlier on today. Comes off the end of the dog walk. Now she's going to push around this serpentine to see her change sides. She wants to keep the dog on the left-hand side, so she did that very nicely because after the tyre, they've got to go around the back of that jump into the weaving poles. You'll probably see her try and get on the other side of the dog. She does is that, bring the dog on the left-hand side, over the apron. Oh, just about got that there. Now she's going to run. Now you watch Chloe and this dog run. Come on. Really great effort there, Jim. Very good uh, from Chloe up into the top three. Fine performance and, of course, a clear round as well. Last of the small dogs, Alan Bray, top competitor, top judge, been around for a while, and Tikita, four years of age, best after the agility and jumping earlier. So proper, proper contenders, these one, Alan and Tikita. Keep an eye on the time to beat. It is 35.2 and clear, and they are up with it at the moment. And trust me, Alan gets his dog round quicker than you might think, but sadly there are faults picked up there early on by Alan and Tikita. But he will still complete the round, of course. Fantastic competition, missing the end of the A-frame, so Alan and Tikita picking up five more faults now. And that the last of the small dogs then. And uh, the medium and large dogs still to come in the Agility Championships, and sadly all unravelled a bit with those early faults from Takita and for Alan. They were due indeed, and they have delivered in the Agility, Lauren Langman and Blink, top of the pile, 35 seconds and clear. Mark Wingate win and Snazzy. Snazzy's first time at Crufts as well. Tremendous to finish in the top three. And Chloe, Brown and Ty closing out the top three in the small section of the Agility Championship. First of 11 medium dogs are underway. Heather McLean 
and Maka. From eight and up there near Berwick on Tweed. Bit tricky to run sometimes is Maka, seven year old does working sheepdog. But setting a decent standard and what will be the time to be missed the end of the weaves though, and that's uh, that's faults there. And this round uh, unraveling slightly here now, and that'll be a DQ. The crossed arms, we've seen them quite a lot over the last few days, haven't we? Disqualification. It does, um, and unfortunately, uh, just a second mistake at the end of the weaves. Uh, when they're marking the weaves, you can have three refusals at the beginning, um, but you can only have one fault that actually occurs during the middle. But anyway, well done to Heather, all the way down from Scotland. But it's unfortunately, after you've been eliminated, it's, it's an even longer way back, Jim. But, <laughs> but she'll yeah. come out of it smiling. Next to go in the medium section, Blythe Fox and Rue from Coventry, working Cocker Spaniel, four years of age, third year at Crofts, also on the GB squad. Barks his way round the course, and the, the better he goes, the louder he barks. See what I mean? Barking, but sadly, but up the wrong tree there, I think we could say. It does, but uh, while we're watching them going round, we could just take a moment to explain uh, what AW brackets G uh, means, and it's actually for an agility warrant goal. Yep, well done. That was the uh, that was the full caption we saw before the dog started, and they complete the round as they all do. Unraveled very quickly that at uh, that particular round, and there's the AWG that uh, Graham was talking about. Shannon Springford and Gift, six-year-old border collie from Swanley. Two were at the Europeans in this year's squad as well. And a uh, little pause, and Shannon and Gift are in the way. Is there a slightly different style here from the handler Shannon? Uh, not really. You always try and want to keep in front of the dog because, as I say, communication is key. So she she asks the dog to actually do just a little bit more work for her. Um, and, and it's everyone's got their own particular style, and it works for her. And it's working well at the moment. 21 seconds on the clock, all clear so far for Gift and for Shannon. Good stuff over the A-frame. Quick finish, and they could well be in the mix, these two. And Gift is not hanging about at the end there at all. 34.5, and that moves them to the best of the mediums that we have seen. Very nice round, no time wasted. Big jump, nice finish. Abigail Doxford, 10-year-old working Cocker Spaniel Wigfield. Abigail from Bristol was rehomed because it's too mischievous in her previous home competing at Crofts for the fourth year running. They know their way around this place. Ten years of age, though, Wigfield, so perhaps not many years left to compete here at Crofts Ground. No, people quite often say to me, when should I stop doing agility with my dog? Well, the dog will tell you this dog is ten years of age, just proving how fit and healthy doing agility can keep your dog. You can't start till they're 18 months of age, but you see this dog, ten years of age, into those weaves in the blink of an eye. A very quick ten-year-old is Wigfield, quick and clean so far. It might not quite be the quickest, but it's going to be up in the shake-up. Good stuff. 38 seconds for Abigail and for Wigfield, second place at the moment. Just love watching them ears and tails going everywhere. <laughs> Nicola Garrett and Z from Rugeley in Staffordshire. Six-year-old Shetland sheepdog. Z is off and running just below us now. Great sound effects going through the tunnel. I've been giving you over the, the last three days of agility. Very pacey over the dog walk too. 13 seconds on the clock and ticking and faultless so far for Z. That's good as well on the seesaw. It's an impressive 
first half, as it were. What will the finish be like? Ah, not great. Just uh, came out too early from the weaves, and we'll have to go back. And that round, once again, is severely compromised. Good contact on the bottom of the A-frame, though, and we'll finish with not the quickest time, and with five bolts on the top as well. Look at that, and see. Yep. Such a shame there, just the five faults into those weaving poles. And just as she gets to about there, she starts to move to the left, turns her shoulders to the left, and the dog comes with her. Stephen Richardson and Willow, five-year-old Shetland sheepdog from Wigton near Carlisle. Massive experience has Stephen, GB regular. And we haven't seen this particular combination, to my knowledge, at Crut. Good start, though. Keen to go work. Keen to negotiate that dog walk as quickly as possible. A slight hesitation at the end of it. A slight hesitation there, but it's all okay. It's all okay. It's a good time at the moment. Good contact at the end of the seesaw, too. How about the wheeze? Right side. That's over. Okay. Completed successfully. A frame. That's good, too. Coming towards the final part of the course now and this will be decent this will be decent if it keeps it going well done willow well done stephen 36.5 and clear for stephen and for willow second place right now very nice there the dog's talking all the time stephen's talking all the time just remember you can talk you can turn your body the only thing you can't do in this game is touch them cameron mcleod and ruby four-year-old working cocker from west sussex first time competing in the main arena at Crufts on this year's Team GB squad as well. Picked up the first championship ticket last summer, Ruby and Cameron McLeod. A lot of encouragement from Cameron to Ruby. Oh, Ruby, I think I heard her say, oh, Ruby. <laughs> Don't take your love to town. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> very good, very good. Ruby's picked up the five faults, carrying on. It is uh, only a young dog again, so there was a mistake there, but uh, she'll want just to keep this dog really happy, go around as quick as she can. She knows she can't win, just wants it to be a good experience. Little dog, bright future, no doubt. Yeah, little dog, bright future, just the one mistake. Oh, Ruby. From the pizza shows out through the semi-finals we had earlier today. Lauren Burns and Zebedee yeah, from Lauren Eastbourne, six-year-old Sheltie Cross Border Collie, Collie Papillon. Papillon. First time for them both competing at Cross. A dream to have qualified for all these championships. And uh, Lauren saying Zebedee didn't win one ticket, he won two. And you can see why this is going to be quick, Jim. You just keep an eye on the clock, everybody. Round there, no time wasted at all, up and over the seesaw. Yes, nicely made contact through that tyre now, coming in towards the weaving poles. Yep, very quick, and it is clean so far for Lauren and for Zebedee. What about the final end of the course? Ah, perhaps you should have kept it going, Graham, because there we are. What a shame, what a shame. It's so promising, but just if you've been watching agility with us over the last few days, that's a great effort, by the way, though, 37.2 and just the five points. You'll know it's a flicker of an eye and things go wrong. It was such a shame there. I think she just turned her shoulders, the dog came with her, uh, and a good time considering she had to take the dog back and do it again. Naomi Reed, here with Jinx, the crossbreed. Naomi Reed and Jinx, eight-year-old crossbreed from Beckles in Suffolk. Her first agility dog, and they've learned so much together over the years. And uh, Naomi was just 12 when she got Jinx. Not easy because Jinx was too fast and will need to show a lot of pace here. Great pictures of these dogs, lovely sounds coming out of the tunnel as well, all part of the service. Stuff over the seesaw. This is okay, you know, this is very, very respectable for Naomi and for Jinx, who is producing her best when it matters in the big competition at Crofts. What about the time? How about the time? Are we going to get a big finish? Are we? Are we? 34.8. Just outside. Fraction. 34.8 plays 34.5, but still excellent. Three tenths of a second. That's why we use electronic timing. Really great dog, this. Big jump. <laughs> Come on, where's my toy? Penultimate 
dog in the medium section, Dalton Meredith and Munchie from Ringwood. He's a dog trainer. Munchie, one of two dogs that he runs. Crazy little dog and a big heart. Second in the singles agility on Friday, these two. They're hoping to go one better. They know they have to beat 34.5 seconds and keep it clean and keep it clear. Great stuff over the dog. Tight, tight turn at full pace as well. Headed for the A-frame and wisely decided against it. Up and down over the seesaw. This is great pace. Low to the ground and picking up at sadly, sadly great pace. But wrong course. And through goes Dalton to complete the round with Munchie. Yeah, such a shame. Uh, the quicker the dog, the uh, quicker the faults happen as well. Uh, and that's unfortunately what I think occurred on this occasion. So you see the dog now start to get in front of him and just cuts across towards where he is. And then you get those dreaded crossed arms by our championship judge, Jackie Gardner. Our last medium dog. James Adams, enthusiastic handler, gives it absolutely everything. Willow, four-year-old, working Cocker Spaniel, second year at Crufts and facing the task of going quicker than 34 and a half seconds and not accruing any faults as well. Great start so far. This is a very quick little dog, is Willow. Not seen anything go quicker than that over the dog walk. This is shaping up very well for James and for Willow. Again, looking ahead, seesaw, up, down, good contact at the end of it. That's the right course. Big twist there. How about the weaves? In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. Fantastic. A frame is there for Willow and for James. They're right up with it. the time. They are right up with the time. They're right up with it. They're going to beat it. Surely, surely, they have indeed. They have indeed. Last dog, James Allen Willow, become the champions with an outstanding clear round. And it was an outstanding round, beating uh, Shannon into second place by just about a second. And in these terms, that's quite a lot. But it really is with James, all or nothing, and uh, he's got it all. Oh, yes, is he happy? Oh, yes, he is. Oh. I remember when I was that excited no, running a dog and when I was winning, fantastic. Confirmation of the result of the mediums dog. James Adams, enthusiastic, gave it everything, produced a clear, quick round when it mattered with Willow. Shannon Springford second with Gift and in third place, Naomi Reed and Jinx. Our starter on the line, Rob Hunter. He's been doing this for years and years. First of 13 large dogs, this one could be very competitive indeed. It's Jane Seller and Jamie, four-year-old Border Collie. First time at Crufts for Jamie, but Jamie and Jane on the GB squad from Morpeth in Northumberland. First of 13 large dogs and looking to lay down the standard. Here. Good start. We are watching, to remind you, grade seven dogs, the highest grade of dog that you can get. And they always deliver a wonderful climax to the agility competition that we watched over the last four days at Brut. And Jamie and Jane absolutely no exception as well. An excellent opening round, this. And setting a very good standard. Will they keep it clean and clear at the end? You bet they will. 35.1, number one, of course. Another dozen to come. It'll take some beating. Yeah, although uh, these are grade seven dogs, this is the first time at Crofts, and it's a big ask, because this is a daunting atmosphere for both handler and dogs. No substitute for experience here. Lee Windiot and Coy. Might be a good opportunity this, uh, Graham, for you to remind us all of the course. Okay, so Lee will just want to make sure the dog's steady before he goes. We start with basically a serpentine and then into the tunnel, then we come back out, and then what is effectively over the back of two, but it's actually five. A nice straight uh, entry off the end of the dog walk, which they all appreciate, and now a little serpentine, they come back on themselves towards the seesaw, and unfortunately had to go around the back of that jump, but pulled it inside, picking up the uh, dreaded crossed arms, which means an elimination. If you keep an eye on our judge, if she raises a clenched fist, that's the refusal, and three refusals anywhere on the course equals an elimination. If she raises it, a hand, that's an ordinary fault. But anyway, there we are. Well done to Lee. Good effort, mate. Good effort from Lee Williams uh, and from Coy, but uh, an elimination.
He pointed one way and Coy Other went the line other. On Marita Davis with Duca, the border collie. Duca and Marita Davis. Three years of age is Duca. Second time at Cross Young, but a very, very promising dog indeed. But sadly, eliminated very early on. And that, I would think, probably the quickest elimination we've seen over the last four days at Cross. But Duca doesn't know about it, and Duca will carry on competing the round uh, to the best of her ability. Yeah, not quite sure what happened there. We'll take another look at it at the end, but I think the dog broke its weight. Um, but you can see this is only three years of age, very talented dog and handler. They have competed internationally, and we're going to see a lot more of them as well. Let's just check it out. To the Keep your, your expert eyes on this. Exactly what happened right at the start of the round. Oh, the dog ran round the first jump and back jumped the first one, so that was an immediate elimination. Such a shame. Spring and Martin Reed from Plimtree and Devon wanting to watch this one. They could well be in the mix. Poised and off we go. That's the way to take that first jump, by the way. Spring and Martin getting rapidly over the dog walk and the spread. Good action, good style, good speed, accurate, faultless so far. Seesaw, good content at the end of that. This is developing into something pretty special. Loves those weaves as well to spring. A frame, no problem. Tight right hander there coming towards the end. Keep an eye on that clock. Keep an eye on it. It could well be inside it. It could well be inside it. 34.6 for Martin. Put a one next to his name right now. So that's what they need to be now. Yes, he was always going to be in the mix there. Very, very experienced pairing this one. Well done, Martin. You're looking at Lucy, nine year old border collie. Andrew Priestley, the handler from Wheaton near Leeds. Second time competing at Crofts for this bunch. A bit of hesitation, but that's all. Love that sound, crashing in and out of the tunnel. Good contact at the end of the dog. Well, slightly slower, this, but accurate. But so far, completely clean. Again, not quite sure where to go. Went the right way, did Lucy. Good style, great style through the weaves. A frame, fine, just sliding down to make contact at the bottom of it. And slightly. The room, the room slightly compromised right at the end there, Yes, unfortunately, just picking up the uh, five folks there. And you can see, as he approaches the jump, he drifts right. And the dog immediately comes with him and raises the left hand, the clenched fist refusal. Gemma Haycock and Jukebox. Smart-looking border collie, this one. First time competing at Croft from nearby Northampton. Four years old tomorrow is jukebox. Time to beat 34.6 and clear. And what a birthday present that would be to make this dog up to an agility champion, Jim. Absolutely, and what a pace going over the spread there. Had to turn around very, very smartly. Did so. Jukebox finding the right notes here right now. Good stuff through the weeds. And the A-frame too. It's very, very quick. Jukebox and Gemma Haycock going to be number one, I think, are they? Are they? Are they? Oh, yes, indeed they are. Finding the right tune there. You're right, yeah. Hit all the right notes she did. Absolutely fantastic. Couldn't be more pleased for Gemma. Um, she, she tries and she trains really, really hard, getting her just desserts there. So there's more competitors who want to snatch back first place off. And Natasha Moy is next. We Pebbles the Border Collie. Pebbles, seven-year-old Border Collie handler. We have seen her before. We've admired her work. Natasha Wise, Pebbles, just loves the green carpet. Third year in the championship at Crofts with Pebbles for Natasha. Proper, experienced, high-quality combination. Yes, 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 says Natasha as Pebbles gets to work. And again, so quickly over the dog walk, a smart turn right in front of our commentary position, that. A 
fine 16 seconds we have seen so far. We want to see that again, because they could well be right up in the final shake-up. Good work uh, from Natasha, good work from Pebbles. No slackening in the pace, touches well on the A-frame. I think if they finish well, they could well be top here. They could well be top if they finish well. 34.3, indeed they are. Get in, Natasha, and shake those pebbles. <laughs> oh, dear. How close is this competition shaping up to be? Three tenths of a second between the top three. Brilliant. This is Martin Reed again with Snooze, the Border Collie, three years old. So, Martin. Next to go, Martin Reed and Snooze. Young dog with a great future, just three years of age. 34. Point three, the best so far, and of course, no faults. Snooze will not be able to close his eyes here. He's got to be flat out of focus and sadly picking up five faults over the spread there. Just clip the end of it. See it around through in a bit of hesitation as well. Just going, repeating over at the seesaw. And that's so we so often see one little mistake and then another one quickly follows, Graham. Well, uh, Martin's trying to teach this dog. It had had the, a fault there and then it hadn't stopped on the seesaw when he'd asked it to, so he just reminded the dog that that was what he wanted. Uh, so, and again, just uh, knowing he couldn't win it. And there we go, just fractions, fractions. It's a border collie, four years old, the famous falcon of Mogwai's castle is the... Debbie Simons and Dobby, four-year-old Border Collie, first time at Crufts. Debbie just loves running Dobby, makes her laugh, enjoys our adventures together. A huge adventure about to unravel here in the next 30 seconds or so for Debbie and Dobby, the four-year-old Border Collie. And they are off and running. I think they have actually won the agility round this morning, so just so keep an eye on them, they've got some class. Uh, such a tight right-hander, but Dobby has negotiated it really well. Fine 15 seconds under their belts already, looking for more of the same in the second half. Again, another tight right-hander. Great style through the wheels. And they are right up with the clock, are Debbie and Dobby. Can they finish? Can they get inside? It has to go, you've got to get the job done here, and it's painful when they don't. There we go, just drifts the left, and it almost does this tire sideways. And then we come to the end, and Debbie just uh, hanging around just a little bit there. Sean Illingworth from West Sussex with Image, seven-year-old Border Collie. Very, very quick dog, his Image. Can be slightly careless on occasions, but will look to produce her very, very best form here. And that's a fine start to this round. 34. Oh, dear. Clip the end of the, of, uh, of the spread there. And sadly, sadly, we have a uh, elimination here to Sean Illingworth, who's been a fine competitor over the years, and Image as uh, <laughs> really trying to go so hard, one or two errors along the way, Graham. Great effort there by Sean. And there, over there, just drops the back legs onto it, taking the middle section out. Such a shame there for Sean. You're looking at Dan Shaw limbering up, last year's winner, second in the jumping this morning, and Geek, seven-year-old Border Collie, bronze medalist at the Worlds, a fine partnership, these two major contenders, and they're off. Dan from Oxford, with Geek. Good style, and Dan right up with Geek, right-hander as well. Crowd hushed and realizing they're seeing something pretty special here at the time. Looks very promising for Dan and for Geek. Clap hands to get more speed going through those wheels. It's going to be close. It's going to threaten the very best, this one. Tight turn at the top there. Through the tunnel. Hopping over those final two. 
it's going to be very, very close, and would you believe it? I said it would threaten the best. It's beaten the best so far. They have. Is he happy? Yeah. Dog's got its toy. The dog's happy. Uh, this pair over the last couple of years really have developed into a world-class partnership, and that's we've seen a world-class display. Great reaction as well. This is Ewan Patterson and Crazy, very, very quick, coming off a fantastic win in the International Invitational, a brilliant last run. There's one dog to go after this. And we're looking for an action replay of that brilliance from Ewan, from Stonehaven, north of the border, and from Crazy, the four-year-old Collie. 34.2 to beat. Keep your eyes on the clock. We will do our best to do that for you as well. Good early speed from Ewan and from Crazy. And again, that tight, twisting turn. And a bit of a sigh there, a bit of time loss there, but still going really well, and it's still clear. Great over the, over the seesaw. Another tight right-hander. How about those weaves? Quick, 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 quick. No time to lose. A-frame, up, down, great content at the end. Sharp right-hander. It's going to be close. It is going to be so close, this. Have a look at the clock. Have a look at the clock. 34.3. Oh, would you believe? Just outside. 34.3. Place 34.2. We warned you. Oh, wow, this is getting better and better. Another fabulous round there from Ewan. Just couldn't make it. Tenths of seconds, hundreds of seconds. Last dog, Dave Munnings. Single winners on Friday and fame, eight-year-old Border Collie. Fame has been an incredible dog. Not many more crufts left for fame. But will he give us something extra, extra special to complete the Agility Championship. 34.2 to beat, and they have to be clear as well. Won't happen. Pole down. Won't happen. Again, such a, such a tight target. Just pushing, and even someone as experienced as Dave just couldn't avoid knocking that pole over. Really quick, though. Have a look at the time. 33, 33.7. You just wonder what might have happened but that's not what it's about it what has happened Graham. that's what pressure does to you you just start to push you know you you've got to do it you've got to do it and just try to take it a touch never mind great partnership uh, well done we told you it was going to be intense it was dan shaw repeats his victory of last year with geek Second by just two hundredths of a second, Ewan Patterson, so close to repeating his triumph of yesterday with Crazy. And in third place, Natasha Wise, excellent as always with Pebbles.
We're delighted to be joined by Tony Orcock, OBE, the chairman of the Kennel Club, who will be assisting in presentation of and the And now awards. we have the presentations all, for like the Crufts Championship. And first of all, we're just now making a presentation to Jackie Gardner, our Crufts Championship judge, the greatest uh, honour that a judge can have in this country. And the presentations and have been made by to uh, Mr. Tony Orcock, OBE who is the chairman of the Kennel Club. Uh, and on the left-hand side, they have Mr. Martin Cavill, uh, who's been the I assistant like judge, done a fantastic job here. And in fact, Martin's actually going to be one of the judges for the uh, European Open Agility Championships, which are going to be held in GB later on this year. So we're going to start with the presentations to the small handlers and the, and the winner Okay, so on to the award of the, of the small championship, championship here at Crofts 2020. Taking the championship Crofts 2020 in is Lauren Langman is and Langman Blink. And Give it its official name, agility Sam champion. Sam Sire, Blink and Brilliant at Gem and Gem. Six-year-old working cocker spaniel. So Thank unlucky you. at the World Championships last year. Lost out on a medal by one hundredth of a second over two combined rounds. So well done to them. And Tony Alcock now presenting the runners-up prize to the reserve channel certificate to Mark Wingate Win and snazzy three-year-old working sheep dog. And we're going to see a lot more of that pairing uh, over the years, I can assure you. So now the medium championship winner is James Adam. Brilliant, brilliant round by him with his working cocker spaniel Willow, four years of age. Uh, and he's very happy. Look at that, the dog getting all the love. And the reserve challenge certificate goes to Shannon Springfield so with much. Gift, six year old Border Collie. You don't see that many Border Collies in medium. She's <laughs> done exceptionally well. And the winner of the large champ at Crafts 2020 is Dan Shaw and Geek. Geek is seven-year-old Border Collie, and they come from Oxford. Absolutely brilliant. And a very valiant runner-up, brilliant, brilliant competition. Ewan Patterson got it right this time. Crazy, the border, four-year-old Border Collie. What a fabulous, fabulous advert for British agility. Every year I'm amazed at just how good the standard is, Jim. Have you enjoyed it? Absolutely, just to wish you the best of luck with those Europeans when they come uh, to the UK later in the year. I know you're very involved with that. It's been an education for me, as always, to sit next to you, Graham, over the last few days. A reminder, the best in show night will continue for you wherever you are watching Crufts 2020. And uh, our final sight of, ag of agility was an absolute thriller. Thank you very much indeed for your company. This is uh, Graham Partridge and Jim Rosenthal signing off from Crux 2020. The agility this week has been out of this world, believe you me. Since 2007, the Kennel Club with the Kennel Club Charitable Trust has been running this most amazing series. And what we're about to see now are why dogs are just man's best friend and what they do for us. Because it is, ladies and gentlemen, now time for the Kennel Club Friends for Life 2020. Five amazing finalists, and the winner will be crowned very, very soon. Let's now have a look at the screen and those five incredible stories. I am PC Louise McMullen, and this here is uh, retired police dog Wolfie. I must have been knocked out, and my initial thoughts were, as I opened my eyes, was seeing the flames because the car had caught fire. I injured my uh, wrist, fractured eye socket, fractured jaw. I just knew I had to get him to the vets because I thought he would die. 
My name's Hayley and this is my dog Ellie. When it happened, it just felt like my world had just fallen apart. I just thought, I just can't do life without her. Ellie stepped up straight away afterwards. She was my rock and she just followed me everywhere. When I'm training with her, it's like I forget about everything around me. She just gave me something to aim for in life. I owe Ellie my life because she's just one incredible dog. I'm Sean Laidlaw and this is my rescue dog, Barry. I took a contract out in Syria to disarm bombs out there. There was this kind of concrete plinth, and that's where Barry was, just kind of caught in there. To try and get a dog out was really difficult. Um, so we actually ended up smuggling her inside of a fruit basket. When I come home, everyone was saying, oh, it's great that you've rescued Barry, and there was no way that I rescued her. She definitely rescued me. Um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. I'm Lindsay Uglo. I'm the lead therapy dog handler of the team that visits Southampton Children's Hospital. All of what we do comes under animal assisted intervention and it's all about keeping the child with a, a positive thought process. They give them something other than, than the healthcare environment to think about and we are the bridge between the healthcare team and the, the child. I'm Graham Sage and this is my hearing dog, Jovi. The boys love having them in the classroom, I must admit. Yeah, and they just have that sort of family feel when they're in the classroom. I've never had a, a dog quite like Jovi before. He is definitely one of a kind. There they are, ladies and gentlemen. Give them a very big round now, of applause. This is the I'm most fine, emotive of all of our events here Friends at Cross 2020, 2020, the final of the Friends for Life competition. This competition celebrates the unique relationship that people have with their dogs and the role that man's best friend plays in our lives. Here are some interviews with the five finalists. Yeah, 100%. And he made a full recovery. Yes, he did. Um, he did make a full recovery and went back to work, but then unfortunately uh, he had PTSD, so that's how I retired him. And he lives with you now, doesn't he? Yes, he does, yes. Is he just amazing with, it, with your other dogs? Yeah, he gets on really well with them, yeah. Well done, good luck. Ladies and gentlemen, Louise and Wolfie. Um, unbelievable story. Chasing armed robbers, and the first thought was for Wolfie. Hayley. Hayley, just how much has she made to you? Oh, she's just my life, and she just helped me piece my life back together after my sister died. And you were telling me earlier, out, out there in the collecting ring, that she's still helping you day by day by day. Yeah, even when I have a bad day, she just helps me get out of bed and just carry on with life. And what's she made of crafts? She loves it. She's such a people dog, so this is her paradise. She's a bit tired tonight, though, isn't she? Yeah, she's had a busy couple of days. She's been here since Friday, haven't you, Ellie? Yeah. Oh, you're just gorgeous. Thank you. Well done. Good luck, Hayley. Give her a round of applause. Well done. Now, smuggled out in a fruit basket. Found in a, a bombed-out building in Syria. Sean and Barry, absolutely brilliant. Uh, she, she's still <laughs> full of... <laughs> With full of energy. Just how difficult was it to get her out? Uh, pardon the pun, but it was a minefield. The, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Hello, Barry! Can... Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Thanks a lot. Quiet. She's what? She's not very quiet. So... Oh, never a guest. <laughs> oh. To smuggle her out was an issue. To, to what? To smuggle her out was kind of an issue where she's not quiet. She's very boisterous. Really? A yeah, little bit, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Good luck tonight. Oh, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Good luck, Barry. <laughs> Lindsay and Leo. I know this personally, and I believe you me, I do, and I'm just choking up a bit here. The difference that these dogs do for the children in Southampton, it's absolutely incredible, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a massive privilege for us to be able to share the human-animal bond in hospital. And uh, we see some remarkable things and some, some wonderful things. The smiles that go on those children's, children's faces in, in that incredible intensive care 
area in Southampton is unbelievable, isn't it? Yes, I mean, and if we can get any response, whether it's a finger moving or something, if there's a child is paralyzed, it's hugely uh, rewarding for us, but it's a real breakthrough for the parents and for the team around them. Well done. Good luck. You're amazing. I know that firsthand. And Graham and Jovi. Graham, when you lost your sight, let, first of all, what did Jovi and you make of the rugby yesterday? <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he enjoyed coming to watch me play um, and obviously enjoyed supporting the rest of the England deaf size. Um, I think, though, he'd probably prefer to play with a tennis ball so he could get involved and show me what to do. And does Jovi go, you, go with you every day to Molesford School? He does, yeah, yeah, every day, yeah, and the boys love it. The boys certainly love it, don't they? And what, just tell me in one sentence what difference he made. He gave you your confidence back, didn't he? He has, yeah, massively. Um, you know, I wouldn't be doing something like this without, without him, so, yeah, I can't, I'm, it's all down to him. Good luck, Graham and Jovi, ladies and gentlemen. And so, ladies and gentlemen, delighted to welcome the man who's got the golden envelope, James Middleton, to join us and accompanied by the chairman of the Kennel Club but Charitable Trust, the Reverend Bill King. James, uh, come forward. We were talking earlier tonight, just an incredible selection, an incredible difference that dogs make for us. No, dogs are incredible, and I think, you know, I've said it before, but dogs are changing lives, but they're also saving lives. And through the hundred of app hundreds of applications that came through, just these five here are really just a small percentage of what dogs can do for people. And I think everybody here has been incredible. Their stories are moving in their own right. And, um, and although this envelope might have a winner, I think actually everybody who entered is, is a winner. So I think um, well done for everybody. Absolutely. 32,908 votes. James, read us the envelope. The Kennel Club 2020 Friends for Life winner is Lindsay and Leo. Lindsay and Leo. They're all winners, and the voting was exceptionally close. A wonderful glass bowl, Bill King from the Charitable Trust comes forward, and the Friends for Life Trophy 2020 to Lindsay and Leo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, James. Thank you, Bill. Going to congratulate all our finalists. Since 2007, we have been bringing the magic of Friends for Life. Mind it, mind up, Bill. <laughs> I wouldn't get close. Whoa, <laughs> Billy. Yeah, Ladies and gentlemen, led off by Louise and Wolfie. They're all Friends for Life. Let's give them a huge round of applause. It is Laugh of Honor time. <laughs> Louise and Wolfie, Hayley and Ellie, Sean and Barry, Lindsay and Leo, and Gavin and Jody, give them a cheer. Come on, you know you want to. The winner there of the Friends for Life competition at Crufts 2020, as voted for by you, Lindsay and Leo. Now it's time for the new feature we've had for you this year at here, Crufts Extra. There's so much more to Crufts than just what you see here in the main arena. In fact, we've got five halls filled with competitions, demonstrations and stalls, all dedicated to all things dog. Here's Scarlett Maffert, who's been behind the scenes. Oh, so gorgeous. It's got no eyes, it's, it's so cute. It's so beautiful. Oh. Is this your first time at Crufts then? Or? Yeah, I'm on the rescue stand and we're ready for the money for the Boston Rescue. Oh, that's amazing. Um, yeah. You are so cute. So I am here at the famous Crufts sign with the famous Jack and Lewis. <laughs> Lewis are Olympic divers. Yep. 
I'm sort of the Olympics for dogs. Yeah, pretty yeah. much, yeah, yeah. Is this your first time here? Yeah, this is my first time here, yeah. I've been before when I was younger. Oh, nice. But can't really remember much, so I'm excited to do it again now and so it all in. And you just get to do it together, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. really nice, are, yeah. are you dog owners? Yes, so we've got a little uh, short-legged Jack Russell called Stanley. Oh, He's nice. one year old. Uh, and then in my family, we've got two massive lurchers. Um, so we've got little and large, which is, <laughs> is really, really nice. Yeah. See, I've got a chihuahua and a shih tzu, so I'm um, okay, just toy little dogs. Ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So here's some advice. Discover dogs here is amazing. There's like 221 breeds of dogs that you just go meet. Wow. And you yeah. get to just cuddle that them and stroke them. <laughs> that sounds amazing. It, it is like, so obviously you are competitors. What advice would you give to the dogs? <laughs> invest in short okay. today. Okay. Yeah, well, obviously our sport's all about, you know, remaining calm and concentrated. So I'd say probably if I had to give some advice to a dog, I'd say, you know, keep focused, keep calm, <laughs> keep your chin up. <laughs> all the good advice. What, what, what advice would you give to the um, dogs? I think just enjoy it. It could be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so they just need to enjoy it, soak it all in, and, yeah, just love it. <laughs> that is good advice. Thank you. No problem. Go on, enjoy discovering Thank dogs. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I am here at the Cruft stand. Let's go shopping with Scarlett Moffat. Right, straight away, little armchair cover. That means that when Bonnie gets on the couch, it's not going to be covered in slaver and dog dirt. <gasps> and this as well, what's this? I did the keep your car doors protected. For... Yeah, I'll have one of them. Little car door protectors. Oh, even though this is slightly bigger than my dog, Bonnie, as she's a chihuahua, I'm going to get this as a tea, the toy. <gasps> and this. Everyone needs a chicken in the life. Oh, what's over here? Yeah? Oh, sorry. Oh. <gasps> how posh are these? No. Be honest. How posh is your pooch if it has the Kennel Club dog balls? I'm going to get one of these. Do you need one for water as well? <sighs> Let's see what else we can find. Uh, there is so much stuff in here. <gasps> oh. Look at this. Memorabilia, Mem Crufts 20, that's not even for me dog, that's just for me. Oh, and a colouring book. Everyone loves colouring in, don't they? Right, well that's one stand done out of 500, on to the next one. I am here with the amazing Dave and Finn, who are not just heroes, Friends for Life winners, but also law changers. Yeah, well, he's a law changer. I'm just his chauffeur. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're being modest there. Do you, because no one else can tell the story better than you, do you want to tell us all about Finn's story? Yeah, so Finn and I were police dog team for seven years on the street, uh, and as he was coming towards the end of his career, uh, we went to an incident, the same as any other, but it went a little bit wrong at the end. Uh, when we caught up with the guy, he... Um, decided he wanted to get away and he was, he was going to use a knife to do it. He stabbed Finn through the chest, uh, then he went to attack me and even though Finn had horrendous injuries at that point, uh, he put himself in the way and, and said, I wouldn't be talking to you today if it wasn't for Finn. And honestly, it makes me want to cry. And no. the, the upsetting thing is that that man would have only in the court of law, it would have literally just been criminal damage? Yeah, well, he did actually go to court for criminal damage and he was found guilty, but he got nothing for it. And that's what really made us sort of set about to make change, to bring in a law specifically for service animals. So my pet curled up in front of the fire at home has more protection in law than Finn did when he was working. You've been to the police dog stand here, you know, more protection than, than they do when they're working. So that's why we set about uh, trying to change the law and bring in Finn's law. Because it's not just criminal damage, and it's rightly so, it is now being changed so that Finn is seen the same as a police officer. That's right, yeah. It's, um, you know, if we're going to use these animals for the, for the work we do, and I think we should because they're absolutely yeah. phenomenal, there's nothing that can do what they do, then it's only right that we protect them. Um, and Finn's law goes some way towards protecting them, at least making sure that if something does go wrong, that people are punished. Yep, and rightly so. And in 2019, last year, you were here at Crufts because yes. you were finalists for Friends we for were. Life and then won it. We were. Absolutely incredible experience. Probably one of the best experiences in our life. And, of course, what that helped us do and what Crufts and the Kennel Club helped us to do was to raise more awareness about these guys, about this breed and about Finn's Law and Finn's Law Part 2. Yeah, so tell us about Finn's Law Part 2. So Part 2 is... Um, in order to get Finn's law, it had to sit in the Animal Welfare Act, which is a great piece of legislation, but the penalties involved are only a maximum of six months. That, which... I, like, I can't even 
because my dog is my family. Yeah, your life. So if someone was to just get six months of hurting them, I, I would be so well, angry. For the worst neglect and cruelty that you could ever imagine. So we're, Fins World Part 2 is asking the government, politely, to, to increase the sentences from uh, a maximum of six months to a, a maximum of five years, which is much, much better. Of course, yeah. Yeah, so we just need people to contact their MPs politely uh, and ask them to get behind Finn's, uh, Finn's campaign, Finn's Law Part 2. He'll be in Parliament a few times over the next few months so they can come and have their selfies and just, yeah, just help us spread the word. So that's how people will do it. So, the, so is there anywhere that they can go online to find out more information? Yeah, or? so Finn's on uh, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and his name is the same, K9Finn, so the letter K9 Finn. Uh, there's also fabulousfin.com and all the information you need is, is on there. Yeah, and hopefully there. we'll get uh, much tougher sentences for these nasty acts. Yeah, definitely. Because these guys are important. Of when you won Friends for Life, how, how would you sum up that feeling? Oh my goodness. Well, if you watch the video, I burst into tears straight away <laughs> in front of millions of people. But it was just the most incredible experience to be here at Crufts, at the, you know, the, 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 the dog show in the world, and to win Friends for Life is, is incredible. I know there's another police dog in there today, uh, and I got my fingers firmly crossed for Wolf. So that's Louise, um, isn't it? That's it, yeah. Louise and Wolf. Who I actually and they got a spoke lovely to, story. it's amazing, it's yeah. such a lovely story. And Wolf and Finn actually look alike. I think they might be distant, distant, distant relatives, because they're from the same force. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, thank you, and thank no, you thank still you. for all of the hard work that you do to keep us safe. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Go and check that out. I recognise that man there. I said I would bring your exclusives. That is Mr. Arena itself, Mr. Nick Brooksward. Come with me. Hello, Nick. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm really good. Good to see you. You are the top dog here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very apt. So how long have you been Mr Arena? Well, about the last 15 years. That is amazing. It's bonkers, isn't it? It is barking mad. <laughs> it is totally barking mad. <laughs> so what is this room you So where on? you are now is the collecting ring. This is where everybody comes in before they go into the big ring, into the main arena. So this is, like, really exclusive. This is totally and utterly exclusive. Yep. It's really heavily guarded by the NEC team. Uh, and nobody can get in here unless they've got the correct passes so it's, See, it's bringing your exclusives here with mr really arena exclusive. <laughs> so in here at the moment if you look over there scarlett you've got the royal air force they've just been in then the west midlands police they're in the far corner they're on at the moment then you've got the fly ball getting ready here in a moment in a couple of minutes couple of hours time this will be full of all the group judging with the working in the pastorals and the international junior handlers it never stops in here it you is. know, there's probably five or six hundred people in here there's at any one a, time. There's such a buzz around here as well. A huge buzz. Well. I mean, there's eight and a half thousand people sitting in there at the moment. It is, it is unreal, and the atmosphere as soon as you walk it's in electric, there. It's electric, isn't it? And I can't even imagine how they're feeling right now. I bet they've got butterflies in the stomach. Well, certainly the fly ball lot are, because today is the deciding factor as to who goes through to tomorrow's grand final. So they've got to go well today to make it through to tomorrow's final. So they're a bit nervous, aren't they? That is. Well, I'm going to go and watch that. Thank you so much, Nick. Lovely Thank to see you. Have I know a great you're day. super busy. Thank you. This is the beautiful Tom, who is an Irish setter. So what group would Tom belong in? Tom is a gun dog. And as you'll see from his lovely soft mouth, great for carrying game and working, really, really good sense of smell. And as you'll see, he's also got a wonderful temperament. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> This is the very handsome Chance. Do you want to explain a little bit about Chance? Okay, Chance is a Bichon Frise, a nice. member of the toy group Aww. and a dog that would have traditionally been in very, very nice households of ladies. So you really have to have the time to care for this wonderful coat. <laughs> I mean, he has better hair than me, to be fair. And me. <laughs> This is Kimmy, who's a beautiful Akita. Do you want to explain a little bit about what group Kimmy belongs in? Yes, absolutely. So as an Akita, Kimmy is in the utility group, Scarlet. And this is a group of, of breeds that don't traditionally sit in any of the other groups. With, you know, we've had the hunters and the working dogs. So the utility breeds are mostly breeds that have had their relationship as companions with people in the home oh. but some of them do have some other purpose in history now most of them are all companions and as you can see in the case of kimmy a lovely one so cute <laughs> 
This is the beautiful and very lively Fallon. Do you want to explain a little bit about Fallon? Yeah, so Fallon is a Samoyed and they are a pastoral breed. So as you can see, she's got lots of energy. She's constantly alert and you really, really have to understand the history of these breeds. So with in ca case of Fallon as a Samoyed, she would have originally been used for deer herding. She's very, very lively, very alert. And <laughs> ones that you definitely need to be suitable for. <laughs> I can, yeah, I can imagine Fallon deer herding, actually. I can imagine that. <laughs> this is a beautiful Rottweiler called, are you ready for this? Stinky. The cutest name for the cutest dog. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And he is a Rottweiler and that places him in the working group. And like many of his companions in that group, these are not small dogs. Yeah. <laughs> All of these dogs were built and made for a purpose. You can see the level of muscle and, and the size of his head. These are big dogs with a big purpose. And they've traditionally worked really, really hard in a lot of different roles. This dog actually though, Scarlett, just shows the multi-purpose nature of dogs. He competes in obedience. And as you can see, he's so relaxed and settled. Yeah. And I'm sure his owners are very proud. Yes, Stinky, <laughs> he's so cute. So I have an exclusive, ladies and gentlemen. I am here with the world's greatest dog. This is Dylan, who won Best in Show across 2019. He's kind of a big deal round here. He's used to all of these cameras, all of the attention. He's like the Brad Pitt of the dog world. So he is a papillon, which is butterfly in French, and I think he'll agree he is as beautiful as a butterfly. I don't even think he's been through that ugly caterpillar stage. I mean, his hair's nicer than mine, and I'm not ashamed to admit that. Just how... I, I need to know, and I think everyone who has a dog at home will want to know, how do you get your dog to be as beautiful as Dylan? And to just be, to be best in short, well, Kathleen is here to give us all of the info. Kathleen? Hi Scarlett, Hi. hello, how are you? Yeah, I'm really good. So you were the proud owner of Dylan? I am, I am. What, what was it like to win Best in Show? Oh, it was amazing. It's like, for us dog show people, it's like the ultimate dream. So to win Best in Show at Crafts is, it's, I'll remember forever. Oh, how, how do you even start to, to groom? Dylan to become best in show. How does it? How will I make my dog? Well, I think like there's, there's the four factors. The first factor is genetics. Uh, they have their looks, they have the way they are built, and have their coats. The second is for sure good food. Third is good shampoo. Yeah, what shampoo does he use? He's using a, a brand called Chris Christensen. The absolute best for me and. and it smells nice, it feels nice. And, can and can it, I use it on my own hair? Because for I, sure. Because I'm, I'm, I'm using it on yeah, mine. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, like, both of your hair is beautiful. I often run out of shampoo, and I, I always have dog shampoo, so it <laughs> happens often that I, I'm smelling like dogs. <laughs> and what was the fourth? The fourth is passion. So you need the passion to, like, Aww. yeah. First, the love for the dog and the passion to, yeah, take care of them 34 7, 7 days a week and 24 hours a day. This is my first time in Crofton, like, it's just, all of the dogs are so beautiful, but yours yeah. has the trophy to prove it. Yeah, super. <laughs> Happy you're enjoying. <laughs> so I have always wanted to be able to handle dogs. I've always wanted to be able to dog handle, and now I'm going to be cheeky and ask you to teach me, because then I am learning from the best. Is that okay? Okay, let's do it. Yes. Let me show you how we okay. do a straight up and down. Yeah. So just ask the dog's attention. Nila. Nila. You give it a go. If you have this and you yeah. have the attention, he will do fine. Okay. Right, come on Dylan, we've got this, haven't yeah. we? Okay. Than it looks. I think I think we did perfect wow. there, Dylan. <laughs> you were super. What are you doing on March 12th next year? Oh, I don't know. You're my handler next year. <laughs> this is an honour. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually more. It is difficult. More
difficult than it looks. Oh, well, it's quite if you do it a lot as a habit and you have a good bond with the dog, I was gonna, it gets better. Yeah, it's because like yeah. Dylan's like your best friend. Yeah. So I think if I did it with my dog Bonnie, it would be fabulous. Yeah, you are natural. And then can I ask a question? You yeah. know how you hold the lead mm -hmm. up quite high. Is there any particular reason why you do that? Or? Well, the reason why I do it with this, without putting tension on the leash, it's the best way to still have control and to be in touch with the dog over the leash. Uh, so if they would like smell the carpet or like see something get distracted. And then you easily can I would not say correct but like can guide them through the leash to do whatever I'm you want to them start to do. do that. Thank you for it. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you Dylan. It's been fantastic having Scarlett with us this year, going behind the scenes for Crufts Extra. And we hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. Now, if you're just joining us, this is Best in well, Show Day at Crufts 2020. You know, and here's what we've got coming up for you. In a few moments, we'll have the Young Kennel Club Stakes Finals. And then it's on to our final two groups. We've got Terriers, 10 past six, Hound Group at seven o'clock. Then a couple of displays for you, West Midlands Police Dogs and an Action Award of the Year. Finally, half past eight, the moment we've all been waiting for, we will find out who is crowned best in show at Crufts 2020. Over 100 dogs entered for this event at Crufts 2020. And from if you're just joining us, we're coming to you live from the main arena where it's time for the Young Kennel Club Stakes Finals. I'm joined in the commentary booth by Frank Kane. Welcome, Frank. Thank you. So this competition is a best in show, if you like, for Young Kennel Club members. So we will see seven group finalists, one for each group, just like we will for the best in show later. The only difference is that the handlers are aged between 6 and 24. So here is our judge, Barbara Muller, over from Switzerland for the competition. She's an all-round judge, well equipped to put all seven of these dogs through their paces. And of course they've already won their respective group under them earlier today or over the last four days and now they're coming into the final and we'll see who will take the prize. It's a really similar process to qualifying in the normal breed. So here we have our first finalist, utility winner. This is Francesca and Teddy the Skipper Key, representing the utility group. And now coming into the ring is the winner from the toy group. This is the Bichon Frise. And there's Isabel with Pippin, the Bichon Frise. From the Gun Dog Group, we have Georgia and Nancy, an English Springer Spaniel. The working group, represented by the Siberian And here is the Husky. Siberian Husky with Paige. From the pastoral group, the Sarah and Collie. Dylan, the Border Collie here, representing the pastoral group. From today's judging, the Terrier group winner, the Wire Fox. A lovely Wire Fox Terrier here, Zephyr, with his owner, Poppy. And last but not least, our Hound And the last group of our winner, finalists, representing the Hound group, we've got Erin and Judy. Pitit, Bassett, Griffon, Bondion. So our judge has already judged these dogs outside of the ring, so she will probably move them up and down, take one final look before crowning the winner of the Young Kennel Club Stakes Final for 2020. It's a huge honour for these young handlers to be in the Best in Show ring here today, and many of them will aspire to be back here for the main competition in the future, won't they, Frank? Yes, and, and the, the qualifier for this is that the, the dogs have to be owned by them or by their parents to, to join the uh, Young Kennel Club competition here. And they qualify at events held at championship shows throughout the year. Then they come here, compete on their group day, and if they win through, they get to come into here for the final. And this is not a handling competition, the judges judging the dogs. Yes, we saw the international junior handlers in here yesterday, and there we are judging the handling, but this is very much about the confirmation and movement of the dogs. 
So I think Judge is just going to move the dogs up and down. Judge just checking on the movement. She's going to send them up and down and then round the ring, looking at the fore and rear movement and the profile movement. So here we have utility group winner. This is Francesca, Teddy the Skipper Key. Little Belgian barge dog. She'll be compact, wedge-shaped head and smartly pricked ears. This cape of hair over the neck and the culottes at the back of the back legs makes it a very smart, distinctive outline of the breed. That jet black coat there. Lovely contrast with the red on the handler. He's gonna, she's gonna go round to the end. And it's a brisk, smart action wanted in the breed. Moving and really nicely there. And Francesca looking very composed in this big ring she atmosphere. Is, isn't she? Thousands <laughs> in the audience tonight, so uh, it's a big ordeal for the nerves. A big circuit for her. So really making the most of the ring, and why not? So the second of our finalists. So that lovely skipper key there, moving out really well in the big ring. And here's the little Bichon Frise with Isabel. This is Pippin. Now, we've seen a Bichon win the group, haven't we? The toy group here, going through to Best in Show later. Could there be an omen in this one, perhaps? Maybe, yes, if this may one see. wins, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> Again, the this toy breed, the Bichon Frise, the Bichon Frise means corkscrew curls in the coat. Soft and silky with little loose curls. Dark pigmentation on its nose and eye rims give it this lovely, warm expression. The tail carried up over the back. Judge looking for parallel movement there from the front and rear. These handlers probably do compete in junior handling as well, which is why they're making such good use of the mm. ring. And Pippin's quite unfazed by it as well. He's <laughs> very sedate in his movement and carriage. There is Pippin representing the toy group. So now we have the English Springer Spaniel. This is Nancy with her handler, Georgia, and they're representing the Gun Dog so Group. Now, the really striding out. That's very good English Springer movement. This clean, long stride in front, very good top line, and a very good head with a soft expression. Lovely silky coat. This one, a liver and white. And you can see the, the bond between handler and dog it's here. The dog lovely. looking up at the handler, wanting to please. Yeah, it's so important that these young people have that rapport with their dogs. So there's the English Springer Spaniel representing the Gun Dog Group in that the YKC Stakes that's Final. That's in very good form. The next of our finalists representing the Working Group. So this is Paige and Lexi, the Siberian Husky. The fastest of the Arctic the sled dogs. Fit for function with this weatherproof coat, long tail, a degree of elegance with the long legs. They're light and they, were, they could haul loads over long distances. And we can see that on the move, can't we? These dogs should be able to go all day. Light on the feet, endurance. And Another red suit there, contrasting lovely against that dog. And the handler taking the good dog at just the right pace to show off its movement and top line. So Paige and Lexi, the Siberian Husky there, the finalists from the working group. And the judge now looking at the border, the border collie with Sarah. He's one from the pastoral group. And the dog is called Dylan. This one, long haired variety. These are workman like dogs bred for herding. Again, another breed which has to be fit for function. We'll see the very typical breed movement as it goes round, just dropping the head a little bit lower, that rather stealthy stride and movement. And makes them fit for purpose, allows them to herd sheep. 
Just getting a little bit excited there, but the handler very experienced, just pulling back down to a trot. So there we have Dylan, the Border Collie, the finalist for the pastoral group. Again, willing to please, looking it up, up at the handler. Our next finalist, Poppy and Zephyr, a wire fox terrier. These judged today, representing the terrier group here in the YKC Stakes Finals. A uh, very smart as paint wire fox terrier. They make such good show dogs. That, that eagerness, alert expression, that tail. And beautifully trimmed, we can see the crisp wire coat, lovely shaping of the dog to show off its outline, a long neck, a short back, a high set tail, and a very good stride for a wire fox terrier here. Full of, anim out. full of animation, yes. Just, just a little fast perhaps, but uh, we're looking at the dog here. And he's going very well. Lovely outline there on the move. So there we have Zephyr, the wire fox terrier, representing the terrier group. And here is the, sm the smallest of the, uh, the ha one of the hounds, the Basset family, the Petit Basset Griffin Von Dien, and looks like the youngest handler here. This is Erin, and she's handling her Petit Basset Griffin Von Dien, who's called Judy. So as we said, handlers in here anywhere between the ages of 6 and 24, they must be members of the Young Kennel Club. And if you're watching and thinking that you would love to do this with your dog, head online and you can find out how to join. It's a fantastic organisation. All kinds of competitions for young people and their dogs, not just pedigree dogs. Crossbreeds are more than welcome in almost all the competitions. And this is another breed which loves the show ring. They always put on a good show, moving out freely. Very smart dogs, really eye-catching. Tail lashing, all these dogs and their handlers really enjoying themselves here. Not being hurried, sign of a good handler. So as we said, fantastic achievement for these young handlers. This is their equivalent of best in show. All of them have put a near poor perfect performance, haven't they, Frank? Yeah, absolutely, they've put on good show, handlers and dogs. Now, the decision for Barbara Muller is going to be a difficult one. Just taking one last look. Who is she going to go for? Oh, it's a lovely border collie from the pastoral group. That's Sarah and Dylan. Yes. The <laughs> Fantastic achievement for them. Now, who's going to be in the reserves? Oh, oh, oh young the little Petit, yes. <laughs> wow. She's going to be floating home tonight, isn't she? That's a day to remember, and I hope all her schoolmates are watching her on I television. Yes. yes. So, as we said, all of those handlers done so well to get here into the big ring, and just before Best in Show, the atmosphere in here is electric. They'll remember this for years to come. Presentation now. There's Ben Ashcroft. Mr. Ben Ashcroft, the Young Kennel Club president. Presenting the trophy there to well our winner, done, Sarah, Sarah and Dylan, Dylan, the Border Collie. The border collie. And thank you very much to our judge, Mrs. Barbara the Miller. Reserve there. It's Erin and Judy, the Petit Bassett Griffon Bondian. It's the youngest handler in the competition, young Erin with Judy, the Petit Bassett Griffon Bondian. So let's see them go round for one more time. Time for a lap of, a lap of honour now. For the winners of the a lovely YPC border collie. Finals. Winner Sarah of the 2020 Dylan. Young Kennel Club and Stakes Erin Finals. Sarah and Dylan and reserve Erin and Judy. And it's a nice way to start the show proceedings for the evening, it isn't is. it? It is. It's a kind of a warm-up best in show, yes. isn't it? Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the climax of today's competition. Well, this is the final day of Crafts 2020. Just two more groups to be judged to provide the seven finalists to compete for Best in Show later this evening. The first of tonight's groups to be judged is the Terrier Group. It's my pleasant duty to introduce our Terrier Group judge. A 
Now we're just a couple of hours away from best in show, so it's time for judging of our sixth group, the Terriers. I'm judged by Frank Kane in the commentary box for this one, and we're just welcoming our judge, Mr. Tom Johnston from Scotland, into the ring. Tom judges breeds across all seven groups, but he's a Terrier specialist, isn't he, Frank? He is. He's had um, several breeds of Terriers, starting with Border Terriers, but now he's gone on to Gun Dogs as well, very successful with Vizsla and Welsh Springer Spaniels and flat coated retrievers. And how will you be feeling, Frank? Well, how do you feel when you're there? At, at this stage, nervous. <laughs> Until you get the dogs in, then you can focus away from yourself and on the dogs. Yes, I bet you feel all eyes are on you now. Yeah, you feel much better when you see the first dog. And he, here comes the first dog. It's the Airedale Terrier. The Australian Terrier. So the Terrier group is made up of dogs that were originally bred and used for hunting vermin. The, the term the Terrier comes from the Latin terra, which means earth. And there's a huge diversity for size, and shape and coat, and he's one of the very special shape, the Bedlington. Lamb-like, and the little border there. And now the Bull Terrier. Uh, one of the heavyweights of the group here, the first, the Brendan White. A tail lashing. So these are a hardy collection of dogs, bred to be brave and tough when they're pursuing now fox, the badger, terrier. rat, otter, both above and below ground. One of the Scottish terrier breeds, the Cairn here. The terrier. And a lot of these breeds do originate, don't they, in the UK, Frank? Yes, they, we were the terrier country who yeah. developed the hunting <laughs> and going to ground. Uh, and here's another one with a distinctive top line, the Dandy Dinmont Terrier. And that face. Now here comes the smooth fox terrier. First of the fox terriers. They're always smart, on the tiptoe of expectation, the these terriers. Terrier. And the wire variety. The Glenavidimal terrier. One of the smaller breeds. This one's on the vulnerable breeds list, isn't it, Frank? Yes, but very heavily made and a native of Ireland. Now we see the Irish Terrier. The daredevil dog. That red coat gave them the nickname, the didn't Russell it? Terrier. Oh, big cheer there. One of the newer breeds to be recognised. The Kerry Blue Terrier. Always full of running. It's called Lightning on a lead. The <laughs> We've got 27 dogs in this group, haven't we, Frank? 27 Mass breeds, and uh, over the last few days, about 2,300 terriers, and now we're down to the last the 27. Terrier. Another big cheer there, the little Norfolk. And here we see the Norwich Terrier. Close relation, the Norwich. This one's the, the prick eared variety, Russell isn't terrier. it? Set it apart. And the Parson Russell, one of the Fox Terriers. The Scottish Terrier. So our judge just taking very first look at these dogs on the move before he sees them stood. And his now first view of them going terrier. across him sees their profile and outline. The Sky Terrier. Wonderful coat. This will get the prize for the longest dog in the group. Yes. <laughs> the soft coated Wheaton Terrier. Another Irish breed. Big fan club here for that one as well, by the look of it. Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Biggest big, entry. Big cheers for this Staffy. Always popular. Now here comes the Welsh Terrier. Lovely little Welsh there. Really alert. And finally, the West Highland White Terrier. 90 West Highland Whites here today, and this is our best of breed winner. So that's the last of our best of breeds you over to Jonathan entering Dorsey the ring. And now hand you over to Jonathan for the Terrier Group commentary. Thank you very much, Graham. So, welcome to this exciting Terrier Group on the final day of Crubs. And to our judge, Tom Johnson, whilst he takes a first look at the whole group, we're going to talk a little about the origins of the 27 dogs. 
So our judge now just down, taking his first look at the dogs stacked, taking a look at the outlines, how well they match their breed standard. And as you said, Frank, really varied group here, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. He looks at the smooth-coated heavyweight bull terrier and the miniature, the rugged cairn there, shown on a loose lead, then the very special trim of the Chesky Terrier and the outline of the Dandy. All of them have their own breed traits, and that's what the judge is doing. He's going to measure them against their breed standard to see which is closest to perfection. And is it difficult to do that, Frank? Is it difficult to, to switch from one standard to the next in such a short space of time? Well, a judge should have in his head the, the details of type for the breed. Oh, this is a smartest paint. Look at that trim on that. So many of these breeds are hand-stripped, aren't they, to, to keep the coat in condition? Yes, yes. It's a, a real art to do it. A time-consuming <laughs> art to do it. <laughs> and of course, that's why many of the terrier breeds have fallen out of popularity, because they take quite a lot of work in trimming. So that's why they've gone down, and many of them are vulnerable native breeds now. A great pity. Part of our social heritage. And there is the distinctive outline of the Airedale, the king of the terriers. This was developed in Yorkshire, first shown at Ilkley Show in 1876 as a riverside terrier. They used to work on riverbanks to keep down the vermin, including otter. But they've been hugely versatile with the army, serving as messenger dogs and ambulance dogs in the world wars. Famous Keithy Crack won at the Kennel Club Show in 1884, and two years on in 1886, the breed gained separate classes. Often called the king of the terriers, this one, a dog who's just 17 months old, this is only his third so show. So real, real, real performance terrier. to get to here. And it comes from a famous kennel in uh, Cannock, the Seridan Kennel, who've had best in show at Grubbs with another terrier breed. So they're very experienced terrier breeders. Judge looking for the legs moving straight forward, the tail carried high, and that distinctive, harsh, dense, wiry coat. The Airedale Terrier there. Our next best of breed, the Australian Terrier, developed from native British Terriers which were taken to Australia by settlers in the early 19th century. The Scottish, Skye and Cairn are all believed to have played a part in its development and it was used to keep down rodents and other vermin in new settlements. It should be sturdy, low set and longer than it is high with that harsh coat and rough around the neck. And these are one of the longer of the terrier breeds. They've got some length of the back. This one, a red. So you judged this one, didn't you, Frank? What, what makes it special? Well, it's got the breed type in the length of the body, the, the fine, hard coat, this lovely wedge-shaped head, and sharp, pricked ears, full of terrier spirit. The Australian terrier there. And the Bedlington Terrier, developed in the Northumberland town of Bedlington, where it was very popular with the miners. It was a mining town, and they had the Bedlington for their hobbies. And they used to race them and also perhaps go poaching with them. They used to be called the Rothbury Terrier, and they have this distinctive outline with this arch over the loin. It's thought that the Whippet had some part in its in heritage. That distinctive long head and coat are often said to give it a lamb-like appearance. This one, another youngster, just 16 months old, here from Scotland today. Now we see the special trim on the ears. There was a little tassel of hair at the end, and this is a, was for protecting them against rats or other vermin when they were doing their job. On the move, we're looking for a distinctive mincing action, which isn't used to describe many breeds, is it, Fran? No, it should have a <laughs> light lift to it, and it should retain the top line on the move. The Bedlington Terrier there. Now we turn our attention to the Border Terrier. They were judged today by Judge Simon Jackson 
The borders of Scotland and Northumberland gave the breed of Border Terrier its name in around 1880. It assisted on hunts by driving foxes from their hiding places. It's capable of following a horse and should combine activity and gameness. The head is otter-like with a broad skull and short muzzle. But it existed in the borders around Westmoreland and Northumberland. The Border Terrier was very well established as a purebred dog long before it came to the show ring and the first breed standards emphasised this and said it's essentially a working terrier and so it has remained, workmanlike, still capable of fulfilling its job. It's interesting, isn't it, Frank, when they're judging Border Terriers, you should be able to hand span around the, the ribs, the chest, shouldn't you? Yes, they shouldn't be too broad. The, the judge will span the ribs and lift them up to see that they are spannable and a thick double coat and thick skin for protection. The Border Terrier there. And there is the Brendan White Bull Terrier. And this breed derives from a crossing of the Bulldog with the Terrier and was bred originally as a fighting dog in the early 1800s. Birmingham breeder James Hinks decided to improve the breed and use white English Terrier blood to improve them. And a little bit of Dalmatian in. And here he came up with this dog which is a bit more athletic. An interesting point in the development of this breed is that they were all originally white coloured, but in the 20s many of the white variety were found to be deaf, so the coloured varieties were introduced. This one, lots of substance, this broad chest, sturdy bone, and this egg-shaped head, one of these special breed features. They are wonderful character dogs. Here we have our best of breed miniature bull terrier. Small bull terriers were seen in the 19th century, but it wasn't recognised as a separate breed until around 1943. It's also descended from the bulldog crossed with the white English terrier, and it must have that distinctive head, but it also needs to combine substance and soundness of the bull terrier in a smaller frame. It should be strongly built and muscular. And one of the great challenges for breeding a miniature breed is to get the same quality, the same outline in a, 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 a smaller size. The head is often described as egg-shaped and it shouldn't have any hollows or indentation, should it, Frank? Absolutely smooth in outline, slightly Roman nose at the end. This one, two years old, a miniature bull terrier. Tom turns his attention now to the Cairn Terrier, judged by Richard Rummons. From an entry of 97, this is a female. And on the table now, the Cairn Terrier, a native of Scotland, and it shares its ancestry with other Scottish terriers, such as the Skye, the Scotty, and the West Highland White. It was bred to keep down vermin. It was first established as a short, as a short-haired Skye, and until 80, 1887, and then um, he joined. He got his own name, and he takes his name from working in the Rocky Mountains. A cairn is a small rocky outcrop on the moors, and this is a breed that's remained remarkably unchanged ever since it was created, isn't it, Frank? Absolutely workmanlike. They shouldn't be over-trimmed, they should look rugged, and the standard says they want a varminty expression. They should look like little rascals. I didn't know what that means. I've got a new word there. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> the cairn terrier. We now move to the distinctive chesky terrier. This is the fourth year of cross of CC status. Now here we move to the distinctive Chesky Terrier. This, the national dog of the Czech Republic, was developed by geneticist Francis Horrock by crossing a Scottish and Celium Terrier. It's a relatively new breed, registered with the Kennel Club in 1990. It has a gentle manner, but it should still be capable of seeing off vermin. That slight rise to the loin is a distinctive feature of the breed. And as such, it's a relatively new breed of terrier. This is a relatively modern breed, and it comes from the crossing of a Celium and a Scotty, and we see features of both in it, the long head of the Celium. However, if you want a terrier, but want, don't want all the work, this is the one for you, because these don't get hand-stripped, they get clipped, and we see this rather silky coat, short on top, with the silky furnishings. It's really nice to see this one here. As I said, National Dog of the Czech Republic. This one has come from the Czech Republic today. Gaining popularity year by year. Best of breed 
the three and a half year old Chesky Terrier there. And we see that unlike many of the other Terriers, this is allowed to carry its tail down, not over the back. Judged today by Patricia Withers from an entry of 68, this is the male, 15468. And this is one of my favourite Terrier breeds, the Dandy Dinmont. It's named after a character in Sir Walter Scott's novel Guy Mannering, where a character in the novel, Dandy Dinmont, uh, modelled on a local farmer at the time who kept terriers of this type. His dogs in the novel were called Mustard and Pepper, and this is how we get the two colours of the Dandy Dinmont. This one here, a mustard. They should have a weasel-like body with that curving top line and that really distinctive top knot and large expressive eyes. We can see them perfectly there. A wonderful natured breed, irresistible in their expression. And again, another one with little protective tassels on the end of its ears. They should have a rise over the loin and a drop down to the tail, which is carried like a little scimitar. The other colour is um, pepper. pepper, they're sort of silver grey dog, yes. That's the Dandy Dimmont. The Dandy Dimmont Terrier there. And the next dog we're going to see is the Smooth Fox Terrier, judged today by Paul Wilkinson. Here we have our best of breed smooth fox terrier. From the earliest days of hunt, small terriers ran alongside the hounds or even carried on the saddles of riders to flush out foxes when they went to ground. The smooth was the first variety to be officially recognised. It's believed to have Old English white terrier, bull terrier and beagle in its ancestry. They have a classic outline of this short back, long neck, and this long head, which should be strong with a powerful underjaw to equip it to do its job. This is a, I, I'm sad that these aren't more popular because they're a lovely natured dog. They perhaps don't like other dogs so much, but as a household companion, they are a fantastic breed and no work to doing the grooming. This one, another 16 month old over from Sweden. Do the terriers typically develop quite young, Frank? Um, depends on the size of them. The longer legged ones always take a bit longer to get finished. A really smart stride. And here is the wire fox terrier, close relation, they share the same standard. And uh, they were shown together until 1870 and then they started having their own classes from 1873. The coat differentiates the two. We see the wire coat on the muzzle and across the body and down the legs. It should be a crisp wire coat. We call them the furnishings. Very soon predominated, and it was easier to spot the dog for the fox when out hunting. This is an alert, quick mover, always on the tiptoe of expectation. It should have a skull and foreface of equal length, and those eyes should be dark and fiery. And this one moving very well here. Chest should be deep, but not broad, and the back short, level, and strong. Both of the fox terriers were hugely popular between the First World War and the Second World War, but then they've fallen out of uh, popularity and low in numbers now. They're fearless that have delightful temperaments. The wire-haired fox terrier. This one, we call it hound marked. Black, white and tan. Really smart, very eye-catching. They win a lot of terrier groups because of their style and character. A native Irish breed developed as a badger hunter in the glen of County Wicklow from which it takes its name. Here we have the glen of Amal Terrier. It should be low to the ground, fearless, tenacious and strong, and is thought to share Antress's ancestry with the soft-coated Wheaton, Kerry and Irish Terriers. It's a tough, sturdy and adaptable breed. The There's a lot of substance in the Glen of Amal, in the bone and the body. The and the front legs are slightly bowed. And it was said that the slightly bowed terrier. legs help them to drag out badgers from the lair. That might be a bit of romantic folklore, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it should have a free action covering the ground effortlessly. And it's another breed with a slight rise over the loin. This one, a Wheaton colour, am I right, Frank? A we Wheaton and striding out nicely. When this rise, as you say, and the fall to the tail, typical breed feature in the top line of the dog. Two-year-old bitch there, the Glen of a Mal Terrier. He was the judge of the Irish Terriers, and there were 50 here today. This is the male, 15726. And on the table, the Irish Terrier, the oldest of the four Irish Terrier breeds. 
sometimes called the Irish Red Terrier, first shown in the 1870s when they were shown in other colours. But then the matriarch of the breed, a red bitch called Poppy, produced a litter where they were only red ones, and that set the colour for the breed. That red colouring is believed to have given the breed its reputation as a daredevil. It's racier and more streamlined than many of the terriers and should have a wiry look. Yes, they are the daredevil. You, um, you see, they're judged on the table. One of the few terrier breeds of this size that goes on the table, but they are full of spirit. They're not so keen on other dogs, but uh, very loyal to their owners. And they've been used by the forces as messenger dogs. Legs should be carried straight and parallel with the tail not over the back. successfully put to work as a messenger dog by both sides, the English and the German. The red colouring there of the Irish Terrier. And the dog we now see on the table is the Jack Russell Terrier. They were judged today by Zena Thorne Andrews and from 121 dogs. Now there's a huge fan club in the arena tonight for this breed, the Jack Russell Terrier, only officially recognised as a breed in 2016. Although they were developed in Australia, they're descended from British and Irish Terriers taken by expats to keep down vermin. They should be a strong, active, working Terrier of great character. Judge is looking for a skull that's flat, tapering to a strong muzzle, and that expression should always be keen. We can really see that there. The best puppy in breed took the first group placing from one of this breed and made puppy group four. Now, many of our viewers will be sitting at home with their little Jack Russell thinking, well, I'll have a go. Well, if you've got one that looks like this, get it to the show ring because it's a very smart one. This one, a wire-coated one. You see the crisp wire coat, a little bit of furnishing on its muzzle, and look at that temperament, the wagging tail. They're slightly longer than high, the tail set high and carries itself full of assertiveness. Movement described it as unrestricted and free striding, really covering the ground despite its size. But again, it has to remain fit for function and uh, he's enjoying the show ring. There we have the Jack Russell Terrier, winning hearts here in the main Great arena tonight. Tom now turns his attention to the Kerry Blue. Paul Wilkinson's had a busy day. They're the beautiful colour of the Kerry Blue Terrier, officially named as the National Dog of Ireland. One of the most spirit of the terriers, I call it lightning, lightning in a bottle. Its name tells us a lot about it. It comes from County Kerry, and the coloration of the coat is blue. It's born black and then changes to shades of blue by the time it's 18 months of age. Too big to go to ground in the mountains of Kerry, it's reported to be a good This should be a compact, upstanding terrier, showing gracefulness. That long, lean head is a distinctive feature of the breed. Soft and silky coat with some wave to it and that characteristic beard, which gives it the wonderful expression. And, and there have been some Kerry Blues which have won Best in Show. Have, yes. Torum Scarf Michael, famous dog, and then years before that, um, champion Callahan of Leander. You're like an encyclopedia, Frank. The Kerry Blue. The Kerry Blue Terrier there. And we now turn our attention to the Lakeland Terrier. The many valleys of the Lake District developed their own working terriers, and from these, the Lakeland Terrier was established. It's believed to be a combination of the Black and Tan Terrier with the Welsh Border and Fox varieties. It ran after packs of hounds and would bolt or kill the fox or badger. Because of that, it should be smart, workmanlike, with a fearless demeanour. This, a beautiful example. The Lake District in England. Beginning of the 20th century. The judge just the looking the at the coat texture and feelings and feeling the furnishings. The this looks a picture, this dog. It's a four year old dog from Malta. And it's world winner. And it's bred by the Ceridon Kennels, who also have the Airedale Terrier in the group. Ah, so double shot at the win there. Should move with its legs straight parallel and forward and really driving from behind with the tail carried upright. And in the history of the breed, several of the different valleys in the Lake District had their own terrier, which they called the Lakeland. The people got together and defined the standard and they came together as one breed, the Lakeland Terrier. The dense, harsh coat there of the Lakeland Terrier. 
Beverly O'Neill was judge of the Manchester Terrier. Now he is a different sort of dog, a smooth-coated Manchester Terrier. This shows the diversity of the shapes of the breeds on the coat. Many of our Terriers developed for rural life. The Manchester was developed for urban life. It was bred to keep down rats and vermin in the rapidly changing mill towns of the Industrial Revolution. Manchester and Lancashire and the mills there. The colouring is of utmost importance. It should be jet black with rich mahogany tan and the coat should be smooth and glossy which really comes to life under the lights in the arena, doesn't it? And they have a very distinctive outline. You see they rise over the loin and the fall to the tail. Their black and tan marking is very typical and on the tan of the front legs we'll see a thumbprint which is desired in the breed standard. And one of the breed unique points. This one's seven years old, our oldest finalist so far, the Manchester Terrier. Now on the table we see the Norfolk Terrier. They were judged today by Di Jenkins and she had an entry of 62. Coming through to the group this evening. This Here we have our best of breed Norfolk Terrier. Now until 1964, both the Norfolk and the Norwich, which we'll see in a moment, were shown as the Norwich. They're the smallest of the Terriers, but with great substance and character. What differentiates the two type is the ear. So here we have the drop ear of the Norfolk and the Norwich has a pricked ear. They're a small, low, keen dog, alert and fearless despite their size. The They're one of the smaller terrier breeds, breeds and they've got a lot of substance. Strong heart. bone, cobby body, big ribs, and again that double and double coat. True body. low and driving That's movement. Norfolk Terrier 15974. Here we have the Norfolk Terrier. This one a three-year-old bitch. Di Jenkins was also the judge of the Norwich Terrier. There were 43 entered. And here's the prick-eared cousin, the Norwich Terrier on the table. They, they, they were bred and shown together until 1964 when the breeders got together, uh, approached the Kennel Club for separation, and then now they've been separated and shown separately. The Norwich here hails from Cambridge, where young gentlemen students at Cambridge University were keen on hunting and wanted a small terrier to go to ground. One of the things I love about the standard for these two is that it says that honourable scars from fair wear and tear are permissible. And I think that gives you a real insight into their character, doesn't it? It also says spirited but not quarrelsome. Yes. They should get on well with others, yes. <laughs> the neck should flow cleanly into the shoulders and it should have a deep, compact body. The hind legs following in the tracks of the front on the move. The little Norwich Terrier there. Tom Johnson now turns his attention to the Parson Russell differentiate the two by the ears. Of them here, today for Judge Lynn Bull. And here we have our best of breed in the Parson Russell Terriers. The breed's named after the Reverend John Russell, a hunting clergyman who established the breed from a dog called Trump, a white bodily terrier back in 1819. The dogs were bred to go to ground and flush out fox or badger, and it shares it is the ancestor of the newer Jack Russell, workmanlike, active and agile. Or broken coated. Importantly, their coat is weather resistant, naturally harsh, flat, straight. And this is a very smart <laughs> dog, the, or, the original Parson Jack Russell Terry. It's longer leg than the Jack Russell we've seen earlier, but again, a strong head. It has Fox Terrier in its origins, and we see the similarities and the shortness of back, the length of leg, the, the strong muzzle which equipped it to do its job. This is in beautiful form, this one. This one, two year old bitch from Finland, and so alert. You see in the ring there as she's moving. That's the Parson Russell Terrier, best of breed. One six, one five nine. That's really smart. The Parson Russell Terrier there. Waiting for Tom's eye. On the table now we see the Scottish Terrier, Margaret Hurd. The Scottish Terrier, distinctive outline, solid body, good length of neck and a lot of substance under that coat. It shares its ancestry with the other native Scottish Terrier breeds and was used again for vermin control. Once known as the Aberdeen Terrier because it was very popular and developed in that area. It acquired its present name in 1879. 
Scottish Terriers are usually black, as we're seeing here, but they can come in Wheaton or Brindle. They have a close-lying double coat with that distinctive eyebrow and beard. Short level back, should be held on the move. They've got low slung, which means they're deep bodied. And one of the challenges is to get this activity of movement in a low to ground dog and have freedom of action. This is going very well because Scotties can be extremely stubborn. When they want to put the feet in, they'll do so. This is not the moment when you want them to bring out that trait. <laughs> the Scottish Terrier there. And on the table now, we see the Celium Terrier. They were judged today by Denise Bettis. An entry of now here we have a Welsh breed which takes its name from the village of its origin, the Celium Terrier. It was developed using predominantly white terriers such as the Jack Russell, West Highland White and then included Bull Terrier and Dandy Dinmont blood. It was used to go to earth after otters but also worked foxes, badgers and polecats. It's described as sturdy, game and workmanlike. A village in Pembrokeshire, South West Wales called Wolf's Castle. Originally, the breed was used for pest control. It's a wonderful breed. I owned them in the 1970s. I had two of them, and they're wonderful nature. And again, it's it low in number now. It's a great shame. There's lots a bit of work attached to the trimming, but they're fantastic companions and lovely, lovely terriers. However, they take their name from Celium Manor near Haverford West in Wales, where Captain John Edwards developed the breed. They should have a distinctive, slight dome between the eyes, and they're just their jaw is described as punishing. Brisk and vigorous on the move with plenty of drive. They're a rectangular dog, but again, low to ground. Strong in the foreface, they need a strong underjaw. This one, badger markings, a little bit of brown over the eye and on the ears. We call that badger marking. The Celium Terrier there. Tom now turns his attention to the Sky Terrier. Now, the longest dog in the group is the Sky Terrier, one of the original terriers from the Hebrides, and it's believed it is the ancestor of all these Scottish terrier breeds. The original Sky was smaller than what we have now, but it's been developed to be longer with a hard coat. Queen Victoria acquired a Sky in 1842, and that popularised them. One thing's for certain, they're long and low to the ground with a glorious double The outer coat, coat should be hard, and straight and flat with that distinctive veiling across the eyes and varieties. ears. And of course, ears, the breed became famous ears. through Greyfriars Bobby, the sky who stayed by the grave of his master, who died in Edinburgh. And he stayed there from 1858 to 1872 and uh, made the breed legendary. When he died, then there was, they made a monument for the dog in Greyfriars Churchyard. Testament to the loyalty of these terriers there. It should have a large, powerful skull and be twice as long as it is high. Elegant and dignified is how the breed standard describes it. They're uh, extremely feisty terriers. They're full of terrier spirit. A lot of work there and a lot of bone and substance under the coat. Look, look at the lovely prick ears with the shadings. Very attractive. This one a big winner in her young career. Colour and texture of coat, two of the breed's main characteristics, describe the soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. It's believed to be an ancestor of the Irish and Kerry Blue Terriers and was used for hunting badger and otter. It should be compact and upstanding and the coat is described as a shade of ripening wheat. ...watching and guarding livestock, as well as controlling vermin of all sizes. You know, very free moving, squad, very free time. moving terrier. This coat should have a shiny, silky sheen to it. It shouldn't be woolly at all, and it shouldn't be overcoated. He's the youngest champion in the history of the breed here, just three and a half years old now, and from Nottinghamshire. The soft coated Wheaton Terrier really striding out there. Now we come to the Terrier Group's biggest entry. There were 341 Staffordshire Terriers here. The Staffordshire Bull Terrier, the Almost biggest like entry in the Terrier Group, 341 here today, and one of the most Ford, popular breeds the in the Terrier Group, not only as a show dog, but also as a household companion. They were bred and developed in the Black Country in near Dudley, and developed from crossing a bull breed with white terrier blood. 
They're the only breed which is shown in a collar and lead, ornamented with brass, including the Staffordshire knot we can see in the collar. Staffy hugely popular here in the main arena tonight. These dogs should be muscular and balanced, giving the impression of great strength for their size. The broad skull with round eye, a distinct feature, as is the wide front with well sprung rib. They're fantastic. They love children, devoted to their families and their fantastic natures. Oh, beautiful breed. Once known as the Welsh Black and Tan Rough-Coated Terrier, the name of this breed was later compressed to the Welsh Terrier. It was used to control fox, otter and badger populations. And Irish Airedale and Light Lakeland Terriers were added to refine the breed. It should be smart, workmanlike, well-balanced and compact with that hard, wiry coat. Old English broken or coarse haired black and tan terrier. And this looks really smart. The wire coat, beautifully trimmed, the harsh texture down the legs and on the back coat. It looks rather like a wire fox terrier, but it is indeed a little bit heavier and thicker boned and a bit more sturdy than the wire. The neck slightly arched and flowing gracefully into the shoulders. Legs should move straight forward and parallel, and the tail carried high. This is a dog that means business, isn't it? And he had a great win today. The top winning Welsh was in the breed, and this one defeated it. So uh, a great win for him at Crufts. It's always exciting to be around the terrier breed. Spectacular dogs, full of spirit, and proud of ringsides today. This one, two and a half year old dog, has come from Scotland and today. The last of the 27 <laughs> Super Terriers here is the West Highland White Terrier, judged by John Griffin. 90 West, West Highland White Terriers here today, and a beautiful the sight they made in the ring. <laughs> The Cairn Terrier plays an important part in its ancestry. Many breeders of Cairns used to cull white puppies. They thought they were undesirable. But one breeder, Colonel Malcolm, started to breed for the lighter colour, believing they could be more easily seen when working. And that's how we developed the breed. He called a white Scottish terrier called the wonderful head is a real calling card of this breed. It should be slightly domed terrier. at the skull with heavy and eyebrows and a dark eye. Ears terrier. sharply pointed and carried erect. This one just looking around there. A free, straight and easy mover with the tail carried jauntily. And she's this one a very a big winning bitch, so uh, representing the uh, the females here in the group. The West Highland White Most of them are dogs who've won through the breed here. This spirited, lovely little gilded lily, she's called. The West Highland White Terrier so there. completes the individual examin examination of the 27 Terrier breeds here in the group three of Crafts. So there we have our Terrier best of breeds, but who is our judge going to choose for his shortlist? At the superb 27 Terriers, and this is the last time you'll see them in their entirety. So. Well done to all of you on winning through your individual breeds. Our judge just taking one final look round these best of breeds before selecting his shortlist. Of course, in the coat of breeds, you know, clever, clever trimming can hide the faults and, you know, they can disguise the faults. And uh, it's the judge's job to hands on examination and then find out what they're like under the coat. So, where's he going? Striding purposefully over there. So, the first of the shortlisted dogs. The Bedlington the comes out. Lovely Bedlington. The Wire Fox the Terrier. Wire Fox oh, he terrier. likes that one, Frank, didn't you? And the, the, uh, the Jack, Jack Russell, Russell. The, Kerry the Kerry Blue comes out, the, the Lakeland, Russell. the, the Parson Russell, Russell Terrier, lovely, and the, the Sky, Sky Terrier, Terrier. And, and the, and the Welsh, Welsh Terrier. And there's our lineup. Thank you very much to those other best of breed winners. Give them a round of applause as they leave the Eight race. Terriers in the lineup. So. Our sixth group winner for the show is going to come from these eight, down to the last eight from over 2,000 Terriers today. And it's what look, you can see their what personalities there, can't you? They're well all alert and ready to go. Dogs are making it through. 
And you see is the judges sitting round the ring, looking at the outlines on the move, looking at their length of stride, and whether it's breed typical movement. This is very typical for the Bedlington, but it wouldn't be typical for the other terriers. Their breed specific movement. That mincing movement. So here we have the wire fox terrier. This one looking really smart today. Powering there from behind. The Jack Russell turn. And there's really striding out. Oh, listen to that crowd. Eager to please the little Jack Russell. Come from Spain, I think, this one to win. Here we have the Kerry Blue Terrier. That distinctive colouring and texture of coat there. And this is going very well. I saw a wonderful now class to today. And this one won it. Marvellous. And here's the smart Lakeland Terrier. Put down to the minute. Beautifully presented that one. That coat takes some care, doesn't it? And now we see the Parson Russell Terrier. Yeah, here we have the Parson Russell Terrier. This two and a half year old dog. I, I love this dog. He's so typical of the breed. This lovely length of neck, a strong foreface, good bone, and great carriage and top line. I like it a lot. And the Sky Terrier. And the final one in our shortlist. Here we have the Sky Terrier. The that distinctive Bird. coat. And again, important that the long top line is held level on the move. A dip there would show a, a fault in the confirmation move. underneath. The and terrier. finally, now we see the Welsh the Terrier. The dog that uh, won the breed today. Sturdy, black and tan, crisp coat, and again, a wonderful top line. Nice curve to the back leg to give it propulsive power on the move. All of those terriers moving out beautifully there. So we already have five of our finalists for best in show. Who is going to be well, our sixth? Frank? Well, I think the Parson Russell has looked beautiful tonight. The Kerry Blues look lovely. And the winner is, is that oh. Kerry Blue? You just said that, Frank. Here we have the Kerry Blue Terrier. That's Phil Davis from Wales with his Kerry Blue. Indian Princess at Kerrisbley. Group two in the Terrier group. Group two. Oh, the Lakeland. Oh, the Lakeland Terrier. Beautifully presented, that one. So alert, moving beautifully. Group three. Oh, the, oh, the Jack Russell, the Jack very Russell. popular. There's the one that the, the crowd very, That's the crowd yes, winner, yes. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so our last place, who's it going to go to? And group four, it's the Bedlington. The Bedlington. The Bedlington. Young Bedlington from Scotland in uh, group the four. There's the... A big round of applause to them as they leave. And there are the four a winning terriers for Clubs 2020. But it's the Kerry Blue who will stay on a little bit longer and compete for the supreme Blue. title. Best in show. Indian Princess at Perry's Blue. Pixie, our three and a half year old winner of the Terrier Group. And she's waiting now for presentation to the winner. And then, of course, they've got to go back out and come back in and do it all again for best in show. We should be hearing from our winner in a moment. Fantastic achievement for them. This was the third CC for this bitch, and so the became a champion today. Given out, I think we're going to have a quick word by Marina Scott. Thanks, Kim. Let's have a quick word with our Terrier Group winning handler here. I believe this is Pixie. That's correct, yes, Pixie. And you've gone very close to winning groups at Crufts before. Is this your first group? Um, we won it with a Fox Terrier in 2006, but this is the first time with a Kerry. And just tell us a little bit about Pixie. How much effort goes into getting her looking into this pristine condition? Um, about 20 hours a week trimming and grooming, you know, exercising every day. Um, this is a third show, a third CC, and a third group. So she's a champion today? Champion made up today. Well, to top it off with the Terrier group, many congratulations. You've only got a few minutes left, really, to best in show. Any, any last kind of grooming tips? Oh, we'll just settle her down and 
calm it down a little bit and calm myself down a little bit. <laughs> we'll we go again. Excellent. We'll see you shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the Terrier Group winner, Pixie, on their lap of honour. Followed by the Lakeland Terrier. And there we have Pixie, the Kerry Blue, who will join Frankie, the Miniature Poodle, Pablo, the Bichon Frise, Elsie, the Irish Setter, Drago, the Bull Mastiff, and Zockney, the Old English Sheepdog, back here for Best in Show in just an hour's time. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the final group to be judged here at Crufts 2020, the Hound Group. The winner of this group will give us the seventh finalist to compete for Best in Show later this evening, the ultimate achievement of Crufts 2020. And again, it's my pleasure to introduce our Hound Group judge, a gentleman with almost 40 years experience in pedigree dogs, he started his judging career in 1985. So you join us now for the final group before our Best in Show competition. This is the Hound Group, and our judge for this evening is going to be Mark Kokosa. As a breeder and exhibitor, he has campaigned champions in six breeds across the Hound and Utility Group. So please give a very warm welcome to there our There he is on judge, the right, Mr. started Mark in Kikosa. Afghan Hounds, but has also had success with Children Tibetan Terriers, Petit Basset Griffon Vendien, as amongst many other breeds, also now lives with a French Bulldog. And now it's your chance to welcome into the group our Hound Best of Breeds, led in by the Afghan Hound. The Basenji. The hound breeds originally used for hunting either by the scent Basset or by sight. Baton. They should be dignified and aloof, but trustworthy companions. The Grand Basset Griffon Vendion. And because of those different origins used for scent or sight, we have a, a lot of Basset different Griffon body Vendion. shapes in the hound group. You'll notice little groups, the Basset groups. And now the, Basset the sight hound. hounds tend to be on longer legs, being able to gaze over longer distance. The scent the hounds beagle. like this Basset Hound lower to ground. And now we see the Bloodhound. The Bloodhound now a vulnerable breed here. Now here comes the Borzoi. Originally a Russian Wolfhound, that's why they need that coat to protect them. Now we see the first of our Dachshunds, the long-haired Dachshund. You'll see a little group of Dachshunds come in now. The Six different varieties. Each two one. sizes and two coat types in each. Followed by the smooth-haired Dachshund. And now in comes the miniature smooth-haired Dachshund. It's a big ring when your legs are legs that little, isn't it, Jess? <laughs> Now comes the wirehead Dachshund. The miniature wirehead Dachshund. The last of our six Dachshunds there. Followed by the Deerhound. <laughs> what a contrast. When you say followed by the Deerhound, give the Dachshund a Overtake little bit of space. <laughs> and now here comes or he'll get mown the down. Fits. Needs to just drop into his stride. He's pacing a little bit there. The Foxhound. The Greyhound. Big round of applause for the Greyhound. Such the Hamilton Schubera. The Ibithan Hound. The Irish Wolfhound. Another big cheer there. The true giant of the group. Wonderful the expression Norwegian looking around saying, why is everybody clapping? And now here comes the Otterhound. 
another of our vulnerable breeds here, the Otter Hound. The Pharaoh Hound. Oh. <laughs> The Portuguese Padengo. And now we see the Rhodesian Ridgeback. The Saluki. Such grace and swiftness in the Saluki. Beautiful and now moving the dogs. Saluki. A similar outline there of the Slugi. The Whippet. Another big cheer. Whippet's always popular. And from the Any Variety Import Register Breeds, the Griffon Full de Bretagne. Lovely to see one of these representing and the imported register. Only Neal, just beginning to establish themselves here in the UK. And here's another really diverse group of dogs with a massive difference not only in size but country of origin, and perhaps, perhaps most importantly, their modus operandi. So and Mark Kokos like are going to walk his line, take a good look at the outlines of his of best of breed winners. First chance, of course, the group judge, because it's, it's not done to go wandering around looking at what your breed judges are doing during the day. They stay well away, and this is the first look he gets at what all those breed judges have sent through. And Mark, of course, will be aware that we already have six finalists and his winner has got to go up against those in Best in Show in just a short time. They were also used as um, they used in packs. And we mustn't forget the Daxone varieties, another of the hound subgroups. But these six breeds are neither specialist, sight hound, nor scent hound. So our judge, Mark turns his attention to the Afghan Hound, judged today by Lotta Jorkinson, 188 here. This is the bitch number 17001. The name of the breed is... The Afghan Hound, our judge's original breed, swift, powerful and dignified. This dog was a sight hound originating from Afghanistan's rugged mountains and plains, where he hunted deer, gazelle, hare and fox. They're glamorous and hardworking much tried by local tribesmen, the Sadars and the Sikari. The Afghans should have strength and dignity combined with speed and power. And this one, a nine-year-old over from Germany, really showing the longevity that this breed can have. They float the ring, a good example, and that ring tail, absolutely classic. Smooth and springy on the move, with a level back and the head held high. That's the Afghan hound. This one's come from Germany to compete today. It's a brush going flying there. Judged today by Ben Reynolds Frost, and from an entry of 68. Dating back from the time of the pharaohs, here we have the Basenji. It arrived in the UK in around 1936 from the African Congo, where it was used as an all-purpose hunter, working from both sight and scent. Uniquely, it has no bark, and that's instead replaced by a yodeling sound. Lightly built and finely boned, it should be aristocratic looking. They don't bark, but they emit a yodel. This one's come from Poland to compete today. Short, sleek coat, always white on the feet and legs, chest and muzzle, otherwise either black, tricolour, tan or brindle. They should have gazelle-like grace and the legs should be carried straight forward on the move with a swinging stride. And that high set tail curled over the back, very characteristic. The Basenji there. The Courageous, the hardy little Just russet coloured, rough coated scent hound, this, the Basset Fauve de Bretagne, originating in Brittany and prized as an all rounder, capable of hunting just about anything. It's also one of the smallest in the past was rarely seen outside of France. Should have a moderately domed skull with nostrils wide open for scenting, the neck short and muscular, moving into a chest that's wide and deep. Real nice, balanced little French Basset breed. This one's come from Sweden to compete. Real quality dogs. Quick and nimble on the move, striding out well there, and that tail lashing. Harsh, dense, flat coaty, the fawn gold or red wheaten. And now we see another of the 
French pounds, the Basset Griffon Vendillon Grand. They were judged today by Dina Here we have the two. tallest of the Basset Hounds, the Basset Griffon Bondi in the Grand Variety. It should have a long body and ears, and it's a scent hound. The name Bass translates as low or low set, and it was originally used for hunting hare and rabbit. It should have a noble head carried proudly and be balanced throughout with a rough coat. Very popular in France, they were selectively bred and developed. The distinctive beard, moustache and eyebrows give it its characteristic expression. And Jess, this was your breed, wasn't it? It absolutely was. And what we should be looking for is a nice top line on the move, good striding out with good, good leg action. This is a dog that in France hunts in thick undergrowth all day long. That's the best of breed. Should be noble in the head. They're such a beautiful breed. Mark, no bias there. <laughs> and this, the smaller cousin, lighter and with less extreme proportions than the Grand Basset Griffon Vendien. This is the Petit Basset Griffon Vendien, second of the four Griffon Vendien hounds. We've got little shorter ears, slightly shorter in the muzzle, and a shorter tail on this one. It can be traced back to the 16th century, where they were used to hunt rabbits and hares. The name Petit Basset. It should retain a rustic look, be compact and short-legged, but it's most important that the head is carried proudly. We need great drive on the mood move, and um, they really look like rustic little hunting dogs, busy people. We always say the Petit Basset uh, Griffon Vendien has an extra set of batteries. <laughs> this one just 16 months old, come from Hampshire, a dog called Freddy. And the next dog that to be judged, instantly recognisable, the Basset Hound. Thought to have been bred for hunting by French monks in the Middle Ages, here we have our best of breed Basset Hound. They have long, fine ears used to enclose the scent and enough substance and a pliable skin to protect them in undergrowth. Emma's come from Italy to compete today. The Basset Hound, of course, instantly recognised by absolutely everyone. That deep chest there, the kind of judge really getting the hands on, feeling it's underneath the skin. The Definitely heavier Definitely in the bone than the bassets we've just seen, but should never be exaggerated. This dog needs to be able to do a day's work. And when he goes, we should have, when she goes rather, I get beg her pardon, <laughs> the sabre tail nearly always has or should have a white tip on the end. It makes them easier to see. Movement should be smooth, powerful and effortless. They do have a reputation for being stubborn. But some call it being this bitch is a European here. winner That's and an Italian champion. She is very brave, according seven, to her owner. Three, six, five. <laughs> On the table now for Mark Picosa is the Beagle. 229 Beagles here today. Darren Fellows is our judge. Way back in the 15th century, when the beagle was developed as a pack hound to hunt abundant hares, it came in two sizes. This one has prevailed, and the smaller pocket beagle vanished from UK shores, but can still be found in the USA. Sturdy and compact, a great hunter. United Kingdom at the beginning of the 20th century, the term beagling was fairly common. The beagle should have quality without coarseness. A powerful head, skull slightly domed, a neck long enough allow it to allow it to come down to scent. This one, 15 months old from Darlington. Carried on the hunt by horsemen in their saddlebags, making eager noise. Business like on the move with that the tail's called a stern, the stern cranked up. And a lovely soft expression always on a beagle. That's the beagle. The beagle there. And now we turn our attention to the blood town. Twenty-three of them here for Judge Ian Layfield. Best of breed is this dog, 17706. St. Hubert is the patron saint of hunting. The instantly recognisable outline of the Bloodhound, descended from hounds kept in the monastery of St Hubert in Belgium. The breed has been developed in Britain since before 1300. They were used as a leash hound for hunting deer and wild boar. They should be noble and dignified dog, conveying power and wisdom.
A long, narrow head with deep, square foreface are distinctive features of the breed, as are the elastic, free-swinging movement we're seeing here. This one's called Mission, and Sam Farlap imported him from Canada. And uh, exceptionally, he's the only bloodhound in the UK currently to hold a Platinum Health Certificate. That's the highest possible level. Super dog. She chose this bitch, number 17759. Borzoi means swift, and this elegant, long-limbed Russian wolfhound used to its speed to chase down his quarry, usually working in pairs, and they have tremendous courage to hold their prey until the hunters arrived. The Borzoi, the Russian wolfhound. The Grand National Exhibition of Sporting and Other Dogs at the Crystal Palace in 1871. Distinctive feature of the breed is that long, lean head with the slightly Roman nose. The chest should form a narrow oval and the back has a graceful curve to it. They are curvaceous throughout but should be light and swift on the move. This one, a three and a half year old bitch from the Netherlands. Our best of breed, Borzoi. Here we have one of the less well-known breeds in the hound group, the Cineco del Etna. It was a favoured hound for hunting rabbits near Mount Etna in Sicily. It has excellent hearing thanks to those large mobile ears that we can see there, and it shares its elegant outline with the pharaoh hound, just in a smaller package. Historically used to hunt rabbits, they can scent and work for hours on rugged terrain. It should be elegant, slender ends. built, but still have strength and robustness Solid about it. Hunting dogs, that's the best of breed, Cineco del Etna, number the one. The springy seven, trot there of the Cineco two. del Etna. The first of our Dachshund varieties is the long-haired Dachshund. Jeff Horzo, so here's the first of our Dachshunds. We've got three different sizes and three different coat types. This is the standard long-haired Dachshund. This is Nita. Dachshunds, of course, bred to go to ground, to follow their quarry underground. They're very much at home in a burrow. They're strong front feet, make them adept at digging in sets. These dogs should be twice as long as they are high, but not excessively long. There must be enough ground clearance underneath them to allow their movement to be free. And that coat is soft and straight. You don't want too much wave in it, only slight. Abundant feathering and a tail like a flag. <laughs> and those conical shaped heads are distinctive features of all of the dachshunds we're about to see. As well as against the cold and the rain. They have brave characters, though, because, of course, what they're following down the holes isn't always rabbits, foxes and badgers, too. Not so much anymore. Now, here we have the miniature long-haired dachshund, the smaller cousin of the variety we just saw. As we mentioned, these we use for tracking wounded game and going to ground after rabbits and badgers. They should be a compact, well-muscled dog with enough ground clearance to allow them to move freely. They should be bold and defiant, with the head carriage always proud. And the miniature should weigh no more than 11 pounds. Germany, the varieties are separated I tell you what, we've had such a wet winter, I wouldn't want to have to live with all that coat at ground level, would you? They originated in Germany, where they're called Tekel, meaning badger dog. They're described as courageous to the point of rashness, too, which I think anyone who owns one would agree with. The oval chest has maximum lung capacity, allowing them to work. Movement should be free and flowing. Now it's the turn of the smooth hair factor. Judged with Rachel Barney from the selection for 84. 18154 emerged triumphant, and this is the female. So here's the first of our smooth dachshunds where, if you imagine, it's like a dachshund who's taken his clothes off, so you can really see the shape here. That graceful neck, great fore chest, just where the handler's hand is there, sticking out, and the length of the back. But it doesn't want to be so much that it causes the dog problems. We need balance. 
The owner of this two-year-old bitch describes her as bold and defiant, and I think those are characteristics that sum up the breed, aren't they, Jess? They certainly are. Dense, short and smooth, that coat. This one a red. Using her ears on the move. She's paying attention to what her handler's saying. They should be in hard, supple, muscular condition, and the breastbone is prominent at the front of all of the Dachshunds. Next dog for our group judge Mark Cosa to see is the miniature smooth haired Dachshund. And here we have the miniature smooth-haired dachshund. It has that dense, short, smooth coat that we just saw, and the skin should be supple. Known as the Tekel or Badger dog in its native Germany, it should be moderately long and low, and sometimes known as the sausage dog, but it should have enough ground clearance to allow it to move freely. It's most important that it's not over-exaggerated. dramatically in popularity. The first class is the dachshunds we're seeing here in Birmingham at the Kennel Club show. Picture of a head there. You said and sausage dog, I think that's probably what the handler's got in his hand. <laughs> Skull should taper down to the tip of the nose. Ears broad, high set and well rounded. And they're so popular now it's hard to believe that uh, although Queen Victoria was a massive fan, Dachshund numbers plummeted around That's both world wars because of their German the origin, and we nearly Dachshund lost them, brought back by aficionados eight. who absolutely rooted for the breeds throughout. And just see there, the tail touching the ground at rest. The miniature smooth-haired Dachshund. We move to the wire-haired variety. This is the wire-haired Dachshund, judged by Jill Peake. Winning through from an entry of 113. An absolute picture. This is the wirehead dachshund. The whole body is covered in a short, straight, harsh jacket with a softer, dense undercoat. They've got the most marvellous beard and eyebrows and moustaches to enhance the head. And the judge there putting his fingers into the coat to make sure it's the correct texture. Also weather resistant. Generally thought that this the owner of this two and a half year old bitch says that she's always out for a good time, and I'm sure we're going to see that on the move now. <laughs> Should be free and flowing on the move, the tail a continuation of the spine. Look at that business like little person. I told you, out for a good time. Well, she doesn't, she doesn't know she's one of the smallest dogs in this ring, does she? She doesn't. Angulation is unique on the Dachshund, so we have the upper arm, which should be at right angle to the shoulder. You see that there. The wirehead Dachshund has been used for wild boar hunting and for beating sack. That's the wirehead Dachshund. And now on the table, we see the miniature wirehead Dachshund. The last of our six varieties of Dachshund, this one, the miniature wirehead, the final of the big dogs in a small package. They have this distinctive harsh coat, the wirehead variety, which should cover the whole body, and then the beard on the chin and the eyebrows, which with that wonderful expression. The skull of this can appear slightly broader than the other varieties because of that wire coating. This little one's called Skinny, and she's come from Italy to compete at Crufts today. And we shouldn't forget that although the Dachshunds are hugely popular as pets because of their diminutive size, they are hunting hounds, and therefore they can be very naughty, particularly off the lead. That one really striding out well there, legs free to move. Back yeah, level. Today we're judged by breed specialist Hector Heathcote from an entry of 77. Hector is sentenced through this female one Designed on elegant lines and with a gentle no, nature that endeared him as a companion, this sight hound, the deer hound, can nonetheless keep up with and pull down a full grown stag, although he was more often used for coursing smaller quarry and today probably spends more time on the hearth rug. Queen Victoria. An amazing day for the owners of this two-year-old bitch. Not only her first CC, but also her first best of breed, and what a way to do it. Absolutely, and judged by Hector Heathcote, who's uh, somebody who I know has enormous knowledge of this breed and has been with them for very many years. Easy, active, long stride we want with the deer, how nice and balanced and sound. That gentle dignity. These dogs should have real endurance there, the deer hound. And now we see the finished fits. 16 of them for Judge Stuart Byrne, 
Best to breed is this dog 18653. Here we have the national dog of Finland, the Finnish Spitz. These were used for tracking elk and bear and barked to find signal when they found their game. They now use the same method for finding game birds in trees. They have the distinct wedge-shaped head, compact body, standoff outer coat and tightly curled tail of all the Spitz breeds. And their double coat and undercoat ensures that they can work in the coldest conditions. I think anybody who owns a Finnish Spitz will tell you first and foremost that they've just got something to say about absolutely everything. This one needing to settle into its stride a bit. Interestingly, puppies have more black hairs and that decreases as they age. Now, much more commonly seen out, in, out and about in the countryside than as a show dog, this is the foxhound. Still very much the pack animal but hunting uh, drag trails rather than hunting animals anymore. Foxhounds are occasionally seen in the show ring here, much more commonly in Australia and America. The foxhounds have become such an institution that there were 140 packs in England. These are dogs built for stamina and endurance. They should be well balanced, powerful and clean cut, free striding and tireless on the move. That's the foxhound. This one, five-year-old dog. Owner describes as playful and naughty. 61 of them here for Judge Carla Molinari. Here we have our best of breed greyhound. These were developed as hunting dogs in Britain in the Middle Ages and such was their prestige that a law was passed that only allowed royalty and nobility to hunt with them. They are larger and heavier than the racing track variety and should be upstanding with that long head and elegant neck. This is a brindle, grace personified. I love the description of this breed. Head like a snake, neck like a drake, back like a bean. This one, Todd, a dog, two and a half years old. And when not showing, he likes to tear at the post. Bill Phillips is in charge of the Hamilton Sturbler. There were 14 Hamiltons here today. This is the Hamilton Stavara, and it was created by Count Hamilton, the founder of the Swedish Kennel Club, by crossing English foxhounds with various German hounds to make this handsome, upstanding, tricolour scent hound. They should be rectangular and giving the impression of strength and stamina. Long and powerful neck, a straight back and a deep chest, really workmanlike. But unlike the foxhound, uh, Hamilton's Stavara tend to work singly. They don't work in packs so much, scenting out the fox, deer or hare, and then singing freely when they found a good scent. Short, soft undercoat and that weather-resistant top coat. And of course, that tricolour colouring is absolutely characteristic of the breed. We now see the Ibethan hound. Here's our best of breed Ibethan hound. Dogs of an elegant outline with large ears can be seen in drawings going back into ancient Egyptian tombs. This breed was used as a rabbit hunter of Ibiza and the neighbouring island of Formentera. They should be tall, narrow and finely built, able to jump great heights. With the first two being shown across the following year. Lean, mean the rabbit the machine, this. <laughs> <is. laughs> and uh, and don't think that because you can see ribs through the skin that there's uh, this dog is underfed. It's nothing to do with that. A lot of these sight hounds come from very warm countries where carrying a lot of body fat means that they would get too hot when they were working. And so they tend to be very lean in comparison to ours. The Abethan hound there. Irish Wolfhounds were judged by Ian Sexton in Hadnesbury. The largest of the hound breeds, in fact, the largest of all dog breeds, the Irish Wolfhound, they very nearly became extinct after, after the demise of their intended quarry was followed by the Great Famine in his native Ireland in the 1840s. Returned to healthy numbers by aficionados who would always support this extraordinary dog. Helped back in numbers uh, using deer hounds, Great Dane, and of course the Tibetan Mastiff. They're a true gentle giant, described as being of great size, strength, and symmetry. 
The head should be carried high on the move, and it's described as an easy, active movement. And this is Paris, champion Sade Paris, with Chris Amu, who, of course, has won best in show here at Crufts. The Irish Wolfhound there. In Norway, the remains of dogs very similar to this, the Norwegian Elkhound, have been found, suggesting it's an ancient and unchanged breed. It's used to track elk where its resonant bark is put to good use. It should be powerful with a compact body and square outline, a lovely wedge-shaped head. It's hard to believe that the elk hound actually isn't the size of an Irish wolfhound. Because I don't know whether you've ever met an elk <laughs> in the dark, but 300 kilos as one of the largest deers and an antler span that takes him to nine feet. And that's what these dogs have to deal with. So they have valiant hearts, very brave characters. The coat shades of grey with black tips and that distinctive dark foreface. Our Norwegian elk hound, best of breed. Now his weather and water resistant coat is oily to touch because of his previous job. This is the otter hound and Maria Larego who's handling today has been bringing otter hounds into this Crufts uh, group, group ring for as long as I've been coming. That's 35 years or something like that. Wonderful, wonderful dogs these. They're a large, rough-coated breed with a really majestic head. Skull should be nicely domed, on the move, long striding, active trot. They can go in any weather and, of course, are used to hunting in water. Mercifully, otter hunting was banned in 1978, so they don't chase their original quarry, but were used on uh, mink after that, of course, an invader. This one, just 13 months old, moving beautifully in the main ring there. Here we have our best of breed pharaoh hound. Beloved by rulers of ancient Egypt, the breed's actually native to Malta, where it was used as a rabbit hunter. Sailors then took it to Egypt. It should have a noble blaring with clean cut lines, graceful yet powerful. It hunts by both sight and scent. He's a real working hound who has the ability to hunt by scent and sight. Always this glorious and instantly recognisable colour. They're keen, intelligent hunters, capable of great agility in pursuit of their play, prey. So we want a, a nice floating gait going round the ring. They're always impressive. Head should be long, lean and well chiselled, and those ears of utmost importance, large and erect. What a contrast. This is the little Portuguese Pedengo, the Warren Hound, a rabbit hunter, pocket rocket of a rabbit and vermin hunter, actually. In this small size, they can actually come in a medium or a large size, too, but we don't have those in this country. It's a small, sturdy dog, slightly longer than it is high, with a lean, fine head that looks like a wedge when it's viewed from above. Swift and light on the move. This one's six years old, called Gimmick. Straight legged, level back the Pedengo, that lean, fine head crowned by fantastic large triangular pointed ears that they use constantly. The swift, light footed Portuguese Pedengo. Now we see the Rhodesian Ridgeback, developed as a scent hound in South Africa. When they were taken to Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, they were used to track lions, so these dogs need to be fast, athletic and very courageous. They take their name from the ridge of hair, which grows in an opposite direction down their spine. Canine folklore says the well-marked ridge is a sign of courage. Which often included the king of the jungle, the lion. Beautiful balance in that outline. Straight fronted, deep chested, powerful straight back bearing that ridge. They should look strong and yet there's an elegance about a Rhodesian Ridgeback. 
straight and free on the move. This one is a dog over from Germany, three and a half years old. And that short, dense coat, sleek and glossy. Breed specialist Claire Priscilla has the honour of judging the Saluki today. The Saluki is an elegant and light-footed gazelle hound. This one just looks a little worried about his performance in the big ring tonight. Hails from the Middle East and whose lineage can be tracked back through hundreds of years thanks to careful records kept by his Bedouin breeders. Called the oldest race of hunting dog in the world. Described as smooth, flowing and effortless on the move. The tail is always carried below the back and the coat should be sil silky, silky and smooth, sorry, a teeth in. They can achieve the most staggering speeds when hunting and they were often hunted from horseback and worked with falcons. And now we see the Sluki. These were judged today by Pam Martin Pollock. She had just five here. Here we have the Slugi, a breed you may not recognize. It's a lean sight hound with many similarities to the Saluki we just saw. They're a North African dog brought to Europe after the French occupation of Algeria. As Jess mentioned earlier, these breeds have no extra fat, which allows them to keep cool in deserts. They're an elegant, dignified hound of square proportions. Free and effortless on the move. They have that characteristic high head carriage. This one, two years old from Cumbria. Largest entry in the group. Developed by Victorian miners in the northeast of England, the Whippet was a pocket greyhound used to course rabbits for bets. When, when that was banned, uh, Whippets were raced after ragures before eventually graduating to the hearth and home as a much loved companion and show dog. The breed standard calls for a balanced combination of muscular power and elegance. Largest entry in the group here today. Gentle and affectionate creature, creatures, that, that characteristic action on the move. Coats fine, short, close textured, and the ears described as rose shaped. Here we have the winner from the import register classes, the Griffon Fold de Bretagne, another of the French hounds. It shares its place of origin in Brittany with the Basset Fauve. It was used for hunting wolves from the 14th century and is strongly built and muscular with that distinct wired coat. Now this is the larger cousin of the Basset Fauve de Bretagne that we saw uh, earlier on and with very similar origins, that distinctive gold, red or wheaten coat and the larger size lending the most lovely balance I think to this breed. They should be sound, supple, easy and active on the move. This one moving out really nicely, their tail lashing. Rough, harsh, textured coat. Should be nice and close to the body like that. This is a dog suited to difficult terrain, isn't it? So that concludes the individual examination of the final of the So we've seen our best of breed winners. Who is Mark Kokosa going to pick for the final Crufts 2020 group winner? So moving down his line, who's he going to pull? The Beagle. No, it wasn't the Beagle. It's the Basset, it was the Hound. Basset Hound coming in and the Bloodhound. Oh, I'm wow. delighted. We've got the miniature smooth dash hunt, the standard wirehead, and the deer hound. Beautiful deer hound, that. Rhodesian Ridgeback coming in. 
Whippet, Saluki and the Rhodesian Ridgeback all coming in there. And our import register, fantastic for that. The Bassett, the Griffon, Fauve de Bretagne. This lineup just showing the, the different sizes that we have here in the Hound Group. Our judge just taking one more look and then he probably will move them back up and down again. So Mark, I think may well be sending these dogs around the ring. So here we're going to see them move again, going up to the head of the line. And the Basset Hound. Here they go. This, this one really Basset free Hound. and easy on the move. Champion from Italy, a three-year-old bitch. Not exaggerated in any way, holding a top line on the move. That stern carried proudly. The distinctive yeah, outline of the Bloodhound the here. Delighted to see this one coming through. This is mission for Sam Farlap. He's such a sound, healthy, unexaggerated looking Bloodhound. Really good on the move. Also completes in working trials. And the miniature smooth head, that's it. This one, Just four and a half year old miniature Jungle. smooth hair Dachshund, a world winner in 2018 called Pichu, and he's here from Rotterdam. And, and here one. goes the wire haired Dachshund. This is Maisie, two and a half years old. From the Seal Silve Kennel, we've seen best of breeds from them many times in the group kennel with a long history of producing beautiful dachshunds in this country from short legs to very long and legs here we have the deer hound the this one two-year-old bitch <laughs> called ruby comes from just down the road bromsgrove in worcestershire and what a lovely deer hound that is on the move handler john francis very experienced handler Always a contender, the, the symmetry Ridgeback. and balance of the yeah, Rhodesian yeah. Ridgeback. Yeah. This one's today. sunny, three years old, and they've come from Germany to compete today. Wonderful colour of that coat there. And now Here the we have the wonderful Claire light Crystal movement of the Saluki. Five-year-old bitch called Lena from Berkshire. And a dog breed that can hit 70 miles an hour over a short distance. And the Whippet, judged here, today by Michael Here we have the Whippet, biggest entry here today. This one, four-year-old bitch, Khaleesi. <laughs> Obviously a Game of Thrones fan there. <laughs> Top Whippet in 2018. And, finally, and how lovely to have the imported the register representative for the second time. time. We had the Entrebuchet Mountain Dog the other, uh, yesterday, and now we've got the Griffon Fauve de Bretagne. This is Dino, four years old. Wonderful shortlist there. Now they're going to go down the ring. He's just going to move them all the way round the ring. He's seen the movement straight up and down, but now just seeing those dogs in profile. And Jesse's thinking about which one's going to work in best in show, isn't he? Which one's really going to represent the group well. Lovely to get a chance to see them all moving in profile, one straight after the other. Of course, the reason movement so important in the show ring, they were all, I remember being the taught Hound. years ago by a very famous breeder, if it's made right, it moves the right. And that's why judges back. spend so much time watching these dogs move. That's so true. A good handler can disguise that's things Saluki. during the stand, but on the move, there's nowhere to hide. Graceful that's Saluki. A lovely whippet. Listen to the roar for that. <laughs> and the grip on foe. And the Griffon Faux de Britannia. What a fabulous lineup. So the boards are coming into the ring very soon. We are going to find out who the seventh finalist will be. So here come the boards. We're going to get a decision. Who is going to be our final the group of the hand winner? Group. He's going straight for it. It's, it's the, the Wirehead Daxon. Wonderful win there. For Maisie, the two and a half year old bitch from Gloucestershire. Group two.
the into group Ridgeback. two, the Rhodesian Ridgeback. Group three. Group three. Where's he going? Oh, that the wonderful Bassett Italian Hound. Bassett Hound. And, and our group final group four. place the goes to the little Smooth miniature Dachshund. Smooth Dachshunds from two Dachshunds in our final four. A huge round of applause for our judge, Mark Dakota. So here we have our final winner, our winner, ready to go through to best in show, representing the Hound Dachshund. Group. It's Maisie, champion Sylve Trademark, two and a half year old bitch from Gloucestershire. And it gives me very great pleasure to ask Jan Wood, hand specialist, to present the SEND trophy to the winner of the hand group. He's being escorted into the ring by Maurice Cook of the Crufts Committee. Presentation there just taking place. Hound Group Judge, Mark Kokosa. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have a few words by Marina Scott. I hand you down to the main ring. Thank you, Kim. From one Kim to another Kim. Ah, I see. Hi. How are you feeling right now? Uh, overwhelmed. <laughs> I should imagine so. Seventh group winner. Seventh group winner. Crafts. It's very exciting. Very exciting. You've bred some fantastic Daxons over the years. Yeah. Um, does this compare to all those past successes? Mm, just about. Just about. Yeah, it does. And just tell us a little bit about this one that's won tonight. Uh, Maisie is the litter sister to the bitch that I've been showing and she's won the bitch ticket here five years on the trot so to win today was a big win for me I was really delighted well five years on the trot can you go one better to take best in show in about half an hour's time we shall see won't we ladies and gentlemen put your hands together for the winning hounds here at Crafts 2020 Kim round you go for your lap of honor Final group winner there, Maisie, the wire-haired Dachshund. Short break backstage, in about half an hour, she'll be coming back out, representing the group as we go to best in show. Our other finalists, Frankie, the miniature poodle, Pablo, the Bichon Frise, Elsie, the Irish setter, Drago, the bull mastiff, Zockney, the so old English sheepdog, Pixie, the, the Kerry Blue, and of course, Maisie, who we've just seen the triumph there the in the hound group. The bull mastiff, the old English sheepdog, the Kerry Blue that we saw this evening, and the wire-haired Dachshund. They make up the magnificent seven. The countdown clock is now officially ticking. Half past eight, we're live to the world. Thanks to our wonderful team from Channel 4. We're just setting the scene now for something that has never been seen here at Crofts. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome here for the very first time, for the first of two performances here on Best in Show Night, Crufts 2020, performing All We Ask. Let's welcome the Birmingham Community Gospel Choir.
absolutely beautiful. Delighted to have them with us, the Birmingham Community Gospel Choir. Let's now look at the screen and take a look at the last of our seven groups of Crafts 2020. Let's have a look at the Hound Group.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the West Midlands Police Dog Section display. We're going to take you through a journey of our young dogs all the way through to our operational police dogs and show you some of the skills that we put into our dogs so they're working day in, day out to protect members of the public. So, first into the arena is instructor Phil Lem with one of our puppy development instructors, Emma Salvoni, here with puppy Beans. Beans is one of our Belgian Malinois who is bred as part of our puppy development program which subscribes to the Kennel Club Assured Breeders program. As part of the development that goes into our puppies, we also run them through the Kennel Club Good Citizen program and then add in some exercises which helps them become operational police dogs. What you'll see here is Phil and Emma working with Beans just to play some interactive games with them and what we're looking for is that the dogs will chase, tug, and play an interactive game with the handler and the instructor to make everything we do fun and engaging for them. We run one of the largest breeding and puppy development programs uh, in Europe and we're really proud of the work that goes into them. So that was Puppy Beans with our instructor Emma Salvone. Coming on to the arena now is uh, Dave Raymond who uh, runs our puppy development program with two of our kennel assistants, Georgia McCabe with Jet and Richard Large with Nova. These are nine months old and are roughly coming to the last few months of our puppy development program. And Rich and Georgia have formed part of our volunteer program where our dogs stay with families for around about 12 months as they go through their journey to be operational police dogs. Again, what you'll see here is just an extension of the work we did with our young dog beans around highly interactive games, chasing, biting, ragging. And here you'll see um, the dogs chasing in now, taking a bite, and again they'll stay on until the handler's there to play with them and interact with them. As I say, all of our dogs live with volunteer families and we place a great emphasis on being sociable, and also making sure that they're exposed to all kinds of different environments. I'm just going to move around the arena because one of the dogs coming on is a dog that I've actually had as a volunteer, um, so I don't want to put him off. So, coming on to the arena are some of our dogs that have now completed the puppy development program and on Tuesday they'll be partnered with their handlers to start a 13-week intensive training course. So here we have uh, Gemma Bickley with police dog Aggie. We have Hayley Phillips with police dog Zach. We have Matt Shaw with police dog um, Alfie. And my dog in the corner with uh, Inspector Leanne Chapman and police dog Arthur. So as I say, these dogs have all completed their um, puppy development program and will start their 13 week training course on Tuesday. This is an intensive training course for the dogs and handlers where they learn to do a whole range of things from tracking, searching for property, finding missing people, and chasing and detaining people. So what you'll see is Dave with the red sleeve on there, working Arthur. As you'll see, the dog will be engaged, they get the dog's focus, and then the dogs will run and chase. So we'll see them deployed, they run across, and they'll take a bite, and then the handler joins them to support the dog and make the dog uh, confident in dealing with people and uh, dealing with conflict. So there is Puppy Arthur with Inspector Leanne Chapman and Puppy Aggie with PC Gemma Bickley. So again, all of these dogs have come through our puppy development program. Uh, they all, all have been bred in force uh, and have come through right from our early neurostimulation uh, program they have as dogs just three or four days old through to an intensive training course they'll embark on on Tuesday. So that's um, Hayley Phillips and police dog Zach and Matt Shaw with police dog Alfie. Once our dogs have qualified as operational police dogs, they have to complete a set of mandatory training every year and are also assessed every year against the national guideline and national criteria to be recertified as police dogs. So coming on now is Lisa Phillips with police dog Goose and Michael Henry with police dog Archer. Both of these dogs have been operational for around about 12 months now and so we'll show you some of the progression that our operational police dogs uh, do when they're actually operational and working. So what you'll see is the dogs have been sent to the chase after someone but the person's actually given up. 
So what we've trained our dogs to do is, in this scenario, the dogs will just stand, hold, and bark to stop the person getting away and to stop the person offering a threat to the handler. Once the dog's under control, if somebody then decides to run off, dogs will be deployed. But this time, because they haven't given up, the dogs will detain the criminal. Once the dogs and handlers are in a position, the handlers come in and will be able to release the dog from the person. So all of this stuff is things we do operationally. Um, we're not a display team. These are all operational dogs, and these are all operational uh, deployments that we have with our dogs day in, day out. This time what you'll see is the criminals offering a threat with a weapon. So there's a big boo for Mr. Angry and his accomplice folks. So as you'll see, even though the, the criminals have got a weapon, the dogs are sent to detain people and protect the handler and members of the public. And again, once the handlers are in a position where they're comfortable, the person's not offering a threat to them anymore, they'll be taken off and the bite released. And again, you'll see they're rewarded there with a game and a ball. So that was Lisa Phillips and police dog Goose with Michael Henry and police dog Archer. What we also have as part of our force are our detection and specialist search dogs. We've got a range of dogs who can search for a various number of uh, substances, including drugs, firearms, cash, explosives, and also digital media. Uh, what we'll see in the middle is one of our training protocols we go through with our search dogs to make sure they're able to identify the substances we want them to find. So there's a row of metal pots uh, that are set up, and one of the pots contains the substance the dog he's trying to search for. Who can guess which one it's in? <laughs> so what you'll see there is the dog will freeze to tell the handler where the, uh, the uh, substance is. He'll get a click, which marks the correct behavior, and then he's rewarded with a game with his ball. What you'll see us doing now is just changing the pots around, and we'll try and see if we can fool the dog. Sadly, we cannot beat the dog's nose. So there you'll see police dog Zuma with Scott Mulsher, one of our specialist search dogs, working on what we call the potting system. <laughs> what we'll also show you is that the dogs can actually perform this um, search in an operational style capacity. So what we've got is a range of bags, and our dogs can search uh, bags, vehicles, uh, people. So we'll show you the dog now searching bags, and the idea is that the dog takes a good check of every bag, and again, when he comes across a substance he's trying to find, he'll tell the handler exactly where it is. <laughs> he gets a click and a ball reward to tell him he's done the right thing. So that was Scott Mulsher with police dog Zuma. Oh, there looks like there's a stolen car coming on, folks. We're just going to get them all out of the way. So there is Duncan Johnson with Police Dog Snow and Matt Colston with Police Dog Savio. So even though the people tried to get away from the stolen car, the dogs were deployed from the window and they detained the people who tried to get away. As Police Dog Savio take himself back into the car. Next year, we're going to try and see if he can actually drive it for us as well. So what you've seen as the bandit car was making off was a load of bags thrown out and a load of articles thrown out. 
They were trying to discard some vital evidence as part of their pursuit. We just fortunately got the recovery driver to come and take the vehicle away for us. Oh. Let's get a big boo here, folks. We've got an armed <laughs> robber coming here. Oh. Are there any police dogs anywhere on site? Oh. He's just robbed the recovery vehicle and he's now stationed inside of the car. Oh. Crowd. We could do with some police dogs to get rid of this rowdy crowd. There, we had a group of police dogs who could clear our crowd. So, Michael Henry with Archer, Lisa Phillips with Goose, Matt Colston with Savio, and Fleur Tedstill with Snap. So, our dogs are sent to deploy against crowds, but unfortunately, we seem to have this armed villain still in the arena. He's on his phone. He doesn't want to end his call. Oh, he's ditched his phone. And it looks like a SIM card's fallen out of there. So here is police dog Odin with PC Carl Woodall working alongside our elite firearms teams to drag the person out of the vehicle. Here he comes. He's dragging him back. Let's give a big cheer for Odin, folks. He's working really hard here. He's going to bring him back into a position of safety, get the person away from the car until his handler's in a position of safety. So Odin is one of our firearm support dogs. Once our dogs have proven themselves to be competent operational police dogs, we give them an added bolt-on which enables them to work alongside our elite firearms teams to detain and help manage some of the worst criminals with firearms. So there was Police Dog Odin and PC Carl Woodall who were finally detained the armed bandit who stole the Corsa. And what you've seen is um, the person had a firearm. So we have a group of dogs who are able to detect firearms that are hidden uh, in different environments. So here's Police Dog Jasper with PC Russ Martin who's going to just search the vehicle to see if he can find where the firearm is. So the handler's job is just to work the dog around the vehicle and make sure he doesn't miss any opportunities where he could find the, uh, the, the firearm or where the firearm might be hidden. So the handler's just working him through, making sure we check all the seals of the door, the boot of the door, the windows, and hopefully police dog Jasper will be able to find where the firearm's been hidden. So Jasper's actually one of our uh, main stud dogs within our breeding program. He's sired a large number of litters. <laughs> I think he's telling his handler something. And there is the firearm, folks. So a great job by our main stud dog, police dog Jasper there, to find the firearm and take some vital evidence for our investigation around the armed Goodman. So, what you'll also see coming onto the arena now is uh, PC Paul King with Police Dog Dash, and they're just going to make their way up into the arena. But onto the arena now is Sarah Hawkins with aptly named 
police dog, Chip. Chip is a brand new capability we've got within West Midlands Police, and the dog is able to detect digital media. This includes USB sticks, uh, micro SIM cards, micro SD cards, and any electronic devices that could contain vital evidence that helps us detect crime. So what you'll see again is Chip working through bags to try and find if anyone hid any digital media in there that might hold some vital evidence for us. I think we might have found something. Again, we get a freeze. He's given a click to mark the behavior and then a ball to reward him. And then we found the USB drive hidden inside the bag. So one of the things the armed bandit did was throw away his mobile phone and out of that also came his SIM card. And within that SIM card came, came some vital evidence that might link us to his accomplices uh, or possibly his victims. So Chip is able to search for SIM cards and micro SIM cards. So again, we'll just do a little search to try and find where that vital piece of evidence has fallen out. So here you'll see Sarah just working the dog. We just make sure the dog covers all the area. You can see him actively sniffing as he goes. And when he comes across the article, he'll tell his handler where it is. So we're just covering the area. He puts his nose right on it. He gets his kick and a ball reward. So a big round of applause to our newly licensed police dog chip and Sarah Hawkins. Now, what you might be able to hear is some heartbeats. We've put some sensors into the crowd amongst those VIP seats right in front of us and those red seats. And we have some monitors on some people as our drugs dogs are coming down the arena searching people, bags, and the chairs. So, police dog Dash and police dog Spur are currently working through the crowd just to make sure no one's got anything. Oh. I think we've got a problem. So our dogs have just stopped. Oh. Oh dear. This is not Saturday night Anton Deck folks. Those are our drugs dogs. And there we get a ball reward. So some of the things our drugs dogs can do is work amongst crowds of people, uh, venues and arenas, um, and they're there to detect uh, the different substances they're trained on. So what we'll show you now as the dogs come down is how they search people. And one of the things we teach our dogs to do is when they're searching people, if somebody tries to walk away from the police dog, the police handler, the dog is trying to follow them and to stop them getting away. So we're just gonna make our way onto those red seats there and just hope they don't have anyone make a run for it. There's some worried faces in these seats there, folks. So what you'll see is someone trying to walk away from our dog, but the dog will follow them. He tells the handler exactly which person has got the article. The handler will tell the person to freeze, the dog will freeze, and people will be arrested. So a big thank you to Russ Martin and Jasper and Paul King with Dash. Oh, yes, here he comes, Mr. Angry folks. Let's get him a big boo. A year upon year we have him coming out. Who wants to see him detained once and for all? There's Peter Purvis there coming on with Mr. Angry. So here comes Police Dog Mason and Police Dog Neon who take Mr. Angry out. So that was Police Dog Neon with Steve Wayne and Police Dog Mason with Paul King finally giving Mr. Angry what he deserves. That's the end of our demonstration, folks. As I say, we're all operational uh, officers with operational police dogs or dogs in training. We're not a display team. That's a flavour of what we do day in, day out to keep the public safe. Thank you and good evening.
Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a very big round of applause. Well done to the West Midlands Police and their colleagues and their amazing dogs. As they stand as a guard of honour, we come now to a very special presentation. It is the presentation of the Police Dog Team Operational and Humanitarian Action of the Year. On the 18th of August last year, PC Lucy Sculthorpe and Police Dog Harper were deployed to report of a high-risk missing person from a caravan site near Corby in the early hours of the morning. The man in question had been staying with family members after being released from a mental health facility in Great Yarmouth, having tried to hang himself. That evening, he had cut his wrists with a blade, which his family had removed from him and had bandaged his wounds. He had also been drinking heavily, which increased his risk of self-harm and suicide. His family were extremely concerned for his welfare. The man had gone missing after telling his family he was going outside to use the toilet, but did not return. Approximately three o'clock in the morning, PC Sculthorpe spoke with family members and was informed a search of the local area, including a nearby bridleway, had been unsuccessful. Police dog Harper was deployed on her tracking harness and began searching. After approximately 20 minutes, it became clearly apparent that there was no scent at all in that area, and also that there would be no way through the dense hedgerow into the woods, and PC Sculthorpe returned to the site and spoke with the family again regarding the previous search parameters. Returning to the search, PC Sculthorpe and the team tracked down the bridleway in the pitch black. Use of a torch may have risked the missing person identifying them and attempting to flee. Approximately half a mile down the track, police dog Harper's behavior began to change. Her tail and ears came up, her body stiffened, and PC Sculthorpe could tell immediately that she was reacting to the presence of someone. PC Sculthorpe heard a strange groaning noise and encouraged police dog Harper to seek out what she was reacting to, and she immediately pulled forwards. A further 50 yards down the track, PC Sculthorpe shone her torch and located the man hanging from a metal railing over the river on a concrete bridge. His face was purple. He was making a choking noise and still controlling police dog Harper and recognizing the nearest backup was half a mile away with limited access, PC Sculthorpe requested medical assistance, notified colleagues of their position before cutting the T-shirt that was around the man's neck, ensuring his airway was clear and that he could breathe again. Without the actions, says the citation of PC Sculthorpe and police dog Harper, it is believed that the man would have died. This is a great example of teamwork under extremely challenging conditions where the actions of the officer and police dog have shown commitment to saving a human's life. Congratulations to PC Lucy Sculthorpe and Police Dog Harper. <laughs> Delighted to welcome Chief Superintendent Claire Bell from the West Midlands Police to present the trophy and award the citation. Thank you and well done PC Lucy Sculthorpe and Police Dog Harper. Thank you very much to Chief Superintendent Bell. Thank you to the West Midlands Police. And thank you to PC Lucy Sculthorpe and Police Dog Harper. Let us remember that they keep us safe 365 days of the year.
As we count down to Crafts Best in Show 2020, how apt, because they are performing Oh Happy Day. Please welcome back the Birmingham Community Gospel Choir. I think we can give them one more round of applause, don't you? It's best in show night. Well done. You're amazing. Thank you. And also, we are delighted to welcome all the way up from the Royal Hospital, Chelsea. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, our Chelsea pensioners.
So the group stewards join us. The dogs are in the collecting ring. And very, very shortly, we will be live to the world for Crufts Best in Show 2020. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, the moment that we have been waiting for. Over 20,000 dogs have been judged. Huge numbers of visitors have flocked to the National Exhibition Centre. And now we're down to the final seven. Welcome to Crofts Best in Show 2020. Escorted into the ring by the chairman of the Kennel Club, Mr. Tony Alcock, OBE. It is a privilege and a delight to welcome in our best in show judge, Crafts 2020, Mrs. Anne MacDonald. <laughs> it has been a fabulous four days here at the world's greatest dog show where every dog has its day. Judged here on Thursday evening, the winner of the utility group, the Miniature Poodle. Judged also on Thursday night, the winner of the toy group, the Bijon Frise. A wonderful day on Friday, the winner of the Gundog group, the Irish Setter. Super Saturday, the winner of the Working Group, the Bull Bastiff. Also judged here on Super Saturday last night, the winner of the pastoral group, the Old English Sheepdog. Two groups tonight, as we have seen. The winner of the Terrier group, the Kerry Blue. And to make the lineup complete, the winner of the Hound group, the Wirehead Dachshund. It's a very long way round. Yes, you can give them a round of applause. So here we are in the main arena for the finale of this wonderful four days of dog show judging so Crufts Best in Show 2020. Delighted to welcome and Anne MacDonald, second generation breeder, her mother bred corgis. She herself has been famous for Saluki.
and has won the Hans Rupert Cups on more than one occasion. I think she's privileged with a really super lineup this year, don't you think? Yes, it's, it's tough competition as it should be after four days and 21,000 dogs competing. Our working and pastoral group winners. Old English Sheepdog in the peak of condition. And then tonight, of course, the Kerry Blue coming through from the Terrier.